to come up with a concept or, or, or of saying that there's no friction. You actually have, have to be out of the, you have to be outside the atmosphere into space. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's absolutely correct in the sense that um, near the boundary, see the friction, especially the you know the kind that will affect the wing. Uh, see on the ground here, we're in contact with the planet. Um, you know, we have a relative motion and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, the other thing is that the density here is bigger than when you go upstairs, you know, mm -hmm. up, up higher. Mm -hmm. So the density, uh, friction is a generalized, it can be generalized as resistance to flow. Exactly. Okay, your inertia, you know, is a, is a resistance to the flow. Uh, the density, the density is a resistance to the flow, you know, because the heavier, mm -hmm. the harder it is to move the fluid. Right. Therefore, um, but there's also something that's specific called viscosity, which mm -hmm. is within the relative motion and so on and so forth, that adds to that in terms of friction. You know, so yes, in the serve in the bottom, nearer the bottom because of the density, because um, the actual viscosity is also a function of that density, and it increases. You know, the right. higher the density. So what you said is pretty much right. Uh, so, so the gentleman who said that. Uh, there's no density. Yes. No, no friction. Yes. And, and regarding the, 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 the flow of, 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 of the wing flow. Absolutely. It, but, you know, common sense term that that's, that can't be correct. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. So, what happens is that's where the next guy becomes important. Mm -hmm. Prando becomes important. And Prando comes from Gottingen. And I'm going to be talking a lot about Gottingen. You've, you've hit the nail on the head in terms of talking about Germany. This is all about Germany. Mm -hmm. So we talk about Mullenbrook. Now, Mullenbrook was in the, like I said, in the 1880s to when some of our, our ancestors were doing incredible things mm -hmm. also. Okay, uh, Andrew J. Bean was having patent for rocketry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's reality. That's a, one of our great grandfathers. Mm -hmm. Around that, Mullenbrook was doing this thing and so on. So 1905, no, 1904, mm -hmm. was when Prando showed up from Gottingen University. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> he tried to correct the problem that you just indicated. It's a problem to make believe there's no friction in the, in the flow, in the flow fluid so or in the not, fluid. It's not reality. Yeah, so what, what Prando did was to say, okay, we can divide the fluid into two parts. Away from the body, the boundary, we're gonna use the potential. But near, very near, right on the surface, around the surface, we're gonna develop another theory. And it's called the boundary layer. Bounder? Boundary, boundary, boundary layer. layer. Okay, boundary, boundary layer. layer. Mm -hmm. So that region where you have contact with the surface, you could use a boundary layer equation. He developed the boundary layer equations. Okay. That's Prando. Mullenbrook didn't develop the potential. The potential was contributed by many people, uh, you know, but uh, he provided a way to solve the problem. And so, so that's what was happening. In fact, most of the aircraft that has been designed has been designed on the basis of, okay, we're gonna use the boundary layer uh, 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 approximation for near the surface of the flow, of the flow field, or uh, the boundary of it, and then outside, away from it. So you get an initial shape using the potential flow. And then after that, you refine it using the boundary layer. So it's a patched up, what I call a patched up approximate principles. <laughs> yeah. Another question, if I may. Okay. Go ahead. I wanted to know how then you bringing the equation for the three dimension to that holocaust. Yes. Um, holograph. Holograph. Right. Uh, how, did you, how did your work uh, uh, further that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. To, to before answering that question, see, with this German and Russian, in, you know, interaction, and fundamentally German leadership in that dynamics, 
and plan to taking it to the next level. Because like you said, without friction, you're unrealistic. So that reality was put in by Prando, still Germans. Mm -hmm. So the Wright brothers were beginning to do something here. Mm -hmm. But the root of their uh, thing was in Germany, Prando. Prando was, they were trying to actually force Prando into this country. Mm -hmm. Because the, the Bandelaire theory was a revolution of fluid dynamics in general. And so when there was a flight here by the Wright brothers, uh, the preparation for the 1918 First World War was in progress. Einstein was also doing stuff in 2005. Mm -hmm. So you have 204 and 205, which is 205, is also a part of this presentation. Um, but controlled by Germany. And so eventually they prepared and the aircraft was done with some of these dynamics from Mullenbrook and everything. Boom, they have fighter planes. And they're ready to take on the world. And sure enough, they took on the world. People thought it was a loss for them. No, the Germans never believed they lost. Because they have the fundamental philosophy. Intelligence is what's the winner. And then as much as they can go into these new areas and, and begin things and you know make progress, they feel they are, they, are, they are ahead of everybody else. So when the First World War was over, uh, the Nazis came in and eventually and took that even to a much vigorous level in preparing for the Second World War. Yes. On that point, excuse me for interrupting, but can, can, can you uh, just quickly digress, and give a synopsis of how did that German empowerment, so to say, uh, feed into the Holocaust? Uh -huh. And how does, you know, that, that the German empowerment feed into the Holocaust, how does your Gagard solution feed into the Afro American empowerment? Absolutely. Well, by taking a lead in, in intelligence or intellectual aspect of humanity puts you ahead of everybody. Mm -hmm. If you are in the lead, you're just next to God because God is the ultimate, untouchable lead. So if you're higher than every other human being, then you're in charge. And if you are in charge, deep down in their minds, they knew God gave them that stuff. They may not admit it publicly, but they know they are privileged to have that kind of uh, blessing or that's ahead of everybody else. That makes them feel better than the others. That made them feel they were the real children of the Creator that makes the rest of the people less than them, as in inferior to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the issue then turns out to be superiority complex and inferiority complex. So therefore, there's an additional dimension of a human thought which says that, um, there's limited resources, which is wrong. God got proof that that's not real. I agree. I agree. Uh, if there's limited resources, then we have to control the number of people. We have to grade the people's importance and allow those who are more important the privilege of having a lot more resources. Mm -hmm. And if it came down to it, we have to reduce the population. The ones that are least important would have to be uh, uh, Decimated. But we Got agree that there's no such thing as limited resources. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. right. Therefore, that was the philosophy. Mm -hmm. And so the Germans, you know, proved to their fellow Europeans they are superior. Mm -hmm. And before, actually before that, Gottingen University, where a lot of distance were coming from, mm -hmm. 
was founded, the German university was founded by the great grandfather of Queen Elizabeth, King George the Second. Okay. King August George the Second founded Gottingen to, in effect, take over England and make England a colony. That's extremely important to know that. Cambridge was there, they dismantled uh, Timbuktu and moved it to Europe, various points in Europe, Paparais and so on and so forth, but you know, they, they moved to Europe and call, you know, called Timbuktu Oxbridge, actually started with Oxford University. Ah, okay. I see the connection. Okay. Uh, they called it Oxford and then eventually Cambridge, they broke into two, you know, one part became Cambridge and the other remained Oxford. So they call it Oxbridge because it's the same university that was a transplanting of Timbuktu. In Africa, that, Mali? That's correct. That's correct. And currently, mm -hmm. the war is still going on over there. Uh, some dynamics are going on in Mali currently. Mm -hmm. uh, that it's a continuation of that. Of course, Mali, uh, Timbuktu was going to be transplanted, you know, transplanted here uh, by a black man, uh, uh, Washington, Booker T. Washington, called Tuskegee. And he's, he and uh, uh, Professor Wal uh, uh, George, Washington George Washington Carver, they did huge things. <laughs> they reminded of Timbuktu, however, it was taken over eventually by Jim Crow. That piece is, you know, I want to explain. So therefore, mm. back, so therefore, you have Oxbridge. And Oxbridge was raining, you know, heavy, along with some other similar, you know, transplants, like in France and Italy and, and somewhere, you know, but Oxbridge, you know, was outshining them. And uh, so, but now with this dynamics coming out of Germany, Mollenbrook and all the other stuff, they decided to take over England and make it a colony. And therefore, Oxbridge becomes second class to Gottingen University. There was no person that could compete with Prandtl coming from Gottingen in Oxbridge. The huge development of Newton from Cambridge was neutralized and taken over by Gauss. As you mean? Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, was the foremost mathematician mm -hmm. in that era. Gottingen, after it was founded by Queen Elizabeth's great grandfather, King August George, I mean uh, the second, um, Gauss took over as the greatest mathematician, at least pure mathematician, on a higher level than Newton. Mm -hmm. So three of them were were connected as being the top, the greatest mathematician of all time. We have Gauss, Euler, another Euler, German, yes. another Germanic. Yeah, Euler was was sent over to Russia. Mm. They colonized Britain, sent their German type to go and take over Leningrad. Leningrad University was equivalent for Russians of Oxford University. And then Moscow State became like branched out of Leningrad, just like Oxbridge. So, it's, so if you call Oxbridge as Oxford and Cambridge, then Lenin School, Lenin School would be equivalent, you know, Leningrad, Moscow State. That's the parallel. Mm -hmm. But the Germans had their control of those top universities that were in charge. Mm -hmm. So therefore, now, so that's to say that when it comes to you know, intellectual matters, the Germans were in charge of the world. Mm -hmm. Their own fellow people, you know, and even the, today, people still don't understand. Like I said there, uh, some of the great-grandparents of uh, Queen Elizabeth never spoke English on the throne. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, they didn't speak English at all, and their subjects didn't know that. So it's the most sophisticated. Uh, got, um, Queen Elizabeth's family came from Hanover in Germany. Gottingen 
is a few miles, not very far at all from, it's in the same region, same place, you know, in, in Germany. So now with this lead, and a lot of focus was put on that, you know, on intellectual matters, especially application of it into aircraft and so on, flying and all that, uh, you know, the Germans now took control of the world. And so, therefore, there had to be a high rank, you know, higher hierarchy of human speeches <laughs> with the Germans on top. The Germans are on top, the Europeans are on top, okay, as a matter of race or continent. But within that continent, the Germans are the supreme. So the supreme uh, European supremacy headquarters moved to Göttingen, or Berlin, or Germany, in effect. But Ber uh, Göttingen was the technical headquarters. So that was where uh, Newton was in Cambridge, Gauss was in Gottingen. And so, you know, that is the dynamic. So, what has happened then is, in terms of application of mathematics, the hodograph transformation became like a testing ground for who is going to be on a path to that prestigious elite <laughs> superiority, <laughs> superiority <laughs> intelligentsia <laughs> kind of class. <laughs> so um, George Bugriallo, uh, the president of, of Pali, mm -hmm. uh, when, you know, and I'm digressing a little bit here, when he came about around the paper on the hodograph, the U.S. government had already taken my paper on hodograph and what year? Uh, that it? was in 1988, 1989. Mm -hmm. The US government had, because the hodograph had been constrained to two dimensions only. So they would use that approximately just like they started with potential flow uh, and then tack on to the viscous part later on. Um, um, this was only working for two dimensions, but the wing is a two-dimensional entity. But uh, the Germans, Marlon Rick and Company and Chaplin told the world, you, you couldn't do this transformation in a three dimensions. It will be non-linear in three dimensions. And that was so frustrating. Yes? There's a question. You just mentioned that you, we're looking at a three-dimensional concept, an idea, we're trying to develop a two-dimensional equation to that. Yes. Is it possible, I mean, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, yes. is it possible to take a section yes. of that, yes. a, a two-dimensional section of that, and estimate that and do like a Riemann sum from I equals zero to infinity, yes. uh, basically? Uh, yeah, that's, make that's a pseudo three-dimensional <laughs> <laughs> equation. Actually, that, <laughs> actually, that's what was being done, okay? And uh, just like the potential and then the, you know, work from there, that's precisely what was, that was the process of the design. Okay. You start, you start, you start with what you could do, and then you start adding to it, patching up and all the other stuff. Right. Eventually, the lab is where you test and eventually you do flight tests, you know, kind of tests and so on, mm -hmm. and then you verify the thing over there. But that is basically the dynamics. It was a natural human dynamics, and it was working. It was working. When you're doing, um, uh, a low velocity, you know, uh, you know, kind of designs, it isn't as critical, you know, but mm -hmm. when you go into high speed, then all these things become very important because shock waves develop and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And you're going to do so. The equation that we're talking about would deal with shock, shock waves, you know, but you can deal with shock waves and viscous at the same time. You have to use all this patching up, but you're starting mostly with a, sec a section, a two dimension. And that is why that was, had any, some serious uses because, okay, you start with, a, you know, because what you're doing really looking at the section is that, you see, if the span is long enough, then the influence of the boundary 
will not be a prop will not create so much of a pro problem. Yeah, now you, uh, you you got a board there, and I'm sure you want to draw out some of the stuff. You're uh, that's correct. That's you need correct. to get some chalk. <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. Uh, let me uh, yeah. get my picture touch. Yeah, yeah can, um, can people are visual. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see there. That's really the section of her. Okay, and the floor comes out that way. Mm -hmm. This is the wing section. That's the airfoil. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, so the span is into the board. Mm -hmm. Now, if the span is long enough, mm -hmm. then you could just take every section of the wing is going to look the same, especially if, if there's, there's no tapering and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. You take a, you know, an average a section, and then with that you could, because what you're looking for is a wing as a lift, you know, lift here, mm -hmm. L, lift. Mm -hmm. And then um, the drag, you know, is the opposition. The drag, you know, those are the important thing that, the thing that slows down the, fl the, the flight, okay? Mm -hmm. And the thing that lifts it up, because you gotta, gotta lift the airplane up mm -hmm. and then, you know, move. If you can't lift it up, you can't move unless you move on the ground, okay? Right. So the lift is important. That lift comes as a result of, you know, this flow field, you know, the flow field that comes out here, the other thing that, you know, okay? These mm -hmm. are all flow field dynamics, okay? So that's what they do. So they design it, this is the 2D, you know, 2D section, okay? Mm -hmm. Two dimension section of the wing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and mm -hmm. uh, so um, so that's what that's the problem they were trying to solve. Now, therefore, once this breakthrough from Mullenbrook and company solved the use the hodograph equation, hodograph hodograph equation. Mm -hmm. You know um, what happened was. They were able to use that, which mm -hmm. is a two-dimensional theory, mm -hmm. to design a section. But when you put such a section on a finite span wing, there will be a problem in terms of the boundary problems of the span that will wash in or wash out, that will affect, you know, what you did here. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's not perfect, to say the list. What you did with the 2D cannot be perfect. Correct. So what people were trying to do was to build a very long span wing, so as to minimize that influence of the boundary of this. Yeah, it makes it make it negligible. Absolutely, yeah. so, so that's what was being done. But it by no means was, um, a perfect or ideal situation. So they scratched their heads, poured money into how you could find a hodograph that is 3D. <laughs> uh, there was a guy called Saw James Lighthill. He basically responded to the German lead. I believe it was in the old 70s. He became he sat on the Newton's chair. Lighthill, James Lighthill, saw James Lighthill. James Lighthill. Mm -hmm. From Cambridge. Mm -hmm. He was the Lucasian professor. That's the professorship that uh, Stephen Hawking held, you know, recently. Okay, mm -hmm. he became the, for his contribution to the hodograph, but it was in 2D. But he originated also from Germany. He was, he was German. Uh, the, the story was he was a German Jew. Okay, and you were talking about Holocaust before. Wow. Yeah, he was yeah, a Jew. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. Like he was surgeon, but no, people didn't know that. <laughs> I, I suppose not. He still, he still was alive to do this. <laughs> <laughs> people didn't know that. Um, you, know, you know, but anyway, so. He sat in Newton chair in Cambridge for his contribution to hodograph. Mm -hmm. That's what I was telling you before. Uh, the pointer, what points to you in applied mathematics in terms of what kind of class you are, 
One of them was a hologram. So he made his contribution. He got Newton's chair for his contribution, <laughs> this thing here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and of course, because of his German background, he knew pretty much uh, Mullenbrook and all the other stuff that gave him an edge. So he sat down because for a German coming in to have been a little more hard for him to get and sit in Newton's chair, mm -hmm. but because of this contribution and so on and so on. So anyway, but that was still 2D. So, but the 2D was getting Germans to such a, a high level of superiority over the others. They went from the regular uh, aircraft, uh, fighter types, to more sophisticated ones that will begin to approach uh, super, I mean, uh, transonic, what we call transonic. Transonic mm -hmm. means mm -hmm. near the speed of sound. Right. Where the cruise velocity of the, cruise velocity is like the velocity here, which is the speed of the aircraft, um, is in the neighborhood of the speed of sound. When you're there, uh, this section is very hard to design because you don't have the physics. And, um, and so, but because they are ahead in the photograph, they could design that section and then correct it for the uh, finite span and so on and so forth. And they were making progress. They were ahead of everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, what Lighthill did was to bring some of those advancements from Germany to England and help the English people and so on and so forth. But Eng England uh, has already become a colony of Germany. That is a terminology that will, be, will shock most people, but that's what is a reality. Uh, Queen Elizabeth is not English, it's German. And so he's the, he's the, the German uh, governor of, of England, if you will, or, or king of England, but the actual ruler comes from Germany, his great-grandfather. Uh, great so now, but it is this kind of dynamics that decided where every segment of humanity fit in the, in the hierarchy of ranking people in terms of their superiority and their importance. The Jewish people were considered uh, very low. And so, as progress was being made, they were trying to put the Jewish people in certain categories because they're not considered to have the kind of intelligence that will match, you know, that the kind of Mullenbrook and all these other folks, were, although which is not real. But that was the perception. And so Einstein was coming along. Einstein came in and put a hole in that kind of dynamics mm -hmm. in 2005, sorry, 1905, with the relativity. But the was uh, Prando was in charge of the dyna immediate dynamics of the war machine. Yeah, but uh, sorry, H how did Einstein put a hole in yeah. The theory. Just, just real quick, if you may. Yes, yes. Um, the perception that the Jews can only handle money, and they lend money, and it's a dirty kind of thing, and they're not really intelligent, because mm -hmm. they didn't show up in any of this uh, mathematics, not especially, not, you know, uh, openly, de you know, mm -hmm. uh, declared Jewish kind of person. They were not, you know, Mullenbrooks and so on and so forth. They were, didn't went in there. The major highlight came in when Einstein came out, a Jewish person, mm -hmm. and came out with E minus MC squared is equal to zero, or E is equal to MC squared. Mm -hmm. And although... Okay, before you raise that, you, you get the whole board, even the bottom mm -hmm. piece? Okay, get it. Okay. You want me to do that for you, Doc? Yeah, yeah, thank you, I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. You concentrate on talking. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, um, so therefore, so when Einstein came around and he discovered the E is equal to MC squared, um, then it, inter it interrupted that line of thinking that only the non-Jews, the white 
you know, Europeans, mm -hmm. Einstein. Right. This is important because this has a direct correlation to us. Yes, Einstein. Mm -hmm. um, okay. E is equal to MC squared. Mm -hmm. Most people know what the symbol stands for. Mm -hmm. um, he came up with that, and in his words, this is a revolution in physics. But physics um, was good, but the dynamics of the war machine, which also needs physics, the kind that Prandtl and Mullenbrook were in charge of, and Chaplin in Russia were in charge of, was more immediately of importance because how to move from the ground, and even if all you drop is a piece of stone on people, but people was immediately more important than you know, design a you know, sophisticated bomb, per se. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because if you have the bomb, you don't have a, a way of delivery. Uh, that will not be, you know. So, therefore, Mullenbrook and Prando were more in focus. But the physics was not left out, because after all, what they're doing was physics also. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about nuclear dynamics, where this was featuring, was strategic and very important. However, the immediate thing was, the, the delivery uh, machines, you know, in terms of aircraft and so on and so forth. So that was moving. So First World War came, Second World War was in the progress of coming, and what happened was, by the beginning of the Second World War, mm -hmm. the Jews were now relegated to, in spite of the easy equal to MC squared, this helped help Jews uh, to uh, uh, demand equality, equality with WASP Germans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This equation mm -hmm. right. But it, by the Second World War, this equation was still on the so-called abstract stage. Although the Germans were working very hard to put it into practice, because they have a delivery system, the aircraft, and so on. But you know, they have to get the bomb. And they knew the use of this here. What they were prepared to do with Einstein was to um, settle with him. Because Einstein said, look, I have a formula. I'm, therefore, I don't come from a race that is inferior anymore. We're not just dirty money lenders. We are as mathematical and intelligent as the rest of you. We're asking for first class citizenship because of the formula. He knew, by saying that, he knew that G, M1, M2 uh, equal to F, R squared. And just quickly uh, tell us what the G okay. is here. Yes, yes. This is the universal gravitational law. This is Newton. This formula brought Europe into limelight. Okay, this is universal uh, gravitational law. Right. Now, again, what does the G stand for? What is the M stand okay, for? G, what is F and R? G is the universal constant. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you have two masses, mm -hmm. the attraction force is the F mm -hmm. between them. Mm -hmm. The R is the distance between them. The radius. The radius. Mm -hmm. And the M1 and M2 are their masses. Mm -hmm. So in effect, I got that back. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I'm sorry, because okay. I just want to show a picture so yeah. people can, can see a little bit there. Okay. You could leave the law, the formula, leave okay. the formula, okay. you'll walk around that for the time. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we have 
if there's a, a mass here, M1, okay, mm -hmm. and then another one, M2, okay, mm -hmm. okay, and then there's distance R, okay, mm -hmm. then there is a force between them, force of attraction between them. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be just anywhere in the in the universe. Mm -hmm. And um, so that force is a force, mm -hmm. right? Okay, force attraction, attraction. That's a gravitational force between them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that force is related to the masses, right? You know, it's proportional to the masses, the product of the masses. Okay, but inversely proportional to the distance between them. And then the G is what you call the Gra gravitational constant. Yes, yes. Or the constant of proportionality in that equation, the gravitational constant. That's what Newton discovered. Mm -hmm. but that was considered an extraordinary gift from God mm -hmm. to a member of a race and people, which was visualized again like the Germans did as a blessing, special blessing and a calling of the European race to global leadership. Mm -hmm. Because that's a mystery. Um, Thunder Gago to find out that this already existed in a pyramid <laughs> way before this discovery. But mm -hmm. uh, we just to take a snapshot of what was happening there. So this brought Europeans Europeans to global leadership. Mm -hmm. Leadership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so when Einstein, this was in the 1600s, okay, 1600s. <coughs> so, <coughs> three, uh, 400 years later, or 300 years later, actually 300 years, 400 year, years later, 300 years, um, and he came up with a formula like that, that is kind of similar. Mm -hmm. He knew that if this got the Europeans to global leadership, mm -hmm. he certainly got the Jews. Jews are first class citizens. Plus citizens, mm -hmm. and then therefore that will put them in a position to contest and win the global leadership as well. So that was the issue. So what you see is that equations is the uh, way that. Humanity actually evaluates who is more blessed, who is being called by God to global leadership. Equations. Equations are codes, a revelation. Codes are revelations. This is a revelation. As a matter of fact, they saw it so much as a revelation from God to an individual and his race that they believed that revelation qualified him to be ordained a minister of the Church of England. Wow, that's heavy, that's powerful. So they didn't take this lightly at all, it's a revelation, nobody else you know, walk on the street, knew that. So how do you identify who is chosen? That's it, a code from God. Mm -hmm. And so it made him a special anointed person. So whatever divinity classes they were giving. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You understand me? <laughs> he couldn't surpass this. So that's the bottom line. So therefore, it was clear to them. Um, a Reverend uh, Lucas, Reverend Lucas, 
What was, what was Lucas' first initial? Uh, see, I, I, I'm the first. I, I go to don't, don't worry about it. Yeah. Because I, I heard what somebody mentioned on Lucas. I don't know about the same one. Yeah, I know. It's the same, well, you know, it's probably the same one. Reverend Lucas was, uh, you know, minister of the Church, <laughs> Church of England. Bless you. Bless you. Okay. He came up with a prayer and money. I said, listen, okay, we, we do all this, but we have to give him an award. He's not just one of us. He is an anointed one. So we qualify him to be ordained as a minister of the Church of England. We're going to also give him a chair in the university. Mm -hmm. No Cassian professorship. Was created with money raised by Reverend Lucas. Yeah, we gotta get your fundraiser. <laughs> <laughs> um so when the Jewish people came around and God revealed a similar formula to them, they remembered that history. They said, okay, it's our turn now. First, we must be accepted as a first class citizen. We can be operating on dogs and Jews are mm -hmm. verboten. Okay, you know, uh, and Professor Henry Clark, you know, uh, explains that very well. He says, yeah, notice how the dogs come first. <laughs> 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 um, so we can't fit in that with this formula anymore. So the problem then was the Germans were determined. They were ready to strike a deal an individual deal with Einstein to say, okay, we're going to accept you as an honorary first class because of your formula, not your people. The people have to stay where they are. And he said, that's not good enough. So the battle began. In the initial state, they gave him some superficial uh, you know, recognition and so on and so forth. When he insisted on including his people and, and, and so on, then they began you know, fighting with him. But meanwhile, they were going to the labs trying to test this thing out to make a bomb with it. So what he did was, since there was no agreement, he did whatever he could and came over to the United States and struck a deal. Uh, brother, if you could help. You know. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I'm going to just wipe everything now. Everything? Because, well, yeah, because... We'll I, keep the top one, right? Yeah, yeah. Just leave the two formulas. Okay. <laughs> he moved on to America. <coughs> um, bless you. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Einstein and then. And the, oh, left right off new. That's I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, now, so therefore, <clears throat> with that problem between them, what was happening was okay. The Germans were ready to go on with their. Um, so now this. Oh man, there's so much now. This happened in Cambridge, of course, Newton's Snow with Cambridge. Mm -hmm. Now, Einstein, during this time, I believe he was University of Berlin. He was in Berlin. Uh, for many years, <coughs> he wasn't allowed. He, you know, he, they gave him some cheap little university somewhere, but once this came around, I think they elevated him to Berlin. Mm -hmm. Now, because there's a statue of this equation in University of Berlin right now. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the background. Now, 
Gatengan Ga Tengan You know Has become the big player They invited <coughs> Even though Berlin has a big name And Germany or Germans had the philosophy that they're not going to try to rank university. University should be operating on the same level. <laughs> and every university is supposed to be as good as the other. But mm -hmm. in reality, they knew that they knew that Gottingen was the Harvard and the Cambridge, you know, of Germany. So, but Einstein wasn't good enough to go into Gottingen. Mm -hmm. However, when he was developing. Uh, the second stage of this formula, which is the general relativity, mm -hmm. this was the special relativity. Mm -hmm. He was invited to Germany, uh, to Gottingen, for one week only. The only faculty position he, he could get in Gottingen was for one week. Mm -hmm. And that is to discuss his general relativity equation. He was invited by a guy called David, David Hilbert. <laughs> and at this juncture, I'd like you to go, uh, go on the computer and put search for David Hilbert. At Gottingen University. So, they worked together for one week. Einstein and Hilbert worked together for one week. And they perfected. It's like a brainstorming of the general relativity, really. They all agreed the formula was good. But Hilbert had felt he was working on the same problem himself, mm -hmm. but by, by working for that one week, felt having, you know, basically that he had made enough contribution mm -hmm. to the general relativity. And so he could write up the general relativity as part of his contribution, mm -hmm. just like Einstein could. So it became a competition. Mm -hmm. And how, who, how, uh, they decided who actually, um, you know, to, was supposed to get the credit was who published the paper first. Both of them knew the, the paper. You, you found them in the Wikipedia? Yeah, I, I found it. I'm to Google Oh, it. oh good, good. He's found so, good, good. Gutting and it's also good, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you, you confirm some of the things I said about Gutting in terms yeah. of history. But yeah. go to David Hilbert. Oh, and biography. Yeah, F hit, hit that one and, you know, and, and so you know. Yeah. Um, which one you want me to hear? No, no. Uh, uh, David Hilbert biography, facts and biography. Okay. This I think that yeah, I think that might give. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it gives background. Yeah. Gives read, read, read some of it. You know. The, okay. Uh, um, born January twenty third, eighteen sixty two. Uh, he died February fourteenth, nineteen forty three, at age eighty one. Uh, he was German nationality, um, famous for formulating Hilbert spaces, a major theory in functional analysis. David Hilbert was born in Koenigsberg, East Prussia. Okay, he was a great leader and spokesman of mathematics in the early 20th century. Like most German mathematicians, Hilbert was a product of Göttingen University, at that moment the world's mathematical center. And he spent much of his working life there. Hold on, I want you to go over that again. At that moment, the world's mathematics center. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's another way of saying they took over from Cambridge is the mathematics headquarters of the world. Right. Ex exactly. Okay. All right. Um, his formative years were spent at Garningsburg University, where he developed fruitful scientific exchange with his fellow mathematician Adolf. Hartswitz and German, excuse me, Hermann Minkowitz. Uh, let's get into his background. Yes. Yeah, let's scroll down a little bit more. At the University of Koenigsberg, if I pronounce that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, Hilbert studied under Lat um, Lederman for his doctorate, 
which he earned in 1885. One of his friends were, there was Herman Manowski, who was also a doctoral student. In 1884, Adolf Hurwitz was appointed to Coingsburg University and became friends with Hilbert, which was a very significant factor in Hilbert's mathematical development. David Hilbert was a member of staff at Coingsburg from 1886 to, to 1895, being the private dozen until 1892. He was then an extraordinary professor for one year before becoming a full professor in 1893. We're going to say, we're going to say somebody's yeah, adventures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, bro, but you know, there, there's some, some turning point there in his stay in Gottingen, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, uh, what was his position in Gottingen. Right. Yeah, yeah he, he was, uh, um, uh, what did he say? He, he was an extra, extraordinary professor for one year before becoming a full professor in, in 1890. Okay, was that in Gottingen? Did he say? Yes. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. And then, okay, Hilbert inventions. Are Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, they, they talk about the foundation of geometry. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. That's some of the things that his contribution, but go on, you know, he has, he made, he earned the title. Okay, no, his contributions. So okay. After receiving with axiomatization of geometry, uh, David Hilbert developed a program to axiomatize mathematics. With his attempt to achieve his goal, he began a formalist school of mathematicians, excuse me, of mathematics which opposed the institutionism of Brouwer and Kronecker. Meanwhile, Hilbert was expanding his contributions to math in various directions, partial differential equations, mathematical physics, and calculus of variations. He knew that he could not achieve this by himself. In 1900, Hilbert gave a massive homework assignment to all mathematicians across the world. He did this when he presented a lecture entitled Mathematical Problems before Paris International Congress of 1900. Gilbert, excuse me, Hilbert proposed 23 mathematicians, excuse me, Hilbert proposed 23 mathematics problems to those solutions he thought the 20th century mathematicians ought to uh, devote themselves. These mathematics problems are, are now known as Hilbert's problems, and many of them remain unsolved today. Very important. Yes. Very, very important. Because mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about one of those problems. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Just, you know. Okay. Only, only a part of the, um, left is Hilbert's latter years. Okay. So okay. Hilbert okay. courageously. All right. Let me, okay. let me summarize. You know, uh, okay. Okay. So now, the Hilbert problems are a list of unsolvable problems. He couldn't solve himself, so mm -hmm. he did put it out for everybody, right. you know, it made an assignment for the rest of the mathematicians. Look, let's search for this. Yeah, 23 so, of them. 23 of them. The first on the list, mm -hmm. of, uh, if there's a, a link on, on a highlight on that, you'd have, you know, you, you need to see it listed, you know. If there's a, you know, usually there's a height on that because you need to see the list, you know, what's the list, okay? Uh, the list of the 23, okay? Let me, see, let me try to okay. go to the next page to see if it says anything. Okay, uh, okay. Otherwise, no, I'll, I'll tell you. The number one mm -hmm. was Riemann hypothesis. Did he call it Riemann hypothesis? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's extremely important, and, and okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I probably just uh, Google it. Okay, okay. Now, yeah, just yeah. Go, can you go on another window? Another window. We can go back to okay. where. Okay. You know, you know. In other words, ah, oh, you notice Einstein. Uh, Einstein was here. <laughs> is Einstein is there? <laughs> <laughs> How about that. Okay. Yeah. So anyway. Um, yeah, it, this is important because, uh, and you know, they, sh they should have said that he had the math department. We're going to visualize, you know, check that out also. But here's a person who is giving assignment to the rest of the mathematicians, mm -hmm. and he's classified as the most influential mathematician of the 20th mm -hmm. century. Mm -hmm. Gilbert? That's right. 
That's absolutely right. Mm-hmm. And that probably will be in the Wikipedia version of it. Did you see the 23? Oh. Yeah. Okay. The okay. List, the list of them. Maybe, maybe if we go downstairs, there might be a list. Oh, 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 what's the, let me see that. This is me my passes right there. Oh, there, there you go. That's right. There you go. There yeah. you go. Okay, no, go, go. What is it? Okay. Okay. We won't be reading. No, right. they, okay. Nature and influence of the problems. Okay. So, okay. See that? It's number one. It's, right, right. When you click on it? Yeah. Well, not too much the clicking on it. It's, uh, it's number one. There right. are others that follow, but the very first one. No, no read, that, read that first. Okay. Uh, Hilbert's problems range greatly in topic and precision. Some of them are propounded precisely enough to, to enable a clear affirmative slash negative answer. Like the third problem, probably the easiest for a non-specialist to understand and also the first to be solved, or the notorious ace problem, the Riemann hypothesis. There are other oh, problems. Oh, yeah, okay, so, okay, now it says, uh, first to be, be solved, solved, or the notorious eight problem. Eight problem. Okay, the theme of okay, it was the eight, not number one. Okay, it was mm -hmm. the eight. It was the eight one. Okay. okay, so it was number eight. Okay, but okay, but all right, so it says here number uh, what am I? Okay, the, the <coughs> notorious eighth problem, right? Notorious mm -hmm. of the th uh, 23, this is the most notorious. Mm -hmm. That, that's the most challenging. The mm -hmm. most challenging. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what it's saying. Mm -hmm. That's even for Hilbert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hilbert, the greatest, you know, great mathematician. And, and they, they will give him a nickname of, of uh, the last of the great mathematicians. Mm -hmm. So you, it's, for you to understand Gagot, you have to understand Hilbert. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. You have to understand you know, uh, Hilbert. Right. All right. David Hilbert competed with Einstein. That's one of the reasons why you see Einstein's picture coming in where you have uh, David Hilbert. Uh, his contribution was so, okay, now you also see some of his students. Um, that maybe the, uh, okay, uh, you, uh, you know. And I got, I got the other thing over here. Yeah, okay, let's see his students. Usually they will give, sometimes Wikipedia gives that and so on. But, uh, but this is what we had before. Okay, so yeah. Okay, go to the students and, and, and all that. Go downstairs and I mean, go. Let's go down. Yeah, see if we get his students. Students. No. No, that's okay. okay let me go back to the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe you could just tell us the students. No, no, yeah, but is, if you see it yourself, it's a little. Uh, yeah, okay, oh, okay. Now, did you pass something? Usually, they still give the students. And the students, I want you to see uh, one of the. Do they have anything on the students? No, okay, go, go up a little bit. Usually, they'll give some of the students. I probably can search for them. Okay. Um, yeah, see, here's all 23 right here. All 23. Okay, uh, okay, problems. okay. Let's go, go, let's go, 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 go. Which is number one? The uh, con continuum hypothesis. Oh, okay, that's what I mean. That's, uh, that's uh, yeah, okay, sure. That's us, okay, good, okay. And then number eight is, yeah, the number and one is always, okay. Right, number eight is the Riemann hypothesis. Riemann hypothesis, okay, there you go. Okay. Okay, okay, go ahead. Uh, students, students, there's no students, not even there? No. Okay, I'm going to give you the name of one of his students, okay? Uh, one of his students is a guy called Courant. Okay, David Hilbert's uh, student, Courant. C O R A N T. Courant. Courant was one of his students. And he was sent over here to this country mm -hmm. to build, establish one of the most prestigious mathematics institutes in the world called the Courant Institute of Mathematical Science. Mm -hmm. It was David Hilbert's student. Mm -hmm. That's where Professor Garabedian that I was talking to you about uh, ended up as a professor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The impact of Hilbert is so big in mathematics 
that some of the things that I'm going to show you later on, you will be able to understand their position. So, and we've started with, with Hilbert before we even go to Gauss. But what you remember, what you need to remember is what was said before. Gottingen was the center of mathematics globally, as in the headquarters of mathematics. Believe it or not, that's the position of Ofapit Institute of Technology right now. Ah, okay. <laughs> of Apple Institute of Technology has taken over from Gottingen as the headquarters of mathematics. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay, now, what you do is go to the Wikipedia of, uh, you know, version of David Hilbert. They will have, okay. Uh, Just click on it? Yeah, yeah, maybe you click on that one. Click on that one, see. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Go, go George down. Cantor. Cantor was the, you know, that's another place. Yes, go down, go down. Here place. Okay, students. Yeah, yeah you will see some of the students. Right here. And the students. All right, I just told what they did. Okay. Yeah, they, the students will be here somewhere. Okay. The actual list of them. Talk to students right here. Okay, okay, okay. They're right here. Okay, look for Courant. Right here, Richard Courant. Okay. Uh, put, put that in there. R Richard Courant. Actually, you want to take a picture of this page? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right here, Richard Courant. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. He came, and the mathematics that is part of New York University, which is, sometimes they rank it among the top five in the, in the world, of Mathematics Institute. That's where Paul Garabedian uh, you know, uh, was professor. During the moment I met him to discuss the hodograph, he was in the Quran Institute. Okay. Quran was a student of David Hilbert, a very proud student, a very yeah. proud <laughs> student, <laughs> a very proud student of David Hilbert. Now, so. I wanted to bring you along in terms of what, what am I saying so far. Mm -hmm. Mathematics pretty much decides as in a formula. Formula is nothing but the truth. Mm. It doesn't matter wh what the truth is about, but the precise truth, you know, a proven truth or mm -hmm. closely, as close to be proven as possible mm -hmm. if you use a theory. Okay, now, so it's usually summarized with a formula. It's, mm -hmm. it's a revelation, it's a revelation. Mm -hmm. But it's a proven revelation. A the, proven revelation. Therefore, proven mathematically. Yes, yes. yes. Therefore it becomes a theorem, not a theory. That's right. Even when it is within a theory level, uh, <laughs> they feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they feel better than somebody who is just saying, no, I got a revelation, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because their revelation is summarized here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Einstein's revelation is seen here. And we're gonna do a similar thing they did with Newton, with Einstein, and he made sure that in his will, they will not turn him into, uh, him thing into a shrine and therefore a prophet and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But it's about prophets. You understand? I mean, when a revelation is given to you to give, share with the world, you being a conduit for, which is what I was saying to you when you came over here. And it will get you, take you a while to get used to my transformation. Mm -hmm. My transformation is to see through God, God, God as the totality. There's nothing else outside of God. We, you, you know, even though we do things that are not supposed to be godly, we're really within God. We're just a bad part of God when we do that. So therefore, it's about God. This is God. If it is true, it came from God. There's only one source. I, I buy that, yes. If it is true, it came from God. Right. And what the people are doing is that, okay, they, they're able to sense that. They say, okay, God didn't give it. You know, they didn't have it, so God didn't reveal it to them. Mm -hmm. So for God to reveal it to somebody... Uh, there was a purpose. There, there was a reason. Mm -hmm. And that person cannot be ignored. 
Mm -hmm. Because he got something special. Yes. The same thing happened to Newton. In his case, they actually uh, ordained him, uh, accepted this as a qualification for his mm -hmm. divinity, mm -hmm. uh, DD, mm -hmm. okay, and was ready to be ordained and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So now, so now, so, but we move from England to Germany. Mm -hmm. With this development, the bomb was going to be built mm -hmm. because the Germans, the West Germans, refused. Einstein's condition that his people would be accepted as first class mm -hmm. and so on, uh, there was a disagreement. So he moved on to America. In America, he struck a deal with the American government with his formula. Mm -hmm. A deal was struck um, for the Manhattan Project. I remember that. Uh, that's when the atomic bomb really kicked in. That's yeah. correct. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. <laughs> okay, E is equal to MC squared. Mm -hmm. This general formula here, even though it is a universal gravitational law mm -hmm. of Newton, mm -hmm. which is, you know, like I said, revelation, but inside of it, it's a general formula for force that relates force and mass. Right. Mm. Force and as force is mass and acceleration. Right. That came from here. Right. You, you, know, you know, I see something very interesting now that you mention it. Yes. Come on. As long as C does not equal to zero. That's correct. You divide C and get M equals E over C squared. That's correct. This M could be substituted into here. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that, that's, that's part of the oneness. That's what we're talking about here. Yeah. Now, so, but because this actually gives force, you could, you know, if you rewrite this, you will, you would have F is equal to, is equal to G, G. M1, M2 over R squared. Right. And and if and if if M1 and M2 equal is G M G M squared. That's right. Now what happens is, so if you um you know you can if the M2 mm -hmm. or M1 is a constant. Yes. You know, like the planet, you mm -hmm. the planet and you're looking at various other, mm -hmm. you know, you know, then this becomes a constant yes. that could be swallowed in this. Mm -hmm. This this doesn't vary; it becomes a constant like this one. Right. It's so this, yeah, that will be grouped together as a bigger G or whatever. Right. Yeah. Or like you said, the M1 and M2 are constants. Yes. That's really. No. Yeah. M1 is, is constant. M2 can vary. Oh, M2 can vary. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. M2 could vary. You know. Uh, so then, what happens is this. M2 then over R squared, this becomes the M, you know, for in the general form, it could be any mass. Mm -hmm. So force is equal to mass mm -hmm. times one over R squared. One over R squared mm -hmm. is proportional to the acceleration. Ah, so okay. This is where you get a M A. Force is mass that's acceleration. Mass time acceleration. Gotcha. So this is where that came from. Right. And the other thing I was thinking is that, like you said, Earth, these two probably be constant. Probably yeah. both of them, right? Yeah. Who's that? Excuse me? You said you were here to read the lecture. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> right. So, so that would say that force yes. is equal to. How are you today? Okay, okay. G yeah. M over R yes. square. That's good. Well, Do that uh, again, would you please? Well, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, yeah, in, in, yeah, it's, that's right. Because you have two M's. Okay, and right. If, 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 yeah, if, if the M's, like an M equals MC squared, yes. is one mass object. Yes. So if you got, if you got a, Yes. If, if, if you say that if, if, yeah. if the two if the two masses are equal are equal, yes, sir. that's 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 really m squared. Absolutely, absolutely. That's right. So they fall in. Like yeah. That. 
Yeah. You see? That's right. So, so I'm saying that if I take the square root of the force, right, right, yes. multiplied by by the radius, that's divided right. by the gravitational force. That's I got right. this. I got this m over here. Exactly. Exactly. So that's the connectivity. Yeah. What's happening is that in discovering the universal gravitational law, mm -hmm. Newton found the relationship between uh, force and acceleration. Mm -hmm. That immediately had an application. The application is that's the fundamental basis of designs of machines. Oh, OK. Good, good. That's the design, how you design the machines. Now, Machi what year are we talking about? Or the 1600s. This, this 16. was happening in the 1600s, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, what 16th, impact did that have on the uh, Industrial Revolution that, that propelled Europe ahead of Africa? That's so exactly, much. that's exactly, you know, late 1600s, actually. You were born in 1642, you know, 16, 1700, okay? 1700. So you can say then that it was uh, formulas, mathematical formulas, that were discovered by Europeans that propelled them into world leadership, and particularly in the 1600s when they went into uh, the Industrial Revolution mm -hmm. that put them ahead of Africa, because Africa never went into the Industrial Revolution okay. at that time. This is the Industrial Revolution. Point it out again. Where this is formula is the Industrial Revolution for the Europe because of F is equal to MA. Mm -hmm. The machines, all that, for cannon developments, for... Right. And, and since the mass is constant, yes. you can plot a chart exactly. with the, the relationship between the force and the acceleration. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what we're talking about here. So, in other words, it's a universal gravitational law, but it's also a law for machines. Mm -hmm. For designing machines and uh, weapons, war machines. Weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> Say that again? Weapons of Weapons mass of destruction. destruction. <laughs> that came from this formula here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is power. Mm -hmm. That is power. That is what gave the Europeans the power and the global leadership. So it was a revelation from God that through which they're able to see how to produce machines and war machines, especially war machines. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was kept within Europe. I got to go deep and say Africans already have this within the pyramids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, this is directly from pyramid because this stuff is pyramid stuff. So you get to hear people like uh, George W. Bush, the, 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 the father, George W. Bush, sitting in, in the White House, saying when he was about to bomb Kuwait, he says that the liberation of Kuwait has begun. That's right. And the New World Order, and it's, that word slipped out of his mind. The term, That's this right. is what he's talking about, New World Order. New World Order. That, that, that a race of people is about to emerge. Absolutely. That, that it, look, it didn't look like us. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, so this is extremely important. So therefore, this was used to develop war machines. Mm -hmm. This was eventually also used to develop the war bombs and war machines. So it is this formula that revolutionized, this formula that revolutionized the worlds before us. Mm -hmm. This was taken over by the Germans. Mm -hmm by colonizing England and put the German queen, a king, over England. Therefore, it was, the Germany was, uh, England was being run directly from Germany, mm -hmm. even during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Believe it or not. Mm -hmm. They bombed the, the, v, the V rockets. They tested it on London mm -hmm. before the Second World War. Mm -hmm. They sent it, they, they, they rocketed it from Ger uh, Germany, right into near the Queen's <laughs> residence. I don't know if someone could have the, the, the political setting. It, it, it exploded and killed a couple of people. Mm -hmm. 
That's how they tested their rocket. Yeah, I don't think the gentleman came to test no meter. That's just me talking. Yeah. Well, he sure came at a at, 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 at a <laughs> right. yeah, appropriate time. Appropriate time. Most appropriate. <laughs> he didn't come and check no meter. I Thank took you. a picture of him. Exactly. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, yeah. you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> catching on, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. So at first I thought it was Kenneth kind of Thomas. <laughs> I did but it was, do it first. But yeah. I didn't see it. So you know, so you know, spy. <laughs> <laughs> so you got it. You, that's an understatement. I tell you, right. Yeah, force everywhere. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some some that's coming from there. Yeah. And they knew you are coming here today. The surveillance. Uh, oh yeah. It, it, uh, just they got phones tapped all the time. Okay. All right. But, <laughs> but, know, but we because you, you hear what we're talking about. Yeah. So, so therefore, it is formula that determines who are perceived to be the world leaders. Because formulas give them a way to build war machines. This is an example of a formula that builds war machines. This is another example of war machine formula. But whoever has the formula has the power to use the most powerful war machine to take over. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The stronger, the more powerful your war machine, Absolutely. the more you're able to dominate the other species, Absolutely. human species. Absolutely. It is in, so therefore, so therefore, but this too, okay, the Germans tried to build a bomb, like I said. Mm -hmm. They did the experiment, very critical experiment. As soon as I arrived, uh, Einstein arrived here, and they were on the verge of overtaking America. Mm -hmm. So Einstein wrote a letter to uh, Roosevelt, Roosevelt at the R and said the Germans were just pretty close and they would take over America and everything else over there. So FDR put in six million dollars. Six million? Million dollars mm -hmm. into this uh, formula and did all the other kinds of intelligence, and they came up with a bomb first. Mm -hmm. I came with a bomb, what? The bomb, the, the yeah. atomic bomb yeah, first. Atomic bomb. Oh, first. But, but that cannot really be fair, right? Because it was, it was, people believe that Germans had the bomb anyway. Or they had some form of it. Form of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't know, know, don't know what stage it was at, but it had something. Absolutely, because they were pretty close. They have yeah, published their, 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 their testings and so on. So they were ready, very right. right, you know, and so on. They were knocking on the door. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So therefore, now, but with that history... Doc, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yes. I'm going back to what you mentioned about who gave... It, that, that these equations came from God. Now, I'm with you yes. 100%. Yes. And, and see, that's why I stand the reason that um, um, uh, the fact that Einstein came to America right. to, to make sure that the atomic bomb right. got developed first, right. that was God saying, I, I, I am shifting world power that's right. into more... I can say, for back, back, uh, uh, lack of a better phrase, more capable right. hands. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because Germany having an atomic bomb meant worldwide destruction. Absolutely. America having an atomic bomb yeah. means that there's a delayed worldwide destruction. Right. The United States is still destroying the world, right. but, but, but it's, it's like the difference between a, a, a nuclear bomb and, 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 a, and a nuclear um, reactor. Right. The bomb lets it off all in one shot. Right. That's the German mentality. Right. You blow everybody up. You know, in the United States, right. America said, "Well, we're, we're going to release it slowly, like Absolutely. a nuclear reactor." Absolutely. Okay, so that that that, that gives that, that that's so God was saying, "I'm actually a buying time, right? Okay, so, for the human race, right, to get his act together." Absolutely. I'm sorry, Trey, but I, I just had to share that. No, that that's extremely important in terms of the dynamics of what they say because, mm -hmm. see, the whole mentality is okay. If the Germans said they're superior. I said the Jewish people said they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, the Germans would say, look, I have the formula, and this is what I can do with the formula. I can build a war machine that will annihilate you, mm -hmm. period. So the, the, the Jews says, OK, we have a formula. And we have struck a deal with your folks over here in America, and they're ready to go ahead and challenge you. So we're even. We can't, we can't be inferior to you. That was the position. Now, what was the deal that the Germans 
uh, worked out with the with, with uh, the U.S. No, the Jew the Jewish people struck a deal. I mean, what was the deal that Einstein okay. and the Jewish people were yes, able to work it out? That okay. America would give the Jewish people a first class citizenship. Uh, the Manhattan Project was headed by Oppenheimer, a Jewish, a German Jew. Most of the, you know, uh, big project managers and researchers in the bomb were Jewish people. Those who were thrown now, for example, from Göttingen. Hilbert was ordered by the Nazi government to throw out every Jewish professor in the med department at Gottingen. And they all came, most of them came to America. And they had jobs in the Manhattan Project and various universities. And, and so later on, the uh, Nazi people would visit uh, Hilbert and say, well, how is the med department doing? And he had to, tell them, look, you've emptied the department, literally, because <laughs> during that time they had the build-up of Jewish, uh, you know, people like Courant, although Courant was a student and so on, uh, was not allowed in there. He had to be sent. He was, he came over to America. Uh, tons of them. And he had something like 69 PhD students, David, mm. David Hilbert. That's, I think, 69? It, wow. In, in mathematics. Wow. Mm. <laughs> so, all right, we're getting there. He could not solve this problem, Riemann hypothesis. He could not solve it. And who is Hilbert? Uh, who is Riemann? We're going to get into Riemann. Mm -hmm. You okay? You're talking. You need a break to get some water. You think? Oh, no, no. Okay. I'm, I'm just part of the transfiguration. Okay. Yeah. Um, Riemann was before Hilbert. They are in the same class. Mm -hmm. Their father was Gauss. Gauss was the real father. Oh boy. And, and these are space here. But, yeah. But, 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 but you want to keep the equations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I want to keep the equations. Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. Just erase this for the time. You, you've heard about Quran uh, already. Okay. Quran was a student of. What about this? Yeah, yeah, Captain Gen. Yeah, you can take that in your hand. I will, you know, you all. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, take that up. Okay, okay and then. All right. So, yeah, I need to leave the rest of it. Okay, so. Daos is their father. Frederick Gauss. Now you're going to go into Frederick Gauss. Mm -hmm. Find out, guys. Leave the window there. We're going to go Gauss, and we're going to go Raymond uh, also. <coughs> and a couple more. <coughs> Raymond Sums. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. You would. OK. Um, uh, what, what, what's uh, Gauss first name? Gauss, uh, Frederick. Frederick, right? Carl, Carl Frederick Gauss. Carl. With C or K? Yes. C or K? K, K, It won't be, it won't be hard to find. Oh, maybe, 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 maybe it's a C. You know, if you try. Actually, I just, I just, I just put a uh, Gauss. You put his name. G G U S S C. Oh, see, Gaga is coming out, isn't that something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. That's G funny. S S. No, that's it. Okay, G A U S S. Yeah. The Gaga comes up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, see, it's already there. Frederick. 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 <laughs> yeah, we can keep looking here already. It's there. It's there. That's him. Yeah. There, not too many. You know, it's only one Frederick. There you go. Okay, you're going to. Yeah, see. Uh, Carl Frederick Gauss. Yes. Yeah, it was a K. I, you know, sometimes I. <laughs> but anyway, but that's it. Okay, that's mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. All right. Carl Frederick Jobs is considered to be the greatest German mathematician of the 19th century. His discoveries and writings influenced, you know, and it went on and goes on and goes on. Yeah, yeah, just go, go, go ahead, maybe go a little more. Okay, then let me get it. You especially, okay. Okay. Discovery and writings influenced and left a lasting mark in the area of number theory, astronomy, ge geodesy, and physics, particularly the study of electromagnetism. Keep on. Mm, yeah. Well, see, is this, this is Wikipedia? Uh, mm. This is. Hold on. 
Okay, because Wikipedia will have like, uh, you know, um, that. <laughs> no, bless you. No, no, bless you. This is not Wikipedia. It's not Wikipedia. Okay. See, there's a Wikipedia uh, somewhere, but uh, oh, actually, actually, this is Wichita. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, but uh, you go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they would, they are, yeah. This is Wikipedia right here. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Let's see that. Okay. okay. This is Wikipedia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Read, read, read <coughs> the, the, the beginning there. So. <coughs> okay, I was joking here, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Carl, uh, uh, Joanne Carl Frederick Gow, uh -huh. jo excuse me, Johan uh -huh. Carl Frederick Gow, yep, yep. uh -huh. okay, uh -huh. uh, was a German mathematician uh -huh. who contributed significantly to many fields, including number theory, uh -huh. algebra, uh -huh. statistics, yeah. analysis, yeah. differential geometry, uh -huh. geodesy, uh -huh. geophysics, yeah. electrostatics, yeah. Stati electrostatistics, yeah. astronomy, and, and optics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, sometimes referred to as the Prince. Princeps Mathematicorum. Yeah, that's Prince that, of Mathematics. Right, in Latin for Prince of Mathematics or that's the foremost mathematician. Now that's important. Mm -hmm. That's extremely important. Yes. Foremost mathematician. Right. They will class him in the same class as Newton and Euler mm -hmm. later on. Mm -hmm. But he's the foremost mm -hmm. mathematician. Right. I see. And check his eyes. Saying greatest mathematician since antiquity. There you go. <laughs> right, that's who we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay now, he they would say somewhere there where he was okay, he was um, uh, the head of the math department at Gottingen. Just like Newton was the master of uh, uh, of the Trinity College, mm -hmm. the master of the Trinity College. He was the head of the math department at Gottingen University, the headquarters of mathematics before Gaga. Headquarters moved under Newton from Cambridge mm -hmm. to Gottingen under Gauss. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, so, yeah, so now, um, yeah, they, they would say how he ran Gottingen and all that. So, but anyway, now, so, um, between the formulas that are being developed, that are forming the basis, and like I said of Gottingen, the dynamics of the aircraft design and all that was headquartered in Gottingen University. Mm -hmm. And Gauss was, because they know the mathematics is what is behind the brain behind mm -hmm. all this development, so Right. The mathematics has to be the best to help these application areas move on. So therefore, the superiority of a race is dependent on the revelation from God that is proven and you know mathematically and through application in terms of having impact on humanity. That is how that was shown. Mm -hmm. So uh, Gauss was the brain, the you know, symbol of the brain behind um, the development of formulas. Because formulas come on the general topic of mathematics. Formulas, specific formulas, you know, because mathematics is a study of formulas. Mathematics is a study of equations. Mm -hmm. So therefore, equations are, I mean, formulas are equations. And so, therefore, any equation is on the mathematics. And so, Gauss is a symbol by being the head of the math department and the foremost mathematician. Foremost is superiority. Mm -hmm. Foremost. Mm -hmm. You're leading the race. Yes. Superiority. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if he was the foremost mathematician or foremost, you know, thinker, foremost, uh, you know, has the foremost, you know, revelation mm -hmm. in terms of formulas, therefore, he's, he's closer to God than the rest of the people. And his race becomes the superior race. Mm -hmm. This is where the concept of race superiority was formulated. 
And because they refuse to acknowledge Imhotep and even Carver mm -hmm. and Booker T. Washington and stole, you know, what they did. Uh, Carver, for example, fed the South. And by the way, Gauss's son moved on to live in Missouri. He left his father and parents in Germany and came to stay. He didn't, his father didn't want him to become a mathematician, so he set us an agriculture. So he owned a plantation there and, and worked black people. But he was fed by a black man. When they were starving, Carver fed them by making 323, uh, 25 products from one product, a little peanuts. In the process, fed both non-blacks and blacks in the South. Stir, save them from starvation. Yeah, by crop rotation. No yeah, way. That's the concept. That's an African concept, mm -hmm. which he didn't learn from any school, right? Isn't that obvious? If, right. you, if you learned it from any of their schools, they would have known it. Therefore, where did he get it from? Africa. That's why he, he got along well with Booker T. Uh, Washington, mm -hmm. who was transplanting Timbuktu in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were natural partners. And together they you know, set up that stuff. So, but that was washed out and ignored. And the whole concept of supremacy was uh, centered around these two major formulas in effect both for building war machines. Mm -hmm. And while they were doing that, <coughs> meanwhile, they were reigning as a superior race and superior people. But they now, with this, had partnership with the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, this made the Europeans presidents. Because even though this came from England, it was colonized by Germany. So every, every president of America before Obama was German. I did not know that. Yeah, was German. German connection. One way or okay. Because they all, almost all of them are related to the Queen of England. Mm -hmm. The Queen of England came from Germany, near Göttingen. Mm -hmm. And there Göttingen ran the universities in England and elsewhere. And America and everywhere. Like I said, they sent Quran to set Quran Institute right here from Germany directly. Mm -hmm. Now, so it is the for this person represent the superiority of the European race, Gauss, <coughs> because he was the foremost. Mm -hmm. He was the foremost mathematician. At this juncture, um, a German called uh, me here. Actually, I was out looking for a con many years ago. <coughs> and he started talking to me. He's a car dealer. And he said to me, he says, uh, friend, my friend, let me ask you a question. Did you think uh, Germans lost the war? Caught me by surprise. <laughs> Again, they know. They know me more than I thought they knew, knew me. But anyway. And I said, before I could answer the question, he said, no, Germans never lost any war. He says, if you think Germans lost the war, we own Rolls Royce right now. And we own uh, the one in Detroit, uh, Chrysler. Chrysler. So he says, how do we lose the war? No, he says, Germans never lose anything. We get it from if we, it looks like we're going to get it back. It was, they, they lost politically, but they won economically. Economically, that's absolutely correct. That's so thing. therefore, now, I, I don't mind losing physically. I don't want to lose economically because <laughs> you, you beat me up. So, I want to heal, but I, but but you take my money from me, I can't survive. <laughs> so the Germans run America from Washington to everywhere on German uh, citizens as presidents because of the perception that Germans are the most intelligent uh, race, uh, people, group of people, 
a segment of the European world. The Europeans are, by virtue of him, but within the European setup, the Germans are the they're superior. They're all the, so Gottingen, Gauss, became the headquarters of the European supremacy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Gauss was the symbol. Along with Hilbert. Okay? Yeah. I need to, I, I, got, I got him on another thing over here. Okay. You got Hilbert. Yeah, you remember, you remember. Yes. Yeah, yes, you asked me to, to look him up. No, no, definitely, definitely. I, yeah, I'm going to ask you I, 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 still, I still got him up here. Yeah, okay. Oh, go to his students. Oh, Carl Frederick Gauss. Yes, yeah, yeah. He, he has here, but okay. Yeah, those are the, those are the brains. You know, this is the most influential. Right, here's the students right here. Exactly, okay. That's, uh, that's uh, you know, that's, you have Quran. Now, go to Carl uh, Gauss' students. Okay, let me get it back. That's important. Um... Can you keep talking, Professor? Yes, yes, okay, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted him to pull, just like you have a counterpart for the Hilbert, yeah. there'll be students list, okay. I want you to locate and for right doctoral students. For doctoral students, okay. Uh, Gudeman, okay. uh, Jerling, Riemann, Riemann. Bernard Riemann, Bernhard Riemann. Ah, okay, Make, so, you, so now, you know one famous, yeah, you know one famous student of Hilbert. Mm -hmm. And you also known uh, one famous student of mm -hmm. Gauss. Right. Very important. This is the foremost mathematician, especially a pure mathematician. Mm -hmm. He really has no, no equal before God. Mm -hmm. All right. So therefore. Oh, okay. I, I see the connection. Bernhard Riemann as in Riemann hypothesis. Ah, I see the connection. Ah, I see it now. Ah. When I ask you to brush over, brush off your your Gauss's formula, I'm, now, like, I'm going to do that. Now, now, now you're, you're catching on. Yeah. You're going to catch on and now to begin teaching him. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Okay. This is our story. Our story. This is our story. Yeah. Now, so Gauss is the foremost symbol of the European supremacy. His students, do you understand? His students. So, now, he headed the math department at Gottingen University. Later on, Raymond came, his student, headed the same math department. Mm -hmm. ah. And then set up the hypothesis, which he couldn't solve before he died. He died at a very early, early age, at 40 years old. Yes, of, mean? of tuberculosis, Riemann, that's mean. correct. Tuberculosis killed him. Now, so H Hilbert came after Riemann. Hilbert came after Riemann. What year are we talking about? Oh, God. Uh, Riemann was, I'm sorry, Riemann was very brief. You know, he, he came in. There are people between Riemann and Gauss. Okay, but he came in, I think, he came in around 1859, 1860, somewhere there mm -hmm. is where Raymond came in, you know. Gauss himself died in 1855. Mm -hmm. And when he was dying, he gave instruction to Raymond to tackle the differential geometry. Mm -hmm part of which is called Romanian geometry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Rema, uh, Gauss had done that, but because there was a fear it was going to be difficult for people, regular mathematicians, to believe it, he kept the work, you know, and did not reveal it. And so when some other people began to hint on it, he was very angry. <laughs> so he asked his student to finish what he did, you know, and he did. So it became a Romanian geometry, which was the basis of general relativity. Mm. Of Einstein, mm. there was no Roman, uh, general relativity without Romanian geometry, which was done under Gauss by his student uh, Raymond. That's why it's called Riemannian geometry. Mm -hmm. Now, so but when Hilbert came around after uh, Riemann, sorry, when Hilbert came around after Riemann. He wanted to be sure that the problem that he couldn't solve, created by Raymond, 
a guy that was there before him. They're in the same class. Even though this one only lasted for 40 years, their contributions are very comparable. They're in the same class of, as Hilbert. Of course, the norm of them is near here, this one here. So what happened was, um, so he advertised this Riemann hypothesis in 1900. Now, he was born in 1862, somewhere there, when Raymond was dying, mm -hmm. Raymond died around that 1866 or 1865, somewhere there. He was born then. Einstein was born 1878, 1870 something, a little later. Um, but uh, so, but but he rose very quickly. If he was talking in 1900, here's the person who was born in 1862. That means that he was under 40 years already. I mean, at 1900, he was already, he was under 40 years. Mm. And he's very influential at 40 years. So he declared the Riemann hypothesis at the top problem. Obviously, he tried to solve it. He couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he threw it out and gave it as an assignment to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. One the 23. Absolutely. What was it? One of the 23 problems that gave to the tough, world. Toughest problems. Mm -hmm. Toughest problems. From 1900 to 1943, nobody could solve that problem. The problem outlived him. He died like Carver in 1943. Mm -hmm. Just watching the problem. There's a lot of power. Mm -hmm. But Carver did in chemistry, that's why uh, Tuskegee is equivalent to transplanting of Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. Timbuktu derived from Kemet, chemistry, the mystery of the ancient Africans. Okay? You know, continued through Timbuktu, and Washington, Booker T. Washington came and said, well, that's a continuity. Boom, here's a new Timbuktu. I wish I would have sat with you and I was younger. And I was in my early age. You're putting together this you putting together a lot of pieces to puzzles I never was able to figure out. You know? God Thank is you. the greatest. God yeah. is the greatest. So he brought the fellow grandchild of the masters to reproduce the black magic in Tuskegee in New Timbuktu. Or chemistry. Or chemistry. Mm -hmm. And demonstrated practical air like that by creating 325. You know, that sticks to my memory. I don't, I don't make any effort to remember it. Mm -hmm. I, I gave the proof, a gigantic proof of how he did that with Gary Bird. Yes, I remember. Okay, now. Mm -hmm. So, um, he did, he did that miracle. That was black magic. Mm -hmm. he, he, he understood that's the black magic. Mm -hmm. And that's what I proved. It was black magic. Mm -hmm. Peanut is so small. <laughs> you understand? To count it as a unit is, is big enough for a peanut. Do you understand? I mean, you can't sh how do you shred that into 325 pieces? Mm -hmm. Peanut. Mm -hmm. You have a difficult, of course, you can crush it, but that will have no control. That's what he did. He did black magic. Kemet was here in Tuskegee. Kemet experience. Chem mystery. The mystery of the ancient Africans was operating in, in Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tuskegee. And the great grandchildren were together. They offered Booker T. Uh, 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 George Washington Carver, let's see, let's see, a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, a hundred. Back in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred thousand uh, dollars salary. I forgot, I forget, I used to confuse, I think it was Edison. Forward. It was for. <laughs> I keep on okay, You corrected me before, but Ford or Edison, but Ford offered him a hundred thousand dollars. That's 
million dollars. Today. Okay, okay. For him to, that was a strategy to abort the cooperation work and continuity of the ancient chemistry in Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. They were going to buy him off that project. Mm -hmm. And he refused. <coughs> he turned it down. Mm -hmm. He turned it down flat and said, no. Not only is he going to turn it down, he had no money. So in order to build this lab, he had to go to the dump sites of <laughs> of the corporate world that were offering him money to pick their remnants, uh, the broken you know, uh, uh, lab tools and so on and so forth, to build his lab. But he didn't mind doing that. And so he did and did this miracle. And that's what happened. So therefore, the continuity, continuity of the thing Happen now. This is also part of the dynamics of HBCUs. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Just sort of black on college universities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I told you, I, you know, it was an act of God who got hold of him. He was getting into things in that his ancestors were dealing with on a very heavy level without even really knowing how huge that is. Per se, mm -hmm. he just saw the light from God. And, and it's all about God because all this, everything I'm telling you right now, because of the truthfulness of it, it comes directly from God. All knowledge comes from God. Thank you. No if, ands, or buts, nobody can debate that. Thank you. Thank you. All knowledge comes from God. Okay. No one can debate that. All right. So therefore, so now, but, okay, so, but in spite of those heavy duty stuff, the black people were left out of the equation of superiority. As a matter of fact, the Jewish people were being relegated to the bottom because of their brown color. <laughs> people don't deal with that. <laughs> their little brown color is what really made them stand out on their black features. So mm -hmm. when you hear the Jewish people did a little bit of nose job and all that, it's not that we're only restricted to one kind of nose. As I was telling Minister Brown the other day, but complexions were across the board. Mm. But the melanin is unique. <laughs> we have to have the melanin. So the brownness and the, the, mm. the blackness has it become the one that we're most uh, identified with. And the hair. And hair, that's right. Well, it all goes together, you know. That's the, what we're identified with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so Booker T. Washington, for example, he knew who, who he was, <laughs> okay? Uh, uh, the other guy was not <laughs> on the same level, okay? Uh, the one from Harvard, I keep on, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> Yeah, he wasn't on the same level. I mean, they're all great, don't get me wrong, okay? But Booker T. Washington was, was a little <coughs> on reality line, mm. was a little, had a little edge. Mm -hmm. But here's the one who didn't have the, the Harvard PhD or degree. You know, because what they had was superior. <laughs> you understand? That's why I was able to work with Carver, and, and, and what they did was a legendary stuff. Okay, so because they had no money, and they did what was looked in, like impossible. So anyway, that was ignored. <coughs> there were formulas, <coughs> chemical formulas involved in in the peanut. In the carbon development, yes. As I proved, it's on the internet. Mm -hmm. Mathematics was involved, permutations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You take the main ingredients of the peanut and you do permutation and you could judge. I, I showed how you get 325. Mm -hmm. so, 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 what? I showed how you get using the permutation to get 325 from, <coughs> from the, peanut. the peanut, which has about three or four. Oh no, Five, no, 13 <coughs> fundamental components. Mm -hmm. So we perm, you know, do permutation of those. Mm -hmm. And here you are, mm -hmm. taking a few at a time, boom, you get 320. That would have been lost without Gaga. Nobody would have known mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that part of the magic. Mm -hmm. Chemistry. <laughs> if God talks to me, the ancestors talk to me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I broke it down for a brother who came from Missouri. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. He broke down crying. He said, man, brother, he did something to me, man. He broke down crying. He started to cry. Mm -hmm. He said, I thought I was the biggest expert on, on Carver. But you made me feel so little. I got it on film. Uh, huh? I got it on film. Yes. Mm -hmm. He said, you make me so small. Yeah. How did you get this piece that I didn't have? God, God says to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, in spite of that ignoring <coughs> of that heavy development, they began to search for bigger formula, more encompassing formula. Mm -hmm. One that would determine the ultimate mm. superiority. Mm -hmm. This for not this was happened with this. The spirit is decided right now by Germans. Mm -hmm. Germans are the superior because even even if you say <coughs> you know Jewish is, is is you know he comes from Germany. The formula and uh, I hope you don't forget it. This formula has a statue. They built a statue of this formula in University of Berlin. It's right today. So you folks are a little behind without the statue of Gaga. <laughs> you are a lot, a lot behind. Now, Gauss also had his brains preserved. Wow. You did not know that. Oh, yes. His brain is preserved. Einstein's brain is even preserved. The Jewish people have mm -hmm. his brains in a jar. <coughs> so is Gauss's. Mm -hmm. Wow. <coughs> because of these formulas. All right. <coughs> they did a stamp with Gauss. You have stamp. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, hey. You made some progress there. You have won out of so many, okay? You have a lot to catch on, however. They got Gauss on the stamp. Mm -hmm. You have Gagot on the stamp. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they have a statue of Gauss in Göttingen. You don't have a statue yet. Mm -hmm. They finally gave a statue to Carver. Barely, Robert King and so on. <coughs> Einstein has his brains in the jaw. Because of this formula. Einstein and Gauss got their brains in jar. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So therefore, now, but especially for Einstein for identifying that, okay, there must be a way to unify these formulas or get some kind of composition that will take this into the next higher ground. And whoever did that will become the superior. Absolutely. The superior. And, and so he was setting up his own people to be successful in that endeavor. He wanted his people to actually be the people that would do that. And that would have decisively proven to the Germans the Jews are not ones to be messed with. The Jews were definitely not a gas chamber material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they were superior, very a rank on the same level as the Germans. A force to be reckoned with. A force to be reckoned with. But if they had been successful in finding this ideal formula, even if to us approximately level to subsume and consume all this other stuff like you were trying to do a little while ago, mm -hmm. you know they said, then they would have gone past the Germans. That was his goal. Mm -hmm. So that formula, if uh, so you now know who Gauss is. Yeah, yeah, take Gauss out and this one. Okay, we I'll go with it over there. Yeah, just read that part of time. That formula is G I J comma J equal to zero. Now, can I ask you a, a go question? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna bring a little more continuity. Because we started out talking about two dimensional Holocaust. Uh, yeah. Oh, the hold the ground. He did it the Holocaust. <laughs> how you took that from two dimension to three dimension and right. the effects of it. Right. And how that brought about uh, right. a new, a whole new yes. uh, 
generation of air, aircraft. Right, right. That America benefited from. Right, right, right. Well, see, okay, now, I ha sometimes you have to digress and move fast forward things. In other words, mm -hmm. what I just did in bringing this up right now is to <clears throat> show the equations mm -hmm. is how humanity identify the privilege among them, the privilege groups among them. Mm -hmm. Because equations are revelations. Yes, that mm -hmm. is correct. Revelations that has that have believability. You said maneuverability? No, believability, integrity, oh, believability. credibility is a better word. Credibility. Okay. That has credibility. Mm -hmm. <coughs> equations are revelations that have credibility. Now if they're real equations, if equation like, see this came from a theory. Mm -hmm. Gagot can get it directly from a theorem. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, but <coughs> because <coughs> when equations equations come from a theory, mm -hmm. it has limitations. Are you all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when equations uh, come out of a theory, there are usually limitations. Mm -hmm. Yes. The approximations. Mm -hmm. Which is why, which is why, the pure mathematics is considered the more exact mm -hmm. and more precise kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's what Gagot represents. Gagot, <laughs> but anyway, let me not get into that because then I'll get you all off. So, <coughs> equations has declared this one declared the Europeans as the superior race. Mm -hmm. This one. Um, recognize the Jewish people mm -hmm. as being part of the European system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they share the glory of being the superior race. Mm -hmm. this, this formula here. Mm -hmm. The one that I would have blown out everybody else is this one that God gave to us. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to show on that dynamics. <coughs> These are all revelations. This is the ultimate revel revelation. But this, this and this are revelation with credibility, but they are limited. No, limited to, <coughs> this can go from universal gravitational law to the design of machine, force is equal to M A, you know, which shows broadness, but it still has limitations. Okay? This one is mostly the dynamics of the nuclear dynamics and so on and so forth. There are limitations. There are limitations in number, there's limitation in their scope. Mm -hmm. Limitation scope and limitation. So they were big and important, but they're just another formula. Mm -hmm. Another big formula, another big revelation. Mm -hmm. Credibility, but their credibility is limited. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. I'm trying to get across. Gotcha. They are lim their revelations are limited. Mm -hmm. Their credibility is limited. Mm -hmm. Highly limited. Mm -hmm. But they were recognized as being closer to God than the rest of the humans. Mm -hmm. So now, <laughs> God did what was unthinkable. Mm. Yeah, God did what was unthinkable. And revealed not only all revelations, mm -hmm. but exactly as in theorama. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a theorama. <coughs> Even Gauss only use theorem for specific things that he developed. He couldn't classify everything he did as being theorems. Right. Um, the application area is hard to, to talk about in, in a precise sense, a theorem. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Just for purposes of the audience, um, remember how I asked you to define the components yeah. of, the, of this equation? Right. Can you speak to the, the, the not, not too much time, but just speak to or just highlight yeah. the actual meaning of the, of the terms here so that when people, when they're looking at this video, yeah. they may be able to make heads or tails of this in a more tangible sense. That's correct. And in fact, <coughs> this equation, uh, let me, I will state it mathematically. Mm -hmm. And then I will go into, into other simpler versions of it. Mm -hmm. This is a revelation from God to a black man. That <coughs> all theorems, mm -hmm. a theorem means everything that exists. Mm -hmm. As a theorem. You are a theorem. Mm -hmm. Minister Brown is a theorem. Mm -hmm. I am a theorem. Mm -hmm. Every existence is a theorem. Mm -hmm. In point of fact, yes. Everything that is a theorem, and the theorems are expressed by equations, mm -hmm. also called morphisms. which can be multimorphism or isomorphisms, mm -hmm. some r later terms that I've been used, mm -hmm. originate out of one invariant, GI, originate out of one. All theorems, that means everything that exists and that is real, originate out of one invariant, GI. Mm -hmm. That is defined by God through God, God as God. Right? I'm with you. All realities, everything that exists called a theorem, all of them originate from one invariant GI, mm -hmm. defined by God as God, GI, through God, God by God, GI. Everything that is reality originate out of that invariant. Mm -hmm. That's the whole concept of human idea of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That has orthogonal components G, I, J. And because it is an invariant, the change, which is a comma, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is zero. Right. Now, you use a very important term, orthogonal. Uh, I just want to make sure that the audience right. heard that, and uh, yes. if you can just shed more light on that. Yes, yes. Uh, orthogonal simply means independent. Mm -hmm. Independent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, only the independent component of anything matters. Mm -hmm. That's the whole basis of mathematics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only the independent, you know, you can't be... You understand me? Only the independent things count. Right. They go back to what you're saying about the, the, the wing. That's right. The, 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 the friction piece, you make a the wing long enough, that's right. the smaller component becomes negligible. Absolutely. The only the independent part, I mean, so the independent part is what is counted. It, as obvious as that sounds now, even Gauss couldn't understand that well enough. Mm -hmm. Now, immediately, this is the ideal that Gauss was looking for, the divergence theorem. Mm -hmm. The comma is the divergence. <laughs> he said he was looking, he, the, the divergence theorem, mm -hmm. which was a collaboration between Lagrange, Green, Gr uh, Gratsky, 
and himself. There are four major mathematicians. Lagrange was French. Yeah, Grange theories. Yes. Yes. Okay. All this stuff's coming back to me. Green, that's right. Green was from England. And then uh, Gratsky was from Russia. They work on this theorem. Gauss, you know, it's called Gauss's theorem or divergence theorem. Mm -hmm. This is what he was looking for. <laughs> All of them were looking for this. Mm. So, but they didn't get it, so they had something, they didn't get zero, they had something other than zero. The divergence theorem, or the... Or the, the wrong tree. Yeah, they got, they got something else, mm -hmm. which balanced up, but it was an unnecessary. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is what, you know, now. So, he was looking for divergence. Yes, it's about divergence. And divergence works with orthogonal components. Look. I can keep you here for 100 years. Mm -hmm. So you know that constraining yourself to live for 100 years is not gargantical. I keep you like you're going to be healthy, you have no disease. Now, he was looking for divergence law. That's why he became the, most, the foremost mathematician and made his race the foremost race, mm -hmm. the superior race. Mm -hmm. He was looking for this formula. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The divergence. He came close, but with the help of three other legends too. Lagrange was not a slouch. He was the Prussian uh, Academy uh, chairperson. You know, even though he was from, you know, actually originally he was from Italy, but mm -hmm. it may be that part of Italy that was Germanic. You know, Lagrange. You know, became nationalized French and then ended up in Germany in the Prussian Academy. Okay, he he got things rolling. Then Green from England came around, and Gratsky, Gratsky actually proved the, the formula. But they were all looking for this. Now, Hilbert, Hilbert was looking for invariance. Mm -hmm. He was looking for invariance. So between Gauss, who was looking for divergence, and Hilbert, who was looking for invariant, they were searching for this formula. That is combined here. This is an invariant. This is what Hilbert was looking for. And Gauss was looking for the divergence. That's the divergence. Invariant and divergence it gives you another invariant. So, so in essence, you saw the Riemann hypothesis, sort of say. I see. Sort of say. Tell him that. I said, in essence, you solved the Riemann hypothesis. In, you know, in, in, in essence, it's done. <laughs> so, of, of, of the of the twenty three um, problems, I think it's about three or four of them that's still not solved. And you just knock one out. <laughs> they are, those those others have their GIJs right here. Mm -hmm. You take the seven, only seven GIJs, and you solve that. Way. The one that you said is the G2J. This location is the most, how can I say, is the fan pitching technology that has taken over from Göttingen and Harvard and everywhere else. Is the new headquarters of intelligence. If you try dare dispute that, take a look at this. It has all this and everything else. This is a theorem that this is the new headquarters of intelligence for, for the entire universe. Uh. Can I skip ahead, Professor, and then we'll come back? Sure. But now that we're talking about Gagat being, uh, Ofafit being the uh, headquarters. new headquarters right. of uh, world intelligence. Right. How has uh, Gottenham yeah. uh, in Germany yeah. reacted to that? Uh, have they acknowledged? Yeah. What is the acknowledgement around the world right. of Gagat? Right. Well, <laughs> especially if, in Germany. <laughs> if. If the very greatest was looking for divergence, and not the slouch, you're going to, I, I don't know if you picked up, uh, the nickname for uh, Hilbert was the last of the great mathematicians. I didn't see that yet. Yeah. Let yeah. me go back to Hilbert. Yeah, you know, the last of the great mathematicians. That was his title. Uh, uh, Gauss was prince of mathematics. Hilbert was the last of the great mathematicians. And both of them, both Gauss and uh, Hilbert, 
Yeah. Were at Gottenham. Oh yeah, you know they were at not only in so Gotten, Gottenham. Go Gottingen, Gottingen, Gottingen. That's a German. Maybe may the same name in England would be Gottingham, but they call it Gottingen in Germany. Gottingen or Gottingen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. How, they how both, has the reaction been? No, no. That I'm going to come on to that. Uh, that. So therefore, see the two things: invariance and divergence. Most of the top mathematicians they saw that as the thing to look for, but they couldn't put any hand, their hands on it. So, but I got summarized that in one equation and became the totality of theorems. It's not just equations. So therefore, this is the totality of mathematics. It is, or you put, you know, last of the great mathematicians. It might, it might pop in. Do you see anything like that there? That's it. Okay. Still looking. Yeah, yeah. It is it, it, you know, usual that needs to be highlighted or something like that. But uh, so therefore, this becomes all the equation there is, all the truth there is, all the realities there is, and that reality is what we call God. The totality is what we call God. And you can't get, anybody, nobody will give you an argument on that in terms of the entity out of which everything originates. That's what I said. It's an invariant GI from where all theorems come from. They all originate out of that G, I, J. And, but it's an invariant. The change in that variant is zero. So, uh, Raymond and, not Raymond yet, but uh, Hilbert and Gauss's dream have been fulfilled here in the formula. So, when it came down to 2005, in 2005, from 1855, Gauss transformed in 1855. In 2005 was the one, oh, I'm sorry, one, 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 150th anniversary of Gauss's passing. Mm -hmm. So they celebrated Gauss. Gauss was celebrated. G-A-U-S-S -S was celebrated mm -hmm. in 2005. The foremost mathematician, the greatest mathematician was celebrated. And so they had to select the works of the Greatest mathematicians to celebrate to celebrate the greatest mathematician, natural. Right. Mm -hmm. They actually declared the whole year a Gauss's year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a Gauss's year. I don't know if it's clear enough for you to face it again. Yes. That's Gauss's here. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have to edit that in. Okay, you can go ahead. Yeah, the, yeah this is another one. I don't know if it's better. You know, if it's, okay. No, it's okay. I'll, I'll edit yeah. it. Yeah, no, no, sure. Okay. Yeah, this, uh, yeah no, that's, this, is, this, is, this is a critical part of, of the presentation. <coughs> so, in Gauss here, I wish this could hang in here. In Gauss here, yeah. Thank you. That's good. Mm -hmm. they, select, they selected 52 
greatest works in mathematics, as in pure mathematics, mm -hmm. and in applied area, it becomes computer science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because his work had a lot of applications. Absolutely. In computer science. Absolutely. And me being a computer scientist as well. Absolutely. Computer science. N noted that. Absolutely. So, therefore, they selected the three, you know, I guess you divide it even, 26, 26, or 28 versus 20, you know, mm -hmm. uh, four or whatever. Um, so, of those 52 greatest works, meaning the greatest mathematicians and greatest computer scientists, mm -hmm. or greatest mathematics works, and greatest computer science works, mm -hmm. especially with relevance to the applications of Gauss's contributions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but again, number theory, uh, computers does a lot of things with number theory, you know, which Gau uh, between Hilbert and, and Riemann, and you're gonna, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna uh, look up, but anyway, so, you're gonna, okay, so, <coughs> what happened was, Every week of the year, they ask the entire world to study each of this piece of work, 52 works, to celebrate the greatest mathematician of all time, the foremost mathematician, Gauss. They declare the whole year. So in a week, they will take one of these 52 and say the world must study it, the whole world. That includes all universities, everywhere where mathematics and computer science, you know, has any relevance, which includes uh, Tuskegee University and the HBCUs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you were writing the resolution, you were anticipating that, and sure enough, that certainly was. That 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 was. I that, that was part of the Every university that calls itself a university where they study mathematics will have to honor Gauss by studying each of these works in one week. Quick recognition. When I say I most certainly was, I was actually uh, actually not talking about so much Gauss as I was talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, but anyway, so week one, week two, week three, and it's like a celebration of any legend in any field, you, you only celebrate with the greatest works. In the process, people who have been talking about before began to show up because they weren't talking about just contributions in this last century or something like that. Since the beginning of Gauss's life, everybody that made a contribution mm -hmm has to be coming to a contribution, I mean, to the judgment, to the selection process, and they decide which is the best 52. Mm. So, and within those 52, they had to rank them. Mm. Mm -hmm. They had to rank the 52 in terms of which is the greatest. Mm -hmm. That is necessary because in any celebration, there is a center, there's a center performance. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't rank the 52, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know if you put the dumbest of the 52, when the third people are gathered and all that, you're gonna bore them to death. You're gonna make them, you're gonna get them disgusted. Mm -hmm. So they, we went through the 52 and decided which is the best, the best will have to be put in the middle of the celebration, the center, which is 52 divided by 2. 26. 26. 26! Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where Gagot was put. Gagot was put in week 26. Mm -hmm. NR is what they use in German. NR26 was gathered. Thank you. Thank you. 
Why? It is all theorems. Past, present, and future. Forever. And from now on, there cannot be any new theorem ever again. It's all in here. Wow. No, <laughs> no future theorems. I mean, you put a halt <laughs> to, to the growth of mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> I hate how to say can, that, but how can that be? Yeah, in addition, how, in addition to how can that be, what does that say about the, uh, <laughs> but the future? The future is all locked in here. You can only apply this, you can't do anything else. That's, that's, the, that's God's signature. I like that. Say that again. That's God's signature. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> as God's signature. You see, what I said before was, if you put your revelation in mathematics, in the mathematical terms, if people can agree with your mathematics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then your credibility is there. You, you understand I me? Mean, then they, have, they will have difficulty. You understand? But any Joe Blow can come and say, man, I got the revelation, man. Now, I have this, uh, you know, thing that can cure all diseases. Uh, you, do, you under, but, uh, do you understand me? Mm. Anybody could do that. But it must be proven. It, if, it's, if it must be proven. It must be proven. You see why, why I, t I, t I told you when the people need him, mm -hmm. he has both sides. Mm -hmm. As a clergy. That is what he, he told talk. me. He, he said, fine, no, rubbing right. hands. That's, <laughs> right. that's, that's absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> I because didn't have his, his look, you just popped up. Absolutely, <laughs> his colleagues in the in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, divinity, then they have a respect for him, but mm. but he comes from the proven side of divinity as well. That's mm. what we're talking about. This is, mm. you can't get more divine than this. Exactly. It's impossible to go more divine than this. Right. This is God. God said, I don't care what you what other field or industry of of, of life is, be it language, be it art be it, uh, I mean, you name it on and on and on. Everything can be defined by mathematical terms and principles. Thank okay. So therefore, that's another way of saying that. Mm. Every aspect of history is in there, as long as you restrict to the truth one. True. Truth. No pun intended, but true. Every <laughs> aspect of medicine is also, yeah, mm. anything that will cure is in reality is, is as a J. Yeah. Like, so when I tell Minister Brown, um, people have a blockage in their stomach, and we found a GIJ for it, and apply the GIJ, and the problem is solved exactly, right. exactly. Right, if you can map that stomach problem in the form of an equation, you can solve it. Exactly, but that's, do you understand? It's solved exactly. So they say, well, but Oyibo doesn't have an, a medical degree. What does have well, it do anything? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. The truth about medicine is what you go to school to find. All the truth is in here. Mm -hmm. All of it. Mm -hmm. That's God's signature. That's what I said before. What's, that, it's a revelation from the Almighty God to a black man. Man, know thyself. Now you know yourself by knowing this representative. Mm -hmm. Man, know thyself. You can't really know yourself until you know me. You can't know me until you know this. And if you know this, you know the Creator. This is a verified Creator's mm -hmm. signature. That's some heavy stuff. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> and, and may I add, I was, I was sharing with um, Mr. Martin's earlier. I said, I'm not saying that we should worship nature, but God communicates with nature but us humans are so stupid that we we choose not to. Like the Indians, they 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 they, they were able to read God through nature, right? Now remember that that tsunami that that took place. Yep. About two and a half hours before, all the birds, all the cattle, they, they hauled tail. Absolutely. Okay, they Absolutely. ran Absolutely. because they was in tune. They were listening to nature. Absolutely. Nature was saying, "Get out of here, something is coming." Yes, sir. Right? They ignored. But humans did, were not in tune. So two and a half hours after the beast ran, somebody looked up, oh, 
150 foot waves are coming at me. Ah! <laughs> but see, even if they were not in tune, all right. They, they, they seen the animals running like they're crazy. That's right. They should say, wait a minute, something's a the fluke here. Let's right. just get out of here. Absolutely. Because, but but they, they did not read the, the signs of nature. Absolutely. And they couldn't do that because God was actually saying to, to, net, to, 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 right. to the, the animal forces, That's right. get on up out of here. That's right. That's right. Humans could not see that. That's right. So, God talked to them. God talks to them. Mm -hmm. That's how God talks to them. Mm. He talks to you through, through the mathematical equations. Exactly. That's, that's, that's it here. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't even go into Raymond. He made deductions. That's a G2J in here. Which is part and parcel of the Rima, the God God Lifesaver. Lifesaver is to determine all the GIJs <coughs> to cure all the diseases. And I mean exactly, not approximately. Exactly. You determine that you like, <coughs> with, we're seeing a situation where a young man has a blockage problem, they can't, do you understand me? A blockage, stomach blockage problem, they have no, they thought it was cancer. <coughs> so, we determine the GIJ for it. We give him <coughs> the material. <coughs> Instantly, totally gone. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Another person had a condition that a university teaching hospitals here on Long Island mm -hmm. could not even diagnose. They couldn't even diagnose. They kept the person for 12 days or two weeks or somewhere, 10 days. And they threw their hands up. They said, no, this is too complicated. We have no clue what it is. They come to Gaga. Now, can I, I can I explore a little bit with that? I think you're not thinking on the same terms. Go ahead. <laughs> now, um, do uh, can the present machines, MRIs, X-ray, all that? How do then you determine <laughs> the the, 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 the uh, status uh -huh. of the organ uh -huh. and what needs to be done? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. to uh -huh. bring about the cure. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If I can ask you that. Yes, you can. Of course, you can. Your problem is being able to have uh, the energy to listen to me. <laughs> 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 um, now, I was given the GIJ. Mm -hmm. I was given the GIJ for the stomach blockage and the one that the hospital couldn't diagnose. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that made it critical was, they said, well, because we couldn't diagnose it, it was a black, black person. Therefore, we're going to use every kind of test drugs. Mm -hmm as cancerous as they did that had never been tested before they will pour it into him and see if it works. Guinea pig. Guinea pig. Which is another way of saying guesswork. No, it is worse than that. They, they, you've given them a license to kill the person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will dose him up with this thing here because they say, look, we want, we're trying to do see if it would work. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this person, in fact, had gotten a death sentence because Plus, if you're told they don't know what is wrong with you and you know it's a real situation, you, where, where's your hope? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So therefore, when they, the person came, then we had to actually find a GIJ. Mm. Every truth about health, medicine, science, history, mm -hmm. see, Chemistry was decoded from Gaga. Mm -hmm. Chemistry, as the meaning of the mystery of the ancient Africans, came out of Gaga. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it came out, it became popular globally. Mm -hmm. Because you can't touch it. Mm -hmm. Chemistry, break the th word down into two parts. You have chem, as in chemet, and mystery, obvious. Mm -hmm. What you were saying earlier, I'm sorry. Go ahead, no, go, go, go. What you said earlier about the guinea pig experiment, they're just throwing everything on the way they're doing. Right. I says, anybody who ever studied astronomy, 
Yes. They, they, they got a nice term for that. It's called <laughs> singularity. It's when they, some yes. happens where you can't explain it, you can't exactly. quantify it, exactly. you can't measure it, you don't exactly. know what to make of it. You exactly. just say it's a singularity. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. I, I, I saw you were challenged and uh, uh, who was it? Uh, on singularity when we was in uh, Nigeria. Oh, one yeah. of the universities. That's right. That's right. University, Absolutely. Big uni one of the biggest. Yes, it could be Ibadan or, 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 or ABU. It was or, Ibadan. Okay. And uh, yeah, singularity. In other words, this is a single, <laughs> this is a singular development. No human being ever thought this was going to happen in this generation. Nobody even thought it was going to happen on the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. I can see the entire universe. Mm -hmm. That is in Ether. The goggle is. <laughs> oh man. The goggle is Ether sub N. Ether sub N. Which is. G N J X I S X J to power N plus one. I think I've seen that somewhere. Oh, you must have. Only from Gaga. I, I must have read in one of your books. Oh, of course, you know. Uh, N J X X J. This is the entire. This is the entire goggle that. God fitted in my brains. This is the totality of intelligence. Mm. This is what God planted in my head. That's probably what I saw in your book. That's right. This is the totality of intelligence. So you ask me how did I how did I find uh, the thing for disease? Yeah, how 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 do you find that cure? Intelligence is from here. This G N J is the constitution of anything in the universe. Mm -hmm. the oh, the constitution of yes, a thing. The, yeah, that is the content. What's the nature of the thing? Cancer, the geometry of the curves, mm -hmm. to history, mm -hmm. to geography, to mm -hmm. animals. All knowledge. All knowledge. You are your GIJ. I can see the boundary is very simple, just mm -hmm. like any other. It's, it's a characteristic. It's a GIJ. GIJ is a space time continuum. Continuum, you know, peace. And, and I see, I see the whole universe through this here. This is intelligence. This is the intelligence, uh, the understanding of reality. That's all of it. There's nothing more. Yeah. I have all of that. I, you know, I know what you're capable of doing. That's why I simply can hold it. Right. And there, there is a, a, a piece of mathematics and part of physics called uh, characteristic functions. <laughs> that is characteristic function. Mm -hmm. But the characteristic function here is, is, is so broad that it doesn't matter what material, what dynamics you're applying to it, whether it's disease, a stomach problem, mm -hmm. you just need to build the invariance of the, yes. in the constitution of that system. That's the only difference. Otherwise, it's all space-time. This is space-time right here. Therefore, this says the totality of understanding because you've generalized the constitution of everything. G and J. That's what is in my head. There's nothing left out. Therefore, there's nothing that I can't see. Mm -hmm. I see the entire universe. The whole solar systems are all in here. Right. The whole solar systems are all in here. Right. The planet is in here. Mm -hmm. If you you know gravity is in here, when n is uh, one. In terms of that's what you know. In terms of the solar system, the solar system is n is equal to one. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> now, again, for the sake of our listening or a viewing audience, how do you how you correlate this equation with okay. this? This is the fundamental solutions. Okay. In effect, this is God. This is God. This is the Express reality. Mathematical. The, yeah, yeah, the reality of God mm -hmm. and everything that God created. Mm -hmm. So this is the understanding of the totality of, of 
everything that's real, that's God. Mm -hmm. Reality is God. Mm -hmm. So therefore, all that has been planted in my head, I, I can see everything in the solar system, the galaxies, do you understand me? Mm -hmm. The ones that are beyond a, a trillion light years, they're all in my head. I don't have, I don't need a telescope. Mm. Mm -hmm. I see it, you tell me, you don't need rockets to go on that way. That's, that's even an illusion, the whole traveling and all these sort of things. What did I say yesterday? What did I say yesterday? About the world that is being planted in the minds. Of, this is what? Yeah, uh, illusion. It's an illusion. It's an illusion, that's it's what you illusion. said, yeah. It's an illusion. Because God is and what he does remain constant. That's right. uh, but what man devised on top of that is a pigment of his imagination. That's right. Yeah. Reality is God. Okay. That's right. Maybe we saw about the porch yes. yesterday? Yes. Yes. That's, that's so, what this yeah. is. Yeah. We're, 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 they're, they're pigment. That's why I said, you said something about world. I call it a pseudo world mm -hmm. because that's, the, that's, 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 that's a person's perception of what exists, right. Right. which is totally uh, divergent from what actually exists. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, this is intelligence understanding of reality, understanding of reality, and precise exactly. Understand reality exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, it's here, it can't be more exact. It's a general solution, characteristic solution. Mm -hmm. Right. The people um, who were bragging all this this is eta sub one, but it's a very tiny piece. Eta sub one, that's R. The, this, this, the X here is a general law space time. Mm -hmm. When it is two, you have R, because you know, um, you know, to be squared, that is N will be one to be two, so X mm -hmm. squared. So X squared plus Y squared plus mm -hmm. uh, Z squared, that will give you R squared. Right. That is what Newton did. It's only one tiny little bit. One out of uncountable. That's what made the Europeans the kings of the world. Mm -hmm. That's what made Einstein, uh, Newton. This one is eta sub zero. That's oh, it. okay. That makes sense. That's eta sub zero. That makes sense. That's eta sub zero. I can see that from eta sub zero and all that to eta sub infinity, there's no end. Therefore, God has implanted in my head the ultimate intelligence that can be surpassed. Let me go over that again. This is the ultimate intelligence here because end can go to infinity, absolute infinity. There's nothing that's left out. Actually, that makes sense because if, 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 if this if you're saying that this n equals zero makes it r, this means that you divide it by zero, which blows that up to infinity. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Now that's, in other words, you see, power only comes from the creator. Intelligence is the real power. Mm -hmm. Intelligence is the real power. Mm -hmm. So. The camouflage of exploding bombs in people's faces and destroying them is a very nasty, dumb way to show that you are intelligent. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Mm -hmm. But that is, it is their goal to say, if I design better bomb, I'm more intelligent, therefore I'm closer to God. Mm -hmm. This is what decides who, closer to, who is closer to God. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I just did not want to leave some things. Don't live anything. Answer. Don't live anything. But we were talking about the two-dimensional photograph. <laughs> you yeah. never gave the, yeah. the answer to what you did. And no. Before you like ask a ten-second question real quick. Yes. Yeah. Just real quick before it's my last question on this. I want to play the devil's advocate for a second. Yes. What if n is minus one? How do you quantify that? 
that becomes a variant itself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That sense. becomes the invariant itself. Okay. So, so you're left with the invariance here. This drops out of the thing here, and you're left with. Uh, okay. And similar to uh, Professor. Uh, 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 yeah, in you, in you. Uh, yeah, I know you talking about. Uh, uh, the, 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 not saying the one that was working with Singh, the black man. That, I forget his name, but yeah. I know you talking. Okay, about. okay. He he has a similar. <laughs> okay. okay. Continue your question. I just want to just play the devil advocate. No, for ten I, I seconds. Just, I just yeah. because we had asked it yeah. earlier uh -huh. and we never came up yeah. with a complete yeah. answer yeah. 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 of what you did yeah. in terms yeah. of yeah. Yeah. of uh, transforming the, the yeah. two dimensional yeah. holograph yeah. to three dimension. That, and what did that bring about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was the it was the journey of Gaga. That was in eighty. Well, 85, I was invited. That's what's amazing. I was invited to Germany mm -hmm. in 1985. I had no idea that it was a, pri a pilgrimage. It was a holy trip. Listen, every second of that trip, I could feel the Creator. I was in the uh, in the Lufthansa airline. And uh, they were playing Michael Jackson, not my favorite country <laughs> black person, but he was doing a, pink, a thing with a British singer. And that was, the song was so spiritual. No, actually, actually, I've not been judged. This was uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, mm. okay. That's Earth, one of my favorite fire. groups. Yes, yes, Earth, absolutely. Earth, yeah, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And he was doing something with a British person. And it, there was so much vibration that was coming in, and I was listening to it. They played it to Europe and through to Africa. It was something. But anyway, I was invited to Germany after mm -hmm. they heard about God, uh, the God hologram. First, the transformation was two dimensions unsteady, meaning time dependent. Mm -hmm. And Germans were flabbergasted. Wow, he's got that is three dimensions two space and one time. Who, what kind of man is this person that has defied Mullenbrook? Mm. So I was, I was called in to face the music, so to speak, to face them over there and show how I could prove that Hodogra could be done in three dimensions. So I came in now. It was a prestigious lecture in the university called University of Aachen. 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 Uh, you want me to raise something on there? Yeah, but I, 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 I do want to talk some more. A, A, C, H, A, N. Actually, E, N. Aachen. Aachen was the headquarters of, um, of um, uh, Ch Charlemagne. Charlemagne there the emperor of the Roman or whatever empire, you know. Uh, it's a very clean city and so on. And Aachen was only second to Göttingen in the hierarchy of the universities. It's up there with Berlin and all that, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, but anyway, so I was invited there. And then, of all these legendary mathematicians from Göttingen, um, Okay, so in 1985, as a matter of fact, well, these were the legends of the German applied mathematicians or aeronautics types, mm -hmm. who were in the, about 500 of them were selected, and I was the central focus, literally. Mm -hmm. So each one had one lecture to deliver. You go face, <laughs> face these people, and you're on your own, mm. okay? So, the selection was so big that 500 was all they would accept. First it was a demand for the whole thing. NASA was in on it. Mm. The Cold War was still in, but I remember trying to prepare my lectures and I was getting warnings and callings from uh, the CIA and the Defense Department and say, well, look, you can't put that in your presentation. And I even, I couldn't, I was in a facility where they had a lot of control, so I can imagine how they could see the thing, but it was, it was, uh, anyway, so, guarding that, no, I was the only one, I had the highest lectures to deliver. 
I was asked to deliver three lectures where people couldn't get one. Mm. That's mm -hmm. saying a lot. It's, it, the, the volume has been highlighted on the on the YouTube on the on the internet late in the recently. Uh -huh. People couldn't get in a co-authorship to get one like a question so prestigious. Mm -hmm. I had three lectures. One of them was the photograph. Mm -hmm. So I walk in there and um, <laughs> the only black man in the audience, naturally. And uh, a guy called Otto, Otto, he interviewed, he introduced me. Mm -hmm. Otto, O-T-T-O. -T -T -O. And he said, yeah, well, you know, um, I have to tell you, he says, ah, this, ah, this uh, noted American mathematician set a record or had a record of publishing journal articles in the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics Journal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More journal papers in 1983 than any other professor or person on the planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not something that you could just fool around with, it's recorded. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The telling is done in the volume, the December issue of the journal. Go on the internet, you find that out. It's a public record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oyibo published more than any other person, any other Harvard professor, any other MIT professor, any other Gottingen professor, any other Cambridge professor, any other Leningrad, anybody. Mm. Oyibo published more. Did they, nobody even really called him. So he, say, he made that point. He says, but I have to tell you again. In this highly selective lecture presentation, he has more lectures to deliver than any other person here also. He did it again. Mm -hmm. And of course, this SS looking guy is like, <laughs> they were disgusted like hell. Now the hall was so big and so large, uh, I could, it's like I said to myself, if anything happened to me in this hall, no black person would know, my family would not know where, what happened. <coughs> mm -hmm. It was so scary. But I went, presented the photograph on the others and defended the stuff. And um, they, were, they were shocked, to say the least. So anyway, got on the plane. Uh, I went home to Nigeria, and then to Tanzania, and I came home, and I surprised my parents. Mm -hmm. My father was, it was my last meeting with my father. So I bumped into the, into the house, and, uh, and my father was standing, leaning on the wall, in extreme pain with prostate cancer. And they said he was crying when I came. Now, but my father is a black man, the one that scares you know, some of these uh, KKK types. Mm -hmm. his, his demeanor scares them. They mm -hmm. see him around. And he, he used to say to me, he says, no, if he, ever to f if he ever gets into a situation where he has a fist fight with any of those folks, he says, if he grip them, they will they will, they will bleed to death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, when they call people niggas, and my father walks in there, they, they, you know, they had a story building, and they see my father driving, you know, riding, they come down, say, yes, yes. They don't fall around with my father. Mm -hmm. And you understand me? Now, for a person like that to cry, mm -hmm. That's how, that's, that's how I got the sense of what the pain of mm. cancer is like. So anyway, so I came on and, and then as soon as he saw me, he said, I'll do. Ah, where are you from? What's going on? Mm. And uh, the cry stopped. He got off the wall and 
what's going on? What, what happened? So, well, look, uh, that I, uh, I, I was asked to come and deliver a lecture in Germany. What did you do? A lecture on mathematics. Uh-huh. What, what kind of audience? Well, the university professors? Aha. Uh -huh. said, uh-huh. In other words, you're telling me that you actually went into Germany to teach the German superior mathematicians mathematics? And I said, Dad, that's pretty much it. I delivered three lectures. He jumped up and began to dance. <laughs> And then, of course, the rest of the crowd who were in there, you know, who were coming to say, say, well, what in the world is going on? Everybody was, this is the man who was crying before. So they began to theorize, well, gee, he must have brought in some millions of dollars for him. After all, here's the person who is sick, who, who needs uh, to pay bills, but I already knew because when I wanted to bring him to Sloan Kettering, he said <laughs> to me, he wasn't that sick. <laughs> he was not that sick to come to Sloan Kettering, he said to me. But uh, so, how much money did he bring to you that you, st you stopped crying and now you're dancing with all the pain? And he said to them, he said, you have no idea. What he brought for me is much more than any amount of money. The professor from Ibadan read that story in the yes. introduction of Ibadan. Yeah. He read the whole article. Right. Mm -hmm. The CIA agents were like there. Film. Yeah. <laughs> and the CIA, they were disgusted. They tried to do everything, but because he was a sister, they couldn't push it openly. Do you understand me? They couldn't stop because she, she was taking her time. If you remember, she would pause and <laughs> look at the audience. And it was taking like 20 minutes though for the introduction. Right. But that's what was happening to my father. So he said the money that was given, the equivalent of a black man going to Germany to take the Germans of the German Berlin Conference and all these other things was he said, son, I am ready to go. Mm. But you know, before that, I was a basket case. I couldn't possibly think of, you understand, ever parting with my father. Mm. And, but when he said that, it gave me courage. It gave me such a relief that you understand because it says one of the major goals was accomplished. Mm -hmm. That God was able to reveal to the Germans black people are superior. Mm -hmm. So that's how that kind of stopped for a moment. And then that was in 85. Mm, mm, mm. And the US government was following up on that. Uh, the actual formal journal article didn't come out till 1989. The review process takes a long period. Mm. The actual the two dimensional study came out maybe 87 or 88, somewhere there. But the 89 was when the three, the real three spatial dim dimension came out in 1989. When that happened, 1989, um, um, Buglerello, did you meet Bugarello, George Buglerello, Buglerello as the president of Brooklyn Poly? He was a president, you know, in the 80s. George Buglerello. I heard his name. Okay. okay. I graduated in 81. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then you had left. Okay. But anyway, he went to a meeting in Washington, D.C. In the government, you know, uh, circles, and some agent confronted him and said, "You from Brooklyn Poly?" And the president said, "Yeah." He handed him. This is a paper from your university. Mm -hmm. He didn't recognize the paper because he's a president. I'm in the in the mathematics department. Um, so he said, "Do you know this, your staff?" 
he remembered me vaguely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they handed him a version of the paper that was printed in the style of the intelligence community. Mm -hmm. It was not a regular journal. You say intelligence, like as a CIA type intelligence? Uh, that's okay. my point. That's okay. exactly. That's, that's what I'm sure I'm Yeah, the, the things were in italics and so on and so forth. It was well coded and everything else. Okay. But you still can read the content because yeah. it was this. Uh, so they handed him the copy. So when he came, he made a copy of that. I had already the AI double journal, which is a regular print. So what's going on? Two different prints mm -hmm. of the same paper. Mm -hmm. So I knew something was happening. Mm -hmm. Because it's the key to the supersonic bombers and fighters and all that. That's what I wanted to ask you. What yeah. did that? If it actually, what did breaking that two dimension into three dimension? What was the results of it? What it, it, you know, I had been told that your work had literally revolutionized the Aris supersonic Aris uh, wing design, for the, for the, and that you were because of that responsible for a whole new arsenal of fighter jets. Right. Uh, well, uh, some of them are highly classified. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I will. As I was doing that time, I was, I was, a consultant to mm -hmm. classified dynamics. Um, you know, top clearance and all that. But um, only recently had Pentagon start releasing some of my, some of that work. Mm -hmm. The reports on those work. Mm -hmm. Some even ended up in Hanover near Gottingen mm -hmm. for a secret work. Mm -hmm. There can't be any modern aircraft design that will not take advantage of my work. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything that has been new in aeronautics in terms of the design and, and production of sophisticated airplanes had to use the hodograph style of development because what I did, what God did through the three-dimensional hodograph was to bring in the finiteness that was not available before to people in terms of the actual design process. But it was through that process that I was engaging Professor Paul Garabedian who had taken the hodograph to a much a very high level. Mm -hmm. He earned my respect. Paul Garabedian, do you mm -hmm. understand me? I read his paper, of course he's much older than myself. Now here's a person who got a PhD in mathematics from Harvard under a Nobel laureate equivalent at 20 years old, 28 before he was, it, you know, it, by the middle of, uh, 48, he had already obtained his PhD. That was before his 21st birthday. So he was, he was 20 when he got his PhD from a Nobel laureate. A Nobel laureate, they don't give Nobel for mathematics, they give field medals. Now that's one thing that you're going to get into in this de development. Mm -hmm. Now, so therefore, um, now, but from Harvard, he went on to Berkeley and ended up heading the mathematics department at Stanford University. He actually built, developed the mathematics department at Harvard, at, uh, at Stanford University. The Stanford University. That's correct. That's the, they consider it number one, even better than Harvard. They're the Harvard of the, of the West. Mm -hmm. It was Garabedian that established the mathematics department over there. What was his relationship with you? Well, when they heard about uh, the two-dimensional three hodograph, Garabedian was the best authority on hodograph, the two-dimensional hodograph in, the, in this on, globally, because of his fine mathematics. I read this paper and I was blown away mm. because he taught my language. He said he was a fine mathematician. 
a fine mathematician. I couldn't say that of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. He was a fine mathematician. When I read his piece, in other words, he did hodograph in, ma in a way that was, that made sense to me, it was mathematical. Mm. But it was, it was, you know, and he tried to extend it to the three dimension and he wasn't successful. That was the other part. In fact, one of his students, uh, 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 can you go on our website quickly? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so and I will go on, you know, because you want a little bit on the holograph, it's important. Um, go on our website and we're going to look for. <coughs> um, oh God. One of his students was a person you may have, you may be familiar with. But go ahead, go on. A, oh, oh uh, Gagat, Gagat of org. Or put, oh, or put, just put, put Gagat, just put Gagat on the Google, Google, just put Gagat and hit it. It probably should come up. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay, put, click on that. Okay, yeah, go better. Okay, now that's, all right. Yeah, keep on going now. And then, uh, I'd like you to see, okay, that's, that's the equation and so on, but um, I go down, okay, now, let's, uh, down to the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's a rap by uh, you know. I don't want you to, but when you get a chance, you need to listen to that rap. You know. You do now. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, <laughs> three minutes and fifty seconds. Yes. Is that so How much? How long? Three, three minutes and fifty seconds. Uh, skip. 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 There you go.
that's KRS One. Now he's helping to teach the young brothers and sisters on the street. And as a result, brothers and sisters are now coming around and gathering groups and say they are profess they are Doctor Yibo. That's great. That's the image. Absolutely. That's the new image. <laughs> They're Dr. Evil. Yeah, Apple. that's the perception. You don't, you don't, mess, you don't mess with yeah. them. And the message here is really the message of Gaga. Mm. Respect. Mm. Respect for the black race. Because the black race is now it. All right. You can see that emergence coming through. Yeah. It's, that's, that's where we are right now. That's what this represents. Mm -hmm. In other yeah. words, this makes the black race the chosen race mm -hmm. because by their own judgment this made Newton a, a member of the chosen race this make the Jewish people members all right this is the totality so if you say one two when you have infinite <laughs> it's out of the question that's right this is case closed there's nothing else but mm -hmm. what is so painful is that the doors are closed for any other version only the almighty god and if god decide to change of course that <laughs> but based on the reality of the current because as long as it's still the truth and reality there is no reality that's out of this here uh -huh. And the fundamental way that you could visualize that reality is this. So you got in a piece of the, oh, I wanted to show you, yeah, go, uh, go back to the website and then hit the window. Yeah, go to back to the oh, window. Oh, Garabin. Yeah, I wanted to, you know, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Go, go, I think you may go back. Forward. Okay. All right, okay. Now click, on, just click anywhere on that page and to take you to the inside. Just hit enter. Okay, okay, go, go down, go down. Is it responding at all? It's, it's, it's already to the bottom. Go to one, go up. Oh, the other, but okay, but you know, you're supposed to get you, as I say, click on to enter the website. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. Now, you're going to look for the nomination letters. Very important. And yeah. I'm glad you're doing that. Read a few of those, if you don't mind, especially uh, one from. Uh, the, uh, Luchens, Luchens. You want to read Luchens? Luchens, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. The the brother from uh, Virginia State. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. Look, look for um, nomination letters. Uh, letters to presidents. Okay. Okay, now you need to go, it's up, we've, we've gone past it. Um, okay. Oh, oh, oh. No, we start over. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, nobody. No, 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 there are other support letters from Professor Ivan Prish. Keep on going. Um, okay, support letter from Professor John De Ganji. That's MIT, of course. Um, okay, keep on going. Oh, that, here, here's this one. Hold on, oh, no, start again. Okay. Go ahead. No, no, we shouldn't be rushing, Minister Brown. He can go right again. Okay. He, he wants to. From the beginning. Okay. okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, maybe I, I give you, I give you an introduction in terms of. <coughs> The connectivity between Professor Garabidian and I is summarized by his student, that's his PhD student, mm -hmm. uh, that Professor Garabidian's PhD student, okay, at the Quran Institute. He got his PhD in mathematics from Quran Institute, that's David Korn, mm -hmm. okay? That's the Quran that we, which we were talking about before. A student of David Hilbert mm -hmm. headed that institute, and Garbidian was a professor. When he left Stanford, he came into the Quran and they gave him a big dynamic. So he's recounting his encounter 
with me through his thesis advisor, Professor Garapedian. Okay, so that's what you have in there. So, mm. yeah. Okay, so you want the piece of the holograph? That's it. You know, that's hold it. on, hold on. Yeah. Uh, it's formatting the disk. Yeah, okay, no, don't so be in a hurry, you know. We're ready. How, how would you define the uh, hologram? Yes. Hodograph is hodograph space. Hodograph is a kind of space. Mm -hmm. um, a space that instead of using space time, you use velocity space. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that, you know, comes back to Gagat again. What's important is to use orthogonal components of things. Mm -hmm. Velocities have compo orthogonal components. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to use space-time com component, orthogonal components only. You can, there are times where you could use the velocity. That's when you use the velocity, then that physics or that description becomes a hodograph, you know, hodograph description of things. Mm -hmm. You understand now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so therefore, now, so if this is a fluid application to fluid mechanics or transonic flow where the equations become linear in the holograph space in two dimension, you know. So therefore it becomes a good use, a good tool because uh, linear equations are the only equations that can be tracked and understood by human system. Mm -hmm. uh, when you use computer, there are drawbacks in computer, although the computer can do it, but you can't easily study the trend as, you know, in other words, the difference between y is equal to ax and somebody just plotting so many points on the line itself, you know, where you still be accurate and everything, but for you to see the physics, you have to do a lot of computations, you know, for you to see, because if you take a segment, an equation may look different from real, you know, what you expect it, mm -hmm. you know, being. If you narrow your your interval, or your range or your interval, mm -hmm. it could look like a straight line. It might be just a segment of a parabola. True. So therefore, there's no substitute for the, the kind of equation like here. See, that's why I have to emphasize this, and I'm going to return back to this here, because uh, it, there are a lot of you know, things that are going to be misunderstood and so on and so forth. So therefore, but when you have equations that are non-linear, they're very hard to deal with. Even when you compute, it's hard to determine the trend. Okay? Now, so, but if they are linear, then they, you know, so if you could transform the design of an airplane into a linear set of equations is tremendous progress. Okay? That's the essence of the, the importance of the photograph. Mm -hmm. Now, so uh, Marlenbrook, like I said, got, you know, got it rolling, and that's why the Germany trip was very important. And what uh, Dr. Korn, you know, who was a, a Bell Lab fellow, and um, and then um, hold a pattern for the corn shell, corn shell that was used very popular in the eighties and and so on and so the corn yeah. shell. That's I after him. I used to design. I used to do work on the corn shell. Exactly. Say that again. I used to do work on the corn shell. In fact, what, what you see in the internet now? Yes. I worked on it. There you go. I worked on the the Unis kernel. Right. And in fact, we ported to what was called then the MC sixty eight thousand chip, uh -huh. yes. the Motorola chip. Yeah. And, and if if you ever looked at um, what was called uh, Autofact eighty five, uh -huh. that was a demonstration to the world uh, right outside of Detroit. Right? It was actually in Warren, Michigan, uh -huh. that the world can, can can all the world machines can talk to each other. Yeah. Not in the future, but now. We, I, the ISO OSI model, right. I did layer uh, three and four for that. Wow. Okay? Of wow. eight layers. And, and where and, were you and, located? Were you located in New Jersey or? In New Jersey. Uh -huh. I, I okay. was in, I, we, okay. we were in Homedale, uh -huh. then we moved to okay. Lincroft. I think that's that's where, I, if yeah. you look at that, what's the address there? Uh, let me tell you in a second. Yeah. The, the, his address. In, in Farm Park. Okay. That's, that's, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's not too far, right, from Homedale? I've got what, what um, okay. Foreign Park is. Okay. But look at the zip code, it ain't too far. Okay. 
Yeah, go ahead, go ahead with your sir. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no I, I was saying that okay. um, or again, we look at the corn shell or yes. the corn shell yes. or whatever yes. application that we use, mm -hmm. everything can be defined, right. looked at and interpreted right. by a mathematical equation. Absolutely. So now you can go ahead and so um, Professor Garbidian's student mm -hmm. A famous mathematician and mm -hmm. a computer scientist himself, mm -hmm. you know, uh, wrote a recommendation letter for the Presidential Medal of Science Award. Mm -hmm. That's from what you're reading, and he 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 connects his experience with me through mm -hmm. Professor Garabedian. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what you're reading. So read that paragraph, so okay. Mr. Dear Professor Schaefer. I'm happy to be writing in support of the nomination of Dr. Gabriel Oyibo for the Presidential Medal of Science. While his record of academic achievement speaks for itself, I want to add a more personalized note related to my area of expertise. I first met Dr. Gabriel Oyibo around 10 years ago. He had con contacted me to discuss some extensions that he had made to the work of Dr. Paul Garabian and myself relating to the design of supercritical wings. I had worked with Dr. Garabian for around 10 years on this problem, starting with my PhD thesis in the mid-60s. It's been rather successful in the two-dimensional transonic flow problem. We even received a NASA Special Achievement Award for this work. However, after several attempts to extend this work into three dimensions, I gave up on this, believing that the method could not be extended. I switched fields to computer science and joined Bell Laboratories, where I later became a Bell Labs fellow. Dr. Gabriel Oyibo had, in fact, figured out how to extend our work into three dimensions. He sent me a paper describing what he had done. To say the least, I was totally impressed. We met and discussed this work in great detail. I am less familiar with much of Dr. Oibo's other work, however, purely on the basis of his work in his transonic aerodynamics, I would recommend Gabriel for the Presidential Medal of Science. And that has been signed once again by David Korn, AT&T Labs. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's, uh, you know, and uh, if you could also locate uh, uh, Luchens, you know, uh, okay, then that would be uh, maybe another third letter while we're still on this topic. Luchens, uh, you go back up. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, the nomination, okay, Luchens, uh, Professor Luchens. Maybe you explain who Professor Luchens is while he's looking it up. Yeah, yeah, Professor Luchens uh, was uh, an aide to Albert Einstein. It is uh, right here. I guess it's, okay, it's, yeah. It's, three, it's four yeah, pages. Yeah, it, it, it read the one for Nobel Prize nomination. Okay. And... Uh, this and is it right here. Yeah, and he was, she was also my teacher at mm -hmm. Rensselaer, a math teacher. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and he will relate. I think you would need the... <laughs> Rensselaer is <laughs> right out here. Yeah, okay. So I think you, you know, so... Uh, mm -hmm. but, but read, you know, it's self-explanatory, I think. All right. This is written to the committee to nominate Professor Gabriel Oibo for Nobel Prize. Okay. Dear Professor, how you pronounce her name? Anyuo? Anyuo, that's good. Anyuo, okay. Mm -hmm. I am delighted to write in su to support your nomination of Dr. Gabriel A. Oibo for the Nobel Prize in Physics. My acquaintance with Dr. Gabriel Oibo began in the late 1970s when he was a graduate student at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. He took a complex variable course that I taught and received the grade of A. In this class of talented students, he was outstanding for his creativity as evidenced by his innovative solutions and his discovery and exploitation of unexpected interdisciplinary relationships and applications. These features continue to be characteristic of his career activities. Of the thousands of students I have encountered in decades of teaching, he was clearly the most creative. At RPI, he worked for four years in NASA slash AFOSR. 
right? Mm -hmm. Sponsored research and very effectively taught several courses. It was easy for faculty members to predict that Dr. Oyibo would have an illustrious scientific career. We could not have predicted the extent and depth of the many significant contributions he has made to mathematical physics, mathematics, fluid dynamics, and aerodynamics. He introduced the concept of affine transformation into the fields of aeronautics and aeroelasticity, which is of theoretical importance to researchers and of practical importance to aircraft and aerospace companies around the world. He serves as a consultant to half a dozen such companies. He developed a new hydrograph technique for Hodo hodograph. I'm sorry. He developed a new hodograph, thank you, technique for determining two dimensional unsteady flow and three dimensional flow, using a new analytical and wing design tool. He developed new group theory methods in mathematics and applied them to obtain exact closed form solutions to the full Navier Stokes equation and the Reynolds average equations for turbulence, equations that had previously resisted such solutions. He compiled the findings and published them in a research monograph and he said it, but I'm gonna say it, entitled New Group Theory for Mathematical Physics, Gas Dynamics and Turbulence. Using the newly developed group theory methods, he generalized and formulated the unified field theory described in his article and more fully in his recent book, Grand Unified Theorem. That's it. No, uh, oh, that is a uh, second one, or is that? Yeah, there, there, there's other pages. Yeah, okay, yeah, there's, there, okay, that's the, the, the remaining part of it. Right. The most exciting contribution to me personally is Dr. Oyibo's formulation of Einstein's unified field theory, or the theory of everything. He had pre presented a lecture, a, gr a generalized mathematical proof of Einstein's theory using a new group theory in March 1995 at a symposium he had organized at RPI as a tribute to Professor George Hanneman. And it was published in the proceedings of the symposium that Dr. Ayibo edited. Having met Albert Einstein and having co-authored reports about him, one of which was presented at the Handelman Symposium and published in his proceedings, I am thrilled that Gabriel Oyibo was the first to complete the task that intrigued and challenged Einstein and many other luminaries and science. Moreover, he did so in a mathematically elegant manner. Professor Oyibo's contributions are extremely important, both theoretically and practically. They place him in the ranks of world-class scientists. He is eminently qualified for the Nobel Prize in Physics, granting of this well-deserved honor to Dr. Oyibo will be celebrated at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and throughout the academic and scientific worlds. Sincerely, Edith H. Luggins. Luchin, excuse me. Okay. Um, while we own that, can you read one more? Uh, even though there are many more, yeah. read the one from Virginia. Virginia, Tech. okay. And tell us who he is. Yeah, uh, Professor Livio Lebrescu. Livio Lebrescu. And I was hoping that you would get one from MIT as well. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but this liberal risk is important for Nobel Prize. Uh, it's, it's not of a liberal Lebrescu. Who was he? Uh, well, liberal Lebrescu was um, a narrow aeronautics. Yeah, and around mm -hmm. this, a very highly respected. Uh, uh, famous aeronautics scientists, okay, from Romania, and uh, and he was a, a Holocaust survivor. Got it. Yeah, a Holocaust survivor from uh, from Romania. He was a national hero in Romania, and then went on, you know, to Israel to Tel Aviv University. Mm -hmm. He's a professor there for many years. And then eventually uh, relocated to Virginia Polytechnic uh, Institute in Blacksburg. Um, you know, and he came across my work in other areas. 
you know, and found out that I had we have a common, uh, we shared some of that aspect and so on, and he developed a lot of uh, interest in the work and all that. And, and came to Blacksburg. No, didn't he go to Germany to hear you? Like oh no! Oh, absolutely. He was. Uh, <laughs> he was. I said everybody that was anybody in the aeronautics was there, literally, uh, especially in the specific area of aeroelasticity. He was there. He watched. Uh, oh, actually, what happened was, when in 1985 he was still in Germany. Uh, he was still in Tel Aviv. After having invited me to come to Israel, uh, where the government had some constraints and I couldn't go, he decided to catch up with me in Germany when he knew that I was coming to Germany. And you he know, headed a delegation. He headed a amazing. delegation there to Germany. Uh, incredibly brilliant man and a very, how can I say, a very nice personality, you know. And uh, so he brought in, the, <laughs> because he had a team of researchers in, in Israel that were waiting for me. Uh, but here I am, I couldn't come. Uh, they even managed to send a person from Israel to come to meet with me here in America. But that didn't do, that wasn't enough because more people were, he were interested in, in here. So they came and met in, uh, in Germany and they were even, uh, expressions that um, it had to take something that was extremely important for a person, especially a Holocaust survivor, even though he was in, in Rom Romania, uh, Germany was where things were. I think to go back to Germany took a lot of, you know, uh, importance of a thing that would encourage such a trip, you know. But they did come and they, they met uh, they you know enjoyed the presentations and they gave presentations themselves, and then eventually we we uh, we sat down and we had a good time talking and so on. So although I couldn't do too much uh, in light of the Cold War because mm -hmm. uh, they uh, <laughs> you know people ask you to come to sit down so you can drink coffee. Uh, the CIA was behind <laughs> and so on and so forth. You couldn't do things too freely, you know. Uh, so anyway, but we had a good time, you know, and then we were face to face because we had never met face to face until that point. So it was a very, uh, a very, how can I say, a very high spirit kind of dynamics that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and eventually he would write this recommendation letter for Nobel Prize and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that's who Librescu is. Very, very well known national hero in, in Romania and globally. Mm -hmm. He has written, I mean, the articles, his articles have appeared in like 35 journals. The research article that he has written, 35 wow. journals. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> Even if it was one in each journal, that is already significant stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, that's the kind of person we're talking about. Go ahead. Now, dear Professor Anyiwo. Yeah. Okay. I would like to express my highest opinion in regard to the scientific work deployed by Professor Gabriel Ibo for the results obtained by him during the last two decades. His papers addressing the problem of the divergence and flutter of super maneuverable aircraft wings made of advanced composite material constitute outstanding pieces of work. In these papers published in the best aeronautical journals in the world, Professor Oyibo has developed and used for the first time the concept of the Athene transformation methodology. Among others, its use was instrumental toward establishing a more encompassing and, at the same time, more efficient framework for the study of the, con of the conditions of the occurrence of the aeroelastic catastrophic instability phenomenon. Moreover, the use of this new concept was essential toward explaining a number of intricate aeroelastic phenomena related to the flutter and divergence of very low aspect ratio wings. On the effect played in this connection by warping restraint combined with the effects of the elastic coupling induced by the incorporation of the, of the tailoring technique. These issues have generated important results that have been published by Dr. Oibo in highly reputable aeronautical journals such as the AIAA journal 
and Journal of Aircraft and have inspired further developments in this area accompany, excuse me, accomplished by recognized research workers from the United States of America and abroad. Let me let me go down uh, and get the next next. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. This this continues. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Yibo's creative mind went further to address very complex issues, and at the same time, unresolved problems of an enormous theoretical and practical importance. Among these, the formation excuse me, the formulation of the three-dimensional holograph methodology solved by Dr. Oyibo consists of transforming the full nonlinear potential transonic flow equations from the physical space into an um, equivalent linear counterpart, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze, in the holocraft plane. This methodology that has far-reaching beneficial Im implications was used by Dr. Ebo to design 3D shock free way wings that operate in a transonic flow field and also to address intricate problems of the nonlinear quasi unsteady transonic aerodynamics. However, Dr. Oyibo went further and developed powerful mathematical tools based on group theory, namely of generic group theory, enabling him to investigate in an unitary way and get solutions for the first time of a number of problems in which famous mathematicians and physicists have dedicated their entire life. Among others, these problems are one, the exact closed form solutions to the full Navier-Stokes equation, two, closed form solutions to the turbulence problems in fluid and gas dynamics, three, Solutions for the various forms and hierarchies of the Boltzmann's equation. And four, the formulation of the unified field theory. These studies have been published by Dr. Oyibo and have appeared in the archival literature and also a monograph describing the mathematical tools that have enabled him to generate these results. I trust that the results obtained by Dr. Oyibo are of utmost importance and that the powerful mathematical tools developed by him will many will find many followers from various areas of biomechanics, physics, mathematics, aeronautics, etc. May I heart, may I heartily congratulate Professor Gabriel Ebo for all these outstanding scientific accomplishments that will undoubtedly enrich the treasure of the literature in physics, mathematics, and all interactive related fields and wish him further successes in his creative scientific activities. Sincerely yours, Dr. Livu Liviu Liviu Lebrasco. Liviu Lebrasco, Professor of Engineering and Science and Mathematics, Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University, College of Engineering, ESM Department, Blacksburg, Virginia. And he eventually became the uh, the hero. Yeah. of the VI massacre. He was assassinated in, in, in Virginia Polytechnic. Mysteriously about it. Wow, he no mysterious about it. Somebody wanted him dead. I see, I see, I see. Okay, uh, then try John DeGunji. Let's get them IT in. Because uh, there's a need for our people to understand that Obama has some responsibility here. Um, you know, recommendations for Presidential Medal of Science the, the president is supposed to give that award. Okay. And when uh, uh, this kind of people, yeah, John DeGunji is from mm -hmm. MIT. MIT, yeah. Yeah, and John DeGunji will rank among the top 10 uh, biggest names to ever come out of MIT. Mm. You know, but, but it's enough to expect when Massachusetts Institute of Technology recommends a person for a Price, mm. can I don't think <laughs> that, that that's <laughs> MIT says it, it's about good as done. <laughs> so that is that's what Obama needs to and the pressure on our people need to 
to go yeah. to the press to say, look, what else are you looking for? I mean, yeah, exactly. is, it, is this the whole process real? I mean, mm -hmm. where else do you want the recommendation for a black person for them to get the presidential right. medal of science that has never been won by a black person? Right. Let me also say that uh, in all of the East Coast, mm -hmm. MIT is the number, the, 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 the top rated school for engineering. Oh, of course. Uh, Polytech was, it was number two, but MIT is, is it's number, number one. one. Absolutely. No, no question about it. It's not even just the East Coast. I mean, I know, you understand? Globally, really. Yeah. But, see, Global. I, yeah. but see, I only know about the East Coast. Yeah, I know. I understand. Yeah, I, I understand. You, you travel worldwide. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, my, my travel room has been across the East Coast. Oh, yeah, yeah. The MIT is, uh, you know, as far yeah. as engineering goes now, you know, a couple of places only, because they rank it, they rank MIT number four worldwide. Mm -hmm. I mean, among all universities, that's everything taken into account. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what we're talking about. But mm -hmm. but you know the engineer because you, you know, that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. This the, is from John Dudunji. The Gunji. The Gunji. Yes, Gunji. A pro, a professor. professor of Aerodynamics. Who he is? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I you know I just said yeah. you know, he uh you know the aeronautics department was always almost number one in the world. Uh, you know, in light of America has more money and so on, so except Gottingen, of course, you know, but certainly in America, okay. Uh, so, but the people that shaped that uh, legacy included John de Gunji, okay. Uh, John de Gunji and Holt Ashley and a guy called Bisplinghoff, those were the some of the top names, you know. In the era of let's say seventies or sixties, what about maybe even fifties, the aerospace with the whole program of trying to land on the moon gave aerospace some special focus. So a lot of talents were forced and channeled into that area. And MIT took the leading there was a time MIT was doing business to the tune of two billions in the eighties, wow. early eighties, two billions dollar business with the United States government. Mm. Two billion dollars. Most of the Fortune 500 didn't have that much money, okay? Mm -hmm. So MIT has a university. So now the people who were the center of that, of course, in that's broadly the whole uh, it fields, but the aerospace had a major part of that, Lincoln University, I mean, Lincoln Labs and so on. So the people that helped shape that reputation of MIT include John DeGunji. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's from he's a professor of aeronautics and, and aero, uh, me, aeronautics, uh, aeronautics and astronautics. Yes, uh, 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 emeritus. Emeritus, uh -huh. right. Dear Professor Schaefer, I am writing in response to your request concerning Professor Gabriel Oibo, who was being considered for nomination for the Presidential Medal of Science. I have worked in the area of aeroelasticity and composite material structures over the years, and am now retired. Let me uh, scroll up a little bit. I first met Professor Oyibo back in 1986 at the AIAA Structural Dynamics Symposium where he was presenting some interesting analysis of composite material structures. Earlier at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, he and his PhD thesis advisor, Professor Eugene Brunel, had devised a concept of using affine transformations, scaling the variables, to solve orth orthotropic, orth 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 thank you, tongue twister there, mm -hmm. orthotropic composite structures problems. He then applied them to very neatly reformulate problems in buckling, vibration, panel flutter, and aeroelastic response of composite planes, plates and wings. Also, he dealt with other static and dynamic problems in aeroelasticity. He became well known in the academic aeroelastic community, and I had talked with him about some mutual aeroelastic problems over the years. He seemed to me to be a capable scholar and an enthusiastic supporter of composite aeroelastic problems and problems with mathematical twists to them. During the last decade, Professor Yibo turned his attention to fluid dynamics and making use of affine transformations and the hydrograph, hydrograph, hodograph, hodograph, hodograph technique for solving fluid flow equations and transonic flow problems. Thank you. 
Also, he turned his attention to fundamental problems of physics. I am not competent to judge his work in these areas. In the previous composites and aero elastic area, he wrote some good, useful papers with his affine transformation in the mid to late 80s. Professor Oyibo seems an intelligent, scholarly fellow with a pleasant, affable uh, personality. I believe from aeroelastic, some aeroelastic and composite structure side, his work would be a great asset in consideration of a presidential medal of science. Sincerely, John Dugunji, yes. yes. Professor of Aeronautics and Aero, uh, Aeronautics Aero, Astronaut. and Astronautics yeah. Emeritus. That's right. Uh, two, two, two tongue twisters there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, that is MIT, you know. So you have two things there. You have one of the most eminent uh, scholar in the field in terms of Gigante Ganji. I rank him top 10 in, from MIT at least. And um, and then MIT itself, which is the world, the worst ranking it gets is four, number four worldwide. Mm. Yeah, it's MIT. Uh, you know, science and technology you can't beat it. it does, you can't go better. So, so MIT recommends a black person for a prize that no black person has ever won before. Right. Mm -hmm. The best institution recommends a black person for a prize that has never been won for a black person, and you have a black president in office, what is the excuse of not giving that prize? Right. right. That's the dy part of the dynamics. And I hope that we've done a little bit of that because I need to move on to this one here because this is the current. These are preliminary. These are things are important. I know you need to bring up people to speed, but this is where the real focus is. Right. Those were warm-ups and little tiny applications. You know, as good as they sound, this is the real stuff. Because all those other things that were done before are in here. All that was done by anybody is in here. And all that will be done by anybody is in here. So this is therefore God's signature. This is a God's signature. Without God's signature, it is impossible to do anything perfectly correct. I agree with you. Correct. I don't want to be redundant in words. I agree with you. But the God's signature is further emphasized by doing everything perfectly correct. Mm -hmm. Everything. To know something, everything perfectly correct. And only God can do something perfectly correct. Right. Only, God, Only can God can do something perfectly Only correct. Perfect. So the message is a message of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Infallibly. Infallibly. How does God change the world right. as we now know it? What and how does this uh, uh, relate to black people and their leadership and the world that they can now uh, bring into being? Okay. Through their leadership. Right. Well, for that, we start from here. Equations is what grades people in terms of put people in their place. GM1, M2 is what FR squared put the Europeans in the top place in the world. Rank them the best. Closer to God because of this revolution than the rest of the world. The MC squared prove that the Jewish people could not be left out of God, especially since this was done in a European setting, uh, that they are connected with the rest Europeans, even though they may be Jews, because they have their own contribution as well. Credible, because it's an equation that is correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one has credibility because it's correct. Oh, the only source for anything that is correct is the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, so with that at the back of your minds, then you see something that is perfectly correct and is the totality. Mm -hmm. These are approximations. Mm -hmm. 
the, com the thing is, is so overwhelming that this is, do you understand me? This approximation, the correct approximately, or with constraints, okay? Mm -hmm. This all applies to certain dimensions. It doesn't go too far. It's constrained, okay? This is also constrained in number and size. This has no constraint whatsoever, both in number yep. Yep. and in size. Therefore, it gives me, God planted in my brains, the totality of understanding, the totality of intelligence. Mm -hmm. As a black man, the message is God felt God has had enough of tampering with his order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He gave them Imhotep, a so called polymath, polymath, polymath. Polymath. I got it. I see. What people did was, since time had this, you know, transpired, they took a position of, okay, is their word versus our word? They can paint them whole tab black. That's what Ampin had been trying to deal with. Just in Oakland, California, Brother Ampin. In terms of they go and deface the monuments and and say, well, this was non-black. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. God, God, God did that. It was God order that we came out the way we came out. Carver did. Booker T. Washington did. Uh, you know, said, look, this is really we set up a university without any money. Even when they were giving money to abandon the project. They ignored it. Instead, they went into a dumping site to, look, as I told you before, to pick broken uh, lab tools to go and use in their lab and still did miracles mm. and did black magic with broken lab equipment. And still it wasn't understood. So God said, I'm going to come with a final order. This is the final order. Mm -hmm. Final order is, a black man has been ordained with the ultimate intelligence that can't be surpassed. That's how God does. That's God's way, God's signature. In that way, past, present and future is covered. Mm, mm. So you can't say things are in the past anymore and therefore it's one person's word versus the other is happening currently. There can never be any equations that will be outside of this equation, currently or in the future. It's not possible. Mm. The only, you know, the only way that can happen is if it is not an equation or it's not a theorem. Mm -hmm. So you guess properly, right? When you said, "Yeah, Riemann hypothesis," see, of course, Riemann hypothesis. Uh, go to Riemann. Let's branch out a little bit. Let's read a little bit on Riemann. Okay. So, therefore, but because Professor, the black race shares the genes of Professor Yibo. Wow. Oyibo becomes just a little tool. <laughs> it becomes a little tool to, for the God's order on a race that has been tormented, that has been, you know, dis, I can, dislocated, terrorized, mm -hmm. abused, disrespected mm -hmm. for 2,500 years. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Therefore, that's how God spelled out 
God's feelings about the displeasure God has had with that, you know, horror. Mm -hmm. Now, so therefore, now when the thing came out in 1990, see, I was uh, giving, I ordered the, oh, did you see the Raymond? Oh, no, not Raymond, but just Raymond. Bernard Raymond, first of all. Uh, unless they give a little bit, you know. They got someone who's a part. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, no. Raymond, Raymond, Bernard Raymond, his person. Okay. The, okay. No, just, oh, okay, no, no. Just put Bernard Raymond. We want to get a little bit on his person, you know, and then the hypothesis, you know, you know. Um, so, so that is the message in terms of okay, this is the final order, God's order, mm -hmm. um, because black people share the genes of Professor Yebon, disputed king of intelligence, past, present, and the future. Because he has an understanding of everything, like I showed you here. See, what is the position for modesty here? What is the position of the modesty? Modesty. What I mean, does modesty come in here? No, you, no. you can't. You can't be modest when you're talking about reality. Give me, give me five. Because you want to be modest, you have to lie. Is that real? I mean, is that, is that, is that God? Is that, is that what God wants you to do? Yeah, that's not truthful. That's right. So therefore, if modesty means telling a lie, especially on this kind of topic, mm -hmm. then who needs modesty? Correct. Correct. So it's not, a, it's not an issue of modesty. And in fact, in the Bible, mm -hmm. you know where I'm going, right? I th Thinks if I'm not sure. Yeah. Until you eat my flesh. Mm. Until you drink my blood. Mm -hmm. you, like, you get to know where. Is that modesty? No. Where, where did modesty come into that kind of situation? What use is modesty there, mm -hmm. if that is true? Right. Therefore, you can't go to the doctor and say you're modest, therefore you don't tell the doctor what you have or what you're there for. So you never get healed from your sickness. All right, so therefore, that has to be put in place because people who are gonna be hearing this are gonna say all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the uh, level that we're talking about is God's level. Mm -hmm. God has no modesty in God's vocabulary. Correct. This is what God talked. That's what. So if you're talking about God's order, but let, me, let me also say that God is 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 everything but modest. Thank you, thank you very much. Because mm -hmm. you have to you have to tell the truth. That is a new lesson that must be learned. And somebody who coined up the word modesty uh, was targeting black people. That has now been ended. See, even if you try to so-called grow modest, meaning you're going to lie mm -hmm. this year, you can't succeed. I told Minister Brown to write every equation that he can think of. You remember that? Mm -hmm. What happened? All of them come out of GIJ, comma, J equals zero. I see. You mm -hmm. proved it. You solved it. With so, GIJ, comma, J equals zero. Right past, present, and the future. That's what's in here. So a black man had been ordained. Now it's only, I, not, none of us has any power. Mm -hmm. The power comes from the creator. Correct. Every power, every real power comes from the creator. Every intelligence comes from the creator. Everything that we have. So therefore, when God gives, as a matter of fact, the word, the word for and I, I, I don't know how much time I have, but maybe I can't go into that. But I would have explained what the word respect is in a Gala language. Is in what? Gala language. G A L as the Galas Gala, and the Gitches. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, Gala language. Translated, it means it's called Ojima. I think I need to put that in. Ojima. Yes, yes. Uh, you want me to raise something? Oh God, but this, there's so many things here that I need to preserve. Okay, let me, let me raise this one here. And I'll try to be quick because I really want to go to the main point. Okay. Now, Ojima, Ojima, 
Okay? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, there are three of them. The thing that God ordered in the ancient African philosophy were um, Uma. Uma. U M A. This is not a very important part of it. The keyword is Ma. Then Ojima. To live the righteousness by according to God's order. Then Ufedo. Okay. This is intelligence. Uh, then this is respect. You see? And then this is love. You also, need, that's, you also need the piece of chocolate. Yeah, yeah, I, I get one. This is the essence of existence. Uma, Ojima, and Ufedo. Now, the key word is Ma. Ma. That's the Gala word. That's the Gala word for Ma means intelligence, which is the source of intelligence is the creator. That's what we're talking about. That's intelligence. Now, Ma, actually, it will be two A's in the real Mm -hmm. it, you know, when the Arabic, this was what it was called in, in Kemet before Arabs came in. When the Arab came in, they added T. Ma'at. 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 That's Ma'at. As in Ma'afa. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And actually, actually, the way the Gala call it will be ma ma de. Ma de M A A D E something like that. Which means this is intelligence. The dead part is the intelligence. So so the 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 Arabic instead of ma de the mat maat 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 ma de is the same word. That is intelligence or knowledge of proven truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where mathematics came from. So when the Greeks came, they took ma de, they emphasize it by calling it twice. Made matikos, made matikos. So maat, what they had was ma, maat, ma, a, tikos. The only thing the Greeks added was the C O S. And by the time it got into England, it became mathematics. Oh, okay, okay, I got it. I see we going. I see we going with this one. Okay. But it's the original African word, ancient mm -hmm. African word. The Gala people who still speak that today. That's what we call, we call Uma. Uma. Mm -hmm. And the Gala is mathematics. Mm -hmm. The young people need to know that, that mathematics has never been foreign to the blood race. It is their vocabulary. The mathematics is their vocabulary. That's what I speak. Being mm -hmm. raised up in, in Ida, I spoke ma. Ma them means intelligence or mathematics. So that's our vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So, but the essence of life in terms of ma art life, okay, the ma, ma, ma art life is ma, the ma art itself, mm -hmm. because that's God. Then oji ma again, ma is repeated again. Is respect. What is respect? Respect is a glory you give to God, the Almighty God. Just everything here, G I J. You give glory to God for giving a creature or an entity the ma, the intelligence. Mm. Mm. I follow you. Glory to God, mm -hmm. because God was so kind to give a creature intelligence. Mm -hmm. 
That's what respect is. So, by stripping us of respect, the goal was to make us look like we were worthless. We had no umma, we had no intelligence. Mm. Yes, it was. And so God, this is how God responded. God said to the contrary, Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I will teach you a lesson, the rest of, including we black people, a lesson we will never forget. Mm -hmm. A black man will call, I will, I will plant into a black man's head all of intelligence without anyone left out. And because you all share his genes, mm -hmm. you have been redeclared the most intelligent race. Mm. The black race has been declared the most intelligent race which is where this search this where, this is this is where this uh, dynamics were heading the one that will have more formulas that are outstanding will be the chosen people and the most intelligent race mm -hmm. but this one uh, stopped that whole process because everything is in here mm -hmm. and so and so um from hello so is God God and God God gives intelligence Ojima is the glory we give to God for that intelligence that's mm -hmm. respect when they stole that respect from us it was a desperate attempt to strip us of our designation by God. That is why God sent this. This cannot be stripped. Minister Brown was worried sick thinking about this is going to be stolen. Mm. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> you can't steal it. It can't be stolen. It's too big for them. It's like asking an ant to steal this house. The only thing the ant can do is to try to eat it up. It can't pick up the house. What is going to do? It so go roam around there. It can't do much with it. You, you've copyrighted that, right? Yeah, well, it's copyrighted through the process that we're doing right now. You know, and, but it brings us to the other point. But so therefore, now, so therefore, Ufedo is, is a soft part of intelligence. They can be part of intelligence, Ufedo. Uh, actually, Ufedo is actually intelligence because it's, it's, it's a respect, a version of respect. You love somebody. That's love. You love somebody. Loving somebody is part of a respect. Mm. Mm. It's a version of respecting a person. But it has a candy part and a hard part. Our sisters, you know, their power in raising the children is the candy part. Mm -hmm. It's more the candy part than usually the father, the male figure, take the hard part. And in combination, the child comes out. So, therefore, that is the essence of godliness. But it's embedded in all this here is the truth, it's, it's intelligence. It's intelligence. So, the black people then have been certified as the most intelligent race and automatically become the chosen race. So because this is the totality of intelligence, G I J comma J equal to zero is the totality of intelligence. You can take it down. Yeah, well I want to I need to show it a little more. <laughs> when they're trying to place Gaga, it has only one place it can be here. That's where it is, that's what 26. Because it's the totality of mathematics. If you, you know, ranking people who've made contributions in mathematics, mm -hmm. the totality of mathematics have no other place to be other than the mm -hmm. center of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so now, therefore, but it emphasizes that God's calling. In other words, this is the, uh, a demonstration of the understanding of the God's order. Mm -hmm. 
reinstating the black race to global leadership. Mm. They were declared the most intelligent and begot God as a result of God being intelligence. God, is, God doesn't just have an intelligence, God is intelligence, God is reality. Mm -hmm. In real space time, that's a difference. See, mm -hmm. I have all intelligence, but I'm not God. I can't be God. Because all that I have was given to me. The one that is intelligent itself in real space time is the real stuff. Okay, so, but God planted this in my brains. Now, I'll give you a sense of how you understand this. You studied. Uh, you know, some mathematics and so on and so forth. The light rays with which you visualize comes in eta sub zero. Mm -hmm. Eta sub zero. The reflection of that thing that comes into your eyes. Mm -hmm. And it goes and registers in your brain, mm -hmm. and it is interpreted. You're using your eye as a sense to demonstrate intelligence, as in understand reality. That's what intelligence is. That comes from eta sub zero. That's, that's why this is intelligence. The ray that makes the, you know, your actualizing of intelligence possible is here. Mm -hmm. Can you see that as a mathematician or mathematical scientist? You can see that. Yeah. Yeah. This is the light waves. Light waves come in straight lines and that's the equation right here. Now, your brain's functionality functions by that transformation. That's a transformation. The tree there reflects the light and it takes a, it turns into a picture in your brains. Mm -hmm. You're able to see it. The picture that you have in your brains is a transformation of that reality. Correct. A transformation, a dilation of that reality. Correct. That's how your intelligence is demonstrated. Mm -hmm your understanding of that reality is demonstrated through a transformation. Mm -hmm. This is all the transformation possible. That's number one. The human mind is limited in size, the brains. So you could see this tree, you could see that tree, you could see a couple of things, but you can't see the one behind you. You're limited. True. So how is it that I can see everything? See it in your mind. Good question. See it in your mind. I have eight tests of infinity. <coughs> With eight tests of infinity, I could map <coughs> through extended senses of the mind. I could map infinity <coughs> objects and points onto one spot in my brain. Mm -hmm. I could see the universe, <coughs> galaxies, all of them in my brain. Uh, That's the basis of this being <coughs> a measure of it. Yeah, he would discuss with you everything except Oyibo. <laughs> and I was telling you that that's an absolute impossibility because this is Oyibo. Mm -hmm. That means he doesn't want to talk reality. What kind of... His whole essence is about reality. <laughs> you know, how do, you, how do you... There's no life without reality. So, but uh, so the job is it's all geometry. That's what makes it the power. See, now, what has happened here 
is God overwhelming Jim Crow. This came from the headquarters of the European supremacy. This document, this is a Gottingen, Gauss year 2005. This happened in Gottingen University. The home of legendary Gauss, along with Herbert. You still have Herbert over there. And you were going to pick up Raymond a little while ago. Those three shared something in common. Head of the mathematics department of Gottingen University. They also shared another thing. They're all Germans. Mm. Perpetrating the perception the Germans are unbeatable, the, the foremost intelligence. German, uh, Gauss was considered the foremost mathematician. Mathematics is the totality. Mathematics is intelligence. That's why this is all mathematics, that's all of intelligence. Mm -hmm. See, in other words, it is so tight. That's what, that's how God forced them to submission. This is a submission. A surrender, unconditional surrender of Jim Crow. Uh, they got in him. Got in him. Got in him. Yes, that's right. That's a surrender. That is when they chose. Right. When they chose Gagan as the as center. The center. It's a, it's a surrender, like in the Second World War. Surrender. <laughs> this is a surrender to the black race. It follows of the Jim Crow KKK complex. Surrendered. The baton from their runner, Gauss, to representing the European supremacy, to Oyibo for the black race, who had about 10 years before described, along with Professor Henry Clark and Professor Van Settema, as one of the most dreaded black supremacists. It's about supremacy. True. But supremacy is nothing but a claim most of the time that you are the most favored by God. That's all supremacy is all about. It's supposed to be about. God favored you. You are the privileged, you know, uh, kind of people. Chosen. You're the chosen. God loved you more than the others. Yes. That's what we were talking about yesterday. Mm -hmm. This chosen. Chosen. That's, that's what this is. So therefore, but, but what is more important is, it is a God thing, not a personal thing. When God speaks, that, so now, in other words, they succumb to God's power. Do you understand? They surrender to God's power unconditionally. That would be nice. Because God, God is the totality of God's reality. It, it, there's nothing you can do, you understand me? Which is why I keep on cautioning him. You know, <laughs> you understand? Oh, I had to talk to this lady, and she's coming along. She was trying to do the disrespect, in which she said, no, no, in African philosophy. No disrespect of the African. So therefore, when the African looked like it was, he was losing his respect, that was the most devastating thing. But, but the reality was still there. No matter how small it was, it was still there. The Africa knew that God was sending Gaga. So uh, Africans had to do what had to be done, waiting for Gaga. The problem now, however, is dealing with Gaga now that Gaga is here. What are you going to do now? You can run now. It's here. May I ask you a couple questions? I mean, you were talking about uh, the light ways and the mathematics of how right, right. Uh, all of that is done. Right, right. Uh, right. One of the things I had, uh, I don't know if you looked at that tape, I looked at it again right, and I right. was a little disappointed because I, 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 I hadn't had the conversation with you when I was talking about the mental universe and all of that. Oh, yeah. But um, 
Yeah. The one thing I said is that Geiger gives us the mathematics for cold fusion. <laughs> and cold yeah. fusion changes the world as we know it because from a glass of water you can run New York City right. for days. But could you speak on cold fusion and on how uh, this is the mathematics that can yeah. develop that cold fusion? Yeah, but it's more than cold fusion, although the analogies that you were talking about in terms of, you know, if you bring people together, that's some kind of fusion. Yes, fusion is a, a broad sense, a broad terminology for a lot of things that happens because you start from one piece mm -hmm. and you glue them together mm -hmm. to form another. So it's using a building block. In that way, it's fusion in general. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> some fusions require more energy than others in terms of high temperature and so on and so forth. So cold fusion, see, I told you your problem is being able to listen to me. Mm -hmm. I'm delivering God news. Mm -hmm. God news. This is God news. By the way, God does not change. God in God's material and space-time dimensions does not change. The change is zero. God is zero. Mm -hmm. That's the that's that's all there is. Now, so, but I like to deal with the confusion, you know, later on. Let me deal. Gottingen is the summary of that. Okay. Because see, everything, every war that has been fought was preparing for this war. Every war that was that you can conceive was fought fundamentally to decide who is the chosen race. Ah. Which race is the chosen race? Which is the most intelligent race? Mm. One that has intelligent equations. So right now there should be a celebration every second for even by everybody else for God has made that decision. Please ask me questions like I said in Abuja if you have any doubts in this message as one coming from God and the extent of it, what it represents. I want doubts even if it is small doubt. Uh, Germany didn't have any doubts. That's what expressed here. I'm prepared to deal with your doubts. Now, the infallibility is so powerful, and so big, I said on the God level, they couldn't resist it. They put it the only place it could be in week 26. Let's look at others around week 26 who are competing for the same position. Read number 24. Who, who is our number 24? David Hilbert. Ah. Have you heard Hilbert. that name before? We just finished just talking, talking about, about Hilbert. Ah. 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 <laughs> ah. Yeah? David Hilbert was competing for Number 26. He came close. He came very close. He ended up number 24. 24. All right. Let's look at number 23. Well, by the way, by the way, David Hilbert was a successor to Gauss, clearly, because he was the head of math department. Did you verify that? I think we did. Okay, well, you, you can always, that's something you could do. Mm -hmm. Now, he, he was a successor. See, there were three greatest mathematicians I mentioned before mm -hmm. Newton, Euler, and Gauss. Mm -hmm. Gauss is definitely number one in pure mathematics. Newton might give him an edge in applied mathematics, uh, Euler's in between. Okay, now, so you have a successor to Gauss competing with Gagot for with 26, mm -hmm. and he, he lost out. Mm -hmm. He became a runner-up at 24. 
Now, I was also, we were also talking in your write-up on the resolution. You said, uh, Gaga had the potential of putting black people into the elite group of the G8. That's, you wrote that up. This is the G8 equivalent. Did it succeed in putting the black race in the G8 equivalent? This, uh, most of the, all the G8 are here. Number 25 is, is Russia, mm -hmm. person, the person from Russia. Number 23, you're going to read that. Read who is on number 23. Alexei Viktorovachi, uh, Barcelona. Okay. And Anthologies T. Formenko. Formenko. Go check on Formenko quickly. On the, on the, quickly. Formenko. Formenko comes from the Lenis, Lenisko system as an Oxbridge, as I mentioned before, in Russia. And so, he's like a successor to Euler, the, the, one of the three greatest mathematicians, you know, who was sent over to Russia. He was in Leningrad, which is part of the Lenisko. For Menko, for Menko. I wish we could have saved, okay, but anyway, we we'll get back to the river. Yeah. Okay, I'm not talking about Michael. Wikipedia, Wikipedia. Okay. 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 So we Russian mathematician. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. No, not, okay, Let, let's see his position, because he needs to, uh, what is very important here is that. Yeah, professor. Okay. At Moscow State okay. University. Okay, okay, yeah, Moscow State. That's Lenin School that I mentioned before. See, uh, Lenin, this is the Harvard of, uh, of uh, Russia. And, uh, and Leningrad is the Oxford, you know, so they're together. Now, um, Euler was in Leningrad, which is part of the Lenin School, the two universities at the same university, just split into two, just like Cambridge and Oxford. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he was a professor there. Uh, in the topologies and a full member of uh, Russian Academy of Sciences, supporter of the rest. Okay, now he was head of department. You know, that's probably what was left out. They probably said that somewhere in the thing here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. okay, go ahead. You know, he was head of department. Okay. In the top mathematical world. Okay, historical revisionism. Okay. Well, okay. Um, Okay, Russian Academy of Sciences. Okay, if the Newtonian system. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. Uh, topological okay. variants of the yeah, 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 yeah. integral Anatomian system. Okay. No. And head of the differential geometry and application department of the Faculty of Mathematics and Mechanics. Head of. Right. Therefore, since oil has sat in a similar position, the Lenisko University. For Manko is, an, uh, is a successor. He sat on the same chair that Euler sat on during his time. Do you yeah. understand? Yes. So we're looking at a competitor for week 26, a successor to Gauss, ended up on 24, number 24, a successor to Euler, ended up number 23. Okay? <laughs> Don't worry about it. This disappears. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, but because there's so many important things, you know, you, you need to be, have this at the tips of your fingers because this is our story. A story that's going to tell the children and the, everybody. This is our story. Right. All right, now. So, now, so he ended up, he wanted to be number 26 because he, Euler, in other words, number 26, if it was during Gauss, Euler, and Newton, they will all be competing for week 26. Mm -hmm. Now, but since they're no longer here, their successors would be competing, and that's what happened. And they just fell short of the 26. So 24 went to the uh, successor to Gauss. 23 went to the successor to Euler. Now, go to 19. Week 19. So, so Michael and Tyre. Atia. Atia. Uh -huh. 
and Daniel Laganiza. Laganiza. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Go to go find now who. Now, so you understand uh, that for Manco, uh is to oil as uh, Hilbert is to Gauss in terms of that. Okay. In terms of Hilbert was a successor to Gauss, and for Menko was a successor to Euler. That's what I tried to explain before. Okay. I'm trying to find it. You said somebody was a successor to Euler. I'm trying to find Yeah, that, that for Menko, the one that you, this one here. Okay. Yeah, that it's a successor. Okay. Because it comes from a Leningrad Moscow State system of university. Okay. Like Oxford Cambridge University. Okay? System called Oxbridge. This one you can call uh, Lenisco, Lenisco, Moscow State, and 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 and. Uh, uh. Yes, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can't take that call right now. So anyway, so therefore, in other words, the three greatest mathematicians are represented in the search. I mean, in the in the competition. Okay. Okay, uh, so therefore, um, that so, but you've gone to number 23, go to 19 now. Let's see. We just, what, read, we just read 19. Okay, read 19. Okay, now you're going to find out who Michael, Sir Michael Atia is. So Michael Atia, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Oh, look at oh, yeah. Yeah. Huh? <coughs> I remember he saw Michael Atia. Saw so, Michael Atia. <coughs> okay, they have it there already. Okay, read, read a little bit so Minister Brown can hear. Okay, it's so unfortunate that it's still, it's still so noisy. Sir Michael Francis Atia, uh, born 22 April 1929, is a British mathematician specializing in geometry. Atia grew up in Sudan and Egypt and spent most of his academic life in the United Kingdom at Oxford and Cambridge and the United States at the Institute for. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Institute for Advanced Study. He has been president of the Royal Society, Master of Trinity College. Master Cam of Trinity College. Mm -hmm. Cambridge. Who who was the famous one that you knew held the title of Master of Trinity College? Master of Trinity College. You, you told us that, that and I, I forgot. Newton. 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 Isaac, 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 Isaac Newton. Newton. Sir Isaac Newton. Yeah. Right. All right. So that's. That's a successor to Sir Michael uh, Newton, Newton, uh, right. Sir, okay. Sir Isaac Newton. How are you doing? That's, that's, yeah, that's uh, Brother Doctor Reverend Doctor Hen. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice to meet you. Okay. Yeah. okay. So the three greatest mathematicians are covered. You can see that's the point here. This right. is the, especially you being a mathematical scientist, you need to be clear about that. In other words, this list is not some. This is. This is it. You know the ranking of the greatest mathematicians of all time. Right. You're celebrating the the one that's exiting the the place, and you're bringing in the ones that are successors to, you know, uh, you know, uh, other ones and so on and so forth. So the three the successors to the three greatest mathematicians are represented in the competition, as expected. Right. Okay. So you have Euler for Menko, you have uh, Hilbert for Gauss, and you have Atia for Sir Isaac, Isaac Newton. He, he even has the Sir also like Einstein, uh, Newton has, okay? Sir, they all know knighted by the Queen of England because of their contributions to mathematics. 
I want that to be clear. Okay? Yes. Now, so that's that's. Do you understand? Have you seen any slouch so far in the competition? Not yet. No. Okay. Now, now, then, but look at the entry. This is very unfortunate because this point is extremely critical. See, the 19 Atia. If you read the title, what's the title of their entry that made it to 19? Fields medalist lectures. Okay. You know what the field medalist medal is? No. Okay. Field medalist medal is the Nobel Prize equivalent in mathematics. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, just Google it so you can go, you know, check that on a way, different window. But now you know who Sam Michael is. Right. All right. In his own right, as a successor to Newton, he's qualified to enter this competition. Okay? Mm -hmm. But it is more than that. This is, this is really unfortunate. Yeah, see, it's, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. Don't, 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 don't let it distract you. I understand. known as International Medal for Outstanding Discoveries in Mathematics. Go down a little bit more. It's awarded for outstanding contributions in mathematics. Okay, so in fact, okay, wait a minute. Okay, okay, go down a little bit. Oh, it's not too fast. Oh, no, no, okay, wait, 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 wait. Uh, where it says it's viewed, oh, viewed as the great, <laughs> great greatest honor great. a mathematician can receive. That, that's important. That's important. Yeah, this is totally disgusting. This is disgusting. I feel disgusting. But, the, <laughs> but because I'm trying to, I'm trying to give you the God news here. Yeah, but don't ignore that. It's okay, okay. Don't, don't be distracted. All that. right, all right. Now, now, therefore, when we say the greatest mathematicians went into this competition, keep talking. You have the field medalist lectures. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need some of that. Yeah. No. I'm not okay. Gonna. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, if it's up just a little bit so it could give yeah. up better. Yeah, okay. Now, um, he just said, uh, I don't know if Minister Brown was watching, no, there was a field medal. The field medal is often viewed as the greatest honor a mathematician can receive. Mm. And let me read the next sentence too. It says, the field medal and the Abel Prize have often been described after mathematician's Nobel Prize. You need to digest that very carefully. You need to digest it because you're going to be telling this story. Mm -hmm. So you have to tell it first to yourself. This is not a joke. This is the, this is the actuality of the God's mission in terms of giving the God news to yourself and to the world. So you're going to be telling this story. Now, that's what's in here. Mm -hmm. You had all the field, read it again, all the title again, the field medalist lectures. Did it say medal? Medalist. Medalist? Plural. No, plural. As in all of them. They combine all the, the most outstanding uh, words kind of work together in one volume. I mm. use it to compete with Gagot for week 26. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. I see. Explain to Minister Brown what you just got. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I would, because I, I do not want to live in here without a clarity on that one, because this is, this is extremely important. Right. The, the field medal is, is not a field, it's not a single medal. It's a collection of all the 
greatest works done by mathematicians co combined into one volume. Yes, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was saying that what he was just mentioning is that the Fields Medal is, is, is actually it's not one medal. It's, it's, it's plural. It's medalless. Okay, which means that it's a composite of all the major accomplishments and, 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 and ideas of mathematicians compiled into a single volume. Mm. And, comp you know, they use that to compete with Gagard for the WIC 26 position. Right. Along with the reputation of Sir Michael Atiyah, who was a successor to uh, Sir Isaac Newton mm -hmm. from Cambridge, Oxbridge. He was he was civilian uh, civilian civilian professor in Oxford and became the master of Trinity College in Cambridge. That's who. But he was one of the 42 winners of field medals by 2005 when this celebration came on. So 42 greatest mathematicians in their own class together they couldn't do it alone. Mm -hmm. Competed with Gagot and lost out. That's powerful. That's a, that's a heavy statement. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Only God can do that. Yes. Only God. So, you want to serve God? That's it. <laughs> you got to deal with that. You have to deal with that because God has done something here that is very clear. That has God's signature on it. Mm -hmm. In other words, again, why did that happen? That happened because Gagot is all of mathematics. So 42 uh, that have been recognized as made, having made some serious contribution to mathematics, you combine all their competition, it's nothing compared to Gagot. They are number 19. Right. Number 19, seven away from 26. Right. They lost out. So, put it another way. How would you feel if you were sitting down here talking to Sir Michael Atia? I would say that it, to me, it doesn't really uh, give me the added confidence I need when there's something greater. And 42 of them together mm -hmm. cannot compete with Gaga, 42 of them, they fell seven steps below. This is what the ministers need to understand. Right. In a very loud and clear way. Because see, how much can you keep on ignoring God's love expressed to you and giving you all kinds of things? Mm -hmm. We're not the only race God created, but God has shown us a lot. Now with taking a lot of abuse and lies and have but this is the reward for the abuse. Mm -hmm. Isn't it worth it? Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Brown need to understand that. You know, need to understand that. And the world need to understand. Well, the world has understood it. That's why they put it here. Mm -hmm. So can you now see that Gagot had no other place to be other than 26? Can you see that? Yes. Yes. That's what we're talking about. Now this, this implicates the Queen of England in terms of this, this decision is coming, yeah, like, yeah, like, you, you, you can't do it. It's coming from, yeah, it's coming from her, near her hometown in, in Germany. This is Gottingen, this is coming from Gottingen. Mm -hmm. And that is a good sign also. Absolutely. Yes. This is nature. This is nature, that's correct. So that's what we're talking about here. Now you not being a mathematician, see I'm emphasizing it because you're a mathematical scientist. Okay? Right. You cannot gloss on this at all because this is the essence of the God, God's order. We talk about the God order, the final order here. There's nothing else anybody can do that he can surpass this, is what we say here. The whole exercise of humanity is aspiring to reach this point as the ideal, the ultimate level, ultimate height, ultimate war. Yeah, it's, uh, they're very desperate. It's uh, now, he can drive a few minutes. Once they start blowing, yeah. they yeah. almost finish. Yeah. They almost finish. You ignore yeah. them. Yeah. The Bible yeah. said resistance. They're almost yeah. too firm. You just got to be patient. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need to take a picture of this. I do. You did. You know where it says, 
what the you know we, we you know especially Usman has been telling you the definition of of the, the field medals okay mm -hmm. now it is written in written in writing mm -hmm. by mathematicians it's viewed as you know uh, as the equivalent of Nobel Prize in in mathematics mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. yeah so picture 42 Nobel laureates mm -hmm. bringing all their contributions together and used to compete with Gagat and losing out on it. Now, I, I, yes? I have to go here, especially for our people like Scott Williams, who ain't oh our God. people. Oh God. But I mean, I know you don't want to go there. No, 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 I have no but, problem. No, he, but, he can deal with Scott Williams based on what he just had. Yeah, but uh, if you compare what the best mind in the European world, uh -huh. in mathematics and yeah. physics, yeah. are saying, yeah. then the stuff that Scott Williams is talking about to to uh, defame and make it look like that somehow you are lying, uh, and and what's that all about? That is nothing but to discourage and to uh, destroy and further delay our um, leadership and liberation and somebody had to pay him to do that and he needs to be exposed Thank you. Thank you. and brought down you. uh in, in in you know with the truth yeah uh i like i like him to deal with that that's why i said to bring him mm -hmm. so he can he can see this document himself and you're going to frame this all of you every black person will frame this and put it on the wall you want to do anything for the next generation. That's part of the Shabaka stone dynamics of this one here. There's no amount of money you pay the headquarters of Jim Crow to do this. Mm -hmm. It is the biggest war. A war is fought to demonstrate who is more intelligent. Mm. That's the goal of every war. That's why this formula was used to, for industrial revolution that create mach war machines. With war machines, you overwhelm people and say, I'm superior, you got to do it my way. Right. Because right. I'm more intelligent. I designed war machines with my intelligence to overwhelm you, therefore I'm your superior. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to prove who is more intelligent. Mm. Therefore, when God did this, the believers will also know that God has all the cards. It's God who decides the winner. <laughs> and that's what God did. Mm -hmm. The totality of intelligence is here. Now, so what happened? There's no dispute about a black man being ordained with ultimate intelligence, not just the highest intelligence. You can't surpass this. And it's infinity. I'm, the stuff in my brain maps every infinite point into one point in my brain. So now it can catch all the infinity dynamics. Like I showed you, the mapping of the tree into your head your brains. Mm -hmm. For the regular creatures, there's so much you can map into your brains because your brain is finite size. But with this, mm -hmm. the N is infinity in my brain. So it maps not just one point from the reality to one point in my brain, mm -hmm. which, will, which will, because of the finiteness, we only take on finite amount, but it can map infinite points into one point in my brains because I can have any infinity as the ultimate. You can't go past that. But that's not to say I'm competing with God in any way. That has to be understood. Mm -hmm. What I'm understanding is God. So, to say God understand, you know, God, God's self, 
No, God understands Himself in real space time. God can fail God's self. See, the understanding is, is a function. The dilation and the dynamics, what, which is what is called a function of space time. You can follow this point here, moves that way and that. So you know the realities of that point over space and time. That's what intelligence is and understanding is. God gave me this formula, so track that. All of it. Can you include the light in the way you were discussing and explaining how it yeah. all comes in that point? Because we don't have the sound now, so we, yeah. well, we can go over that. Right, 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 clear. right. But yeah, it's, it's your vision mm -hmm. is part of your expression of your intelligence and your understanding. Mm -hmm. Picturing reality correctly. Mm -hmm. What God has given me is I picture the totality of reality mm -hmm. precisely in my brains. Mm -hmm. Explain again how that's done. So you need senses that helps you do that mapping. Mm -hmm. Intelligence is nothing but mapping and visualizing reality. Use your eyes as part of the tool, your ears. You could use uh, your feeling. You could use your smell. You could use all kinds of things. Mm, mm. The only thing that diff is a difference for me is the G's. Folks, this is not a joke. Mm -hmm. Well, how does that fit in uh, with, say, your feeling, how would you factor that into that equation? It is, it is expressed by G and J. See, if you're going in the simplest form, mm -hmm. the G and J will be the slope of a line that, that the light rays reflected into your brains. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. The slope of the line. Yeah. The, 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 the angle slope of the, the line of the light. I mean. Light waves that's reflected mm -hmm. from your, from the object you're trying to see, the reality that you're trying to see. The light wave comes in and goes in, and like a photo camera like you do right now, mm -hmm. there's a snapshot of that transformation, mm -hmm. and that, so if you, if you seek, if you understand it clearly, then that's it. You express your intelligence, your understanding of it. And what God has done with my brain is I can tuck in into the same spot in my brains infinity of curves, straight lines, curvatures of all kind that is fundamentally shows the picture of every reality. Mm. But it comes out of that equation. It's all in here. So okay. Here. So no. here. Electromagnetic dynamics, the slopes are on here. The the gravity is very simple. N is equal to one. Is a general one. Einstein cut you know only captured when a tri or more or less a trivial case where G and J's are all the same. Which, you know, is very I mean so tiny. He and Newton. He only captured uh, you know the same G and J's, reducing theirs to a, sphere, a spheroid, I mean a, a, sphere, a spherical, a multi-dimensional sphere. A sphere. Mm -hmm. That's highly, highly simplified. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just made this N is equal to 1, then with the G's varying, you have ellipsoids, you have hyper, hyperboloids, you have paraboloids, you have, you know, all manner of things, which are reality. That's what I mean by visualizing the entire solar system and the universe. The planet cannot just go, does not just go around a solar system as in an ellipse or a circle. It can also go on a parabola and may not take a long time before it ever returns back to the same solar system again or join another one. That's all covered here. 
there's not been any other analysis where they did that seriously in any literature before this came around. But it's, 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 you know, so that's application to physics dynamics or physical dynamics. But it's geometry. Mm. Yeah, because geometry is the study of shapes. It's a shapes. It's all a, shapes. It's all shapes. All, every shape is given here. But this and, and the relationship between them. Right, right. But but it also it also gives everything that everything that's reality is space time and the curvatures parameters or the invariance of that space time. So I hear there was some professor in Harvard trying to use a telescopes, you know, sophisticated telescopes to go as far as they can to see the galaxies. I have all the galaxies here. I have them all here. So information from them. Yes. All of them are here. Past, present, future. And I can tell you you know the spirals, the spirals in the in the galaxies, which they're having very serious difficulty understanding. They're all in here. This thing can go. I mean, it it, it blows your mind. I got I got the children when they were much younger to do some plotting of the universe, and they were made. They were, mm -hmm. they were, they were. Do some what of the universe? To plot. Oh, the, plot. Yeah. Plot the universe from here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the galaxies, the various galaxies. Mm -hmm. So now, therefore, over here in this premises, the secret code of the entire universe is in here. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes the hottest point on the planet and the solar system. That's why there's so much surveillance. All this noise and all that. All this casual black men showing up. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, the wires, uh, I can't. The wires over here. Uh, a TNT guy walks in one time, and and you know he looked puzzled and said, "Yeah, man, this this is this is uh, a tapping of your of the system by the CIA." And I said, whoops, <laughs> I was not supposed to say that. I thought it, you know, and we all laughed and said, yeah, it was, that's, what else? That is suspected. Mm -hmm. But I wanted, I wanted you to, you know, folk, make sure you get it so that next time when you hear Usman saying the no field medals is the Nobel Prize for mathematicians, so you understand. Let's ask some basic questions. No, I wanted you to deal with certain things with Scott Williams. You, you are you prepared to say something? You know who Scott Williams is? Not really. Oh, oh God! I was okay. going to look him up later on. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I don't think you know it's too much waste of time. Although we can devote a particular time to this. Uh, a brother who was put on a mission to discredit Gaga. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and say no more. And he's supposed, yeah, and he's supposed to be a mathematician. Say no more. He's, okay, so therefore, <coughs> I got the picture. Okay, so therefore, the bottom line is, the people who are sending him are surrendering, and they're asking him to, how do, <laughs> they pay him to go and contradict what they're doing here. What, is, what does that mean? That's that's comedy. That's you know because, you understand, he will not, he will not have an opportunity. Well, first of all. He will not have an opportunity to sweep the floor where these people are meeting to make this decision. Right. So how could what? So the only thing is, he can only punish black people, you know, in terms of individually and you know some group to put doubts in their head, counting on the atrocities of the Jim Crow before, in terms of you know having you doubt yourself as a, as a result of them trying to take your respect from you. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're counting on. Mm -hmm. But since then, he has had you know, problems, as I mentioned to you before. Mm -hmm. but, but there are certain things that must go on. <clears throat> you can't legislate intelligence. That's true. Mm -hmm. And things have sometimes, most of the time, two sides. <clears throat> 
A person is free to make any statement they like. It's a free world. You can say anything you like. People even go to the extent in theory, of... In theory. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is people insult God. So, so therefore, on that level, <coughs> somebody has been worse than Scott Williams. Mm. Yeah, no, right? Which is, what he's doing is insulting God. Mm. Scott Williams is insulting God. Right, yes. When you lie, especially something that is directly from the Creator, you lie or you say something you're not sure that is disrespectful to God, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. That's why I pointed out that, yes, good people get stroke and die too, but he had this stroke. His is definitely enough for doing good stuff. Mm -hmm. He had stroke a few weeks after, after a few years after he, he indulged in that stuff. The only people that read him in reality and take him serious, can take him on any level of whatever are the poor black people whose minds are already in their <coughs> in uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> um, Jim Crow control. No, yeah, yeah, Jim Crow as in <coughs> uh, deficient level um, uh, they suffer from what we <coughs> is called in Gagat language, acquired intelligence deficiency syndrome, yeah. AIDS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and his case, it's a very serious case of AIDS. See, it's one thing if you, if you know, in other words, that's why the proactive way is better, better to go. Because you're not going to do anything. Yeah, I want you to mm -hmm. use that magic touch again. You're not going to accomplish anything by it's chemistry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The black magic. That's right. Uh, <clears throat> you're wasting time. I don't. I know. That's what I did. The only time I responded to Scott Williams was on coast to coast, and there were specific questions, you know, and so on and so forth. But this is the real deal. A surrender. Mm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. An unconditional surrender Oops. of the Jim Crow to the black race. That is, I want you to be clear about this because God, this is God's order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shabazz is not on that list. You mm -hmm. notice that? This list, this section at least, this is the most prestigious part, this is the center. He's a brilliant brother, Cornell University. Mm -hmm. Is he here? Do you see any Shabazz here? No. You can't see no, Shabazz. Definitely not. <coughs> okay. So needless to say, Scott Williams. Scott Williams doesn't. Who knows Scott Williams? Mm. Who knows? Is he here? Mm -mm. Uh, uh, which means he has no credibility. No, no brains. He suffers from a very nasty case of acquired intelligence deficiency syndrome. <laughs> you don't make that your case. This is your case here. Right. This is your case. That's correct. Yeah. That, that's how intelligent. God, if God was to worry about nonsense that goes on, God would have no time to take care of the universe. <laughs> right? The nonsense and ignorance are shown. You know how many nonsense that are outside this thing here that are not real? This is the only real thing. This is what runs. With, this is the universe here. So now, so therefore, now, so this is now. In other words, forty-two Nobel laureates in mathematics are small compared to Gagat. Mm. Is that mm. what it says there? That's what it says. I that's mean, what it, it, that's what they're trying to say, really. Did they, did they, did they, are they No. They're seven, seven steps below right. Gaga. So Gaga is worth more than 42 Nobel Prizes. Exactly. Mm. Far more. Mm -hmm. Ah. That's, that, that's the implication, yes. So now the you, get, in, you yeah. get into your own responsibilities here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Scott Williams also said, uh, the lady that called had a problem with Scott Williams too. Uh, even though I love her as a sister and I gave it to her straight. 
I don't fool around. Don't take me to a certain point. I'm very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and she, you know, then she began to really, and I said, hey, I better stop you. She said, sister. <laughs> Because she was saying, oh, it wasn't Scott Williams, it was another one with an African name, Shawari. Ah. Oh, yeah, Shawari took Scott Williams and repeated it, reproduced it. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. reproduced with Scott Williams. I said, well, you know, Oyibo wasn't nominated for Nobel Prize. Oh, yeah? No Oye Scott Williams. No Scott Williams? Yeah, but, but Oyibo, if Oyibo wasn't nominated for prize, what does that mean? Oyibo is better than 42 Nobel Prizes and it's not nominated? You want to figure that out? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What, is, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 42 Nobel Prizes that have been awarded, competed mm -hmm. with Gagot and lost out very mm -hmm. clearly. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you said Gagot wasn't good enough to be nominated for one Nobel Prize? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. We got you. We got you. Mm -hmm. So that kind of mindlessness is one mm -hmm. of the reasons why I'm going over this. Mm -hmm. Anybody that cannot understand that reality, Sam Michael Atia, even Hawking never made it on this list. Stephen Hawking. Stephen, Hawking. Stephen Hawking is not here. Andrew Wiles of Princeton is not here. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people have, that, that, that are, can't be here that are not here? Only 52 works were selected since the 1800s. This is the story of the surrender, of all time surrender. The return of God's love to the black people. The return of respect for the black people. As in, the glory you give to God for giving intelligence to a race. Mm -hmm. That is what Ujima means. Respect. Now, Therefore, there can't be any human that can disrespect the black race ever again. Mm. Mm. You have, right. you have, That's right. That's right. you have all the respect. Mm -hmm. So when Arita, Sister Arita, she's still alive, to be wonderful, yeah, somebody who could alive. bring, bring her the word. Yeah. She sings about respect. That's what she was looking for. Mm -hmm. When Professor James Brown, you know, talks about I'm black and proud, that's respect. Mm -hmm. That's respect. Mm -hmm. But they murdered him before he could see Gaga. Yeah. That's right. Mr. Brown were, mm. and I were talking about this a week later, two weeks later, he was dead. I was going to send Minister Brown to Georgia to look for him. Right? That must have been the beginning of December somewhere. Then. Right. Yeah. And by 25th of December, on the Christmas day, he was murdered. But, but this was coming. And this is it. They surrendered anyway. So he's rejoicing. He's happy. He's happy. <laughs> he's extremely happy. Yeah. You know, so, so now, so therefore, now, but go, okay, now, so now that is, you know, go to Riemann again. So we just go to Riemann and then, now begin to say, what does all this mean? Oh, no, I have, I have one more other thing. Okay, now, no, wait, wait, wait. I, go to Raymond, go to Raymond. And then I, I need to take this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I bring out another piece of document. Okay. I'm gonna bring up another one. Yeah. Raymond, Raymond, you have talked, got it out before. But, uh, mm -hmm. Um, okay. It's R E I M A N. Yeah, R, R I E. Real. M A N N. Yes, that's N N. You had it, you had it out before. Ber Bernard. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even if you spelled it wrong, usually it comes to correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, he's right here. Okay. Okay. Read the little bit. The first part. That the Wikipedia. Read the little part. Okay. Remember, redirects here for other people with a certain. Oh, no, that's not wrong. Let me go down. Yeah. Yeah. George. George Frederick Bernard Riemann. Yes. Okay. Was an influential German mathematician who made lasting contributions to analysis, number theory, and differential geometry. Right. Some of them enabling the, the later developer of general relativity. Yes. Aha. That's the Romanian, uh, Romanian geometry I was telling you before. 
Okay. So he, he gave, uh, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Newton something to think about. That's right. Uh, Riemann was born in Breslitz, a, a village near Dannenberg in the Kingdom of Hanover in what is the Federal Republic of Germany today. Yeah. His father, Frederick Bernhard, oh, excuse me, Bernhard Riemann, was a poor Lutheran pastor in Breslau who fought in the Napoleonic War. Napoleonic War. His mother, Charlotte Ebel, died before her children had reached adulthood. Riemann was the second of six children, shy and suffering from numerous nervous breakdowns. Riemann exhibited exceptional mathematical skills, such as calculation abilities from an early age, but suffered from timidity and a fear of speaking in public. Go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. just, okay, okay. Okay, uh, then we went to Hanover, that's Queen's side, okay. Uh, yeah, um, okay, now what I really, okay, now that he, okay, wait, wait, okay, now. University yeah. of Gothenburg. Oh, Gothenburg, yes, okay. Where he planned to study towards a degree in theology. Yeah. However, yes. once there, he began studying uh, mathematics yeah, under the, Carl um, Frederick Gauss. Okay? Specifically, his lectures on the method of least squares. Okay? Yeah. Move on. Okay. Okay, Gauss recommended that Gauss uh, Riemann, Riemann give, give up, up his theological work. Okay. Into the mathematical field. Okay? <laughs> that getting his father's approval. But, yeah, that's kind of like your situation too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you combine them. But okay, now. Attempt to, okay, now. Uh, okay, no, wait, 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 wait. Up here. Oh, okay, okay. During his time of study, uh -huh. Jacoby Lejeune, Derelix, whatever you pronounce the name, Strainer, and, and Einstein were teaching. Uh -huh. He stayed in Berlin for two years and returned to Gottingen in 1849. Uh -huh. Reinerberg held his first lectures in 1845, uh -huh. which founded the field of Romanian geometry. That's right and thereby set the stage for Einstein's general theory of relativity. Absolutely. In 1857, there was an attempt to promote Reinman to an extraordinary professor status at the University of Göttingen. Although this attempt failed, it did result in Reinman finally being granted a regular salary. In 1859, Following Le Jeune, yes. Dirichlet, Dirichlet, that's a Dirichlet's death. Dirichlet's death. Who was head of mm -hmm. He was. Go ahead. And he was promoted to head the mathematical department that's at Gottingen. That, that's what I wanted you to note. Okay. Okay, so Riemann also headed the mathematics department at Gottingen. He was a successor to Gauss. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and it was after him that Hilbert came into a place, also as the head of math department. So when he created the Riemann hypothesis, mm -hmm. uh, he died before he could solve the problem. And uh, Barnard, I'm sorry, uh, Hilbert tried to solve it and he couldn't, so he put it out open for people and said, this is important mm -hmm. and therefore, um, yeah, 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 and uh, maybe uh, you could take a little break because I want I want you to miss him. And, uh, so uh, he he opened it to the whole world to solve. Right. Who solved it? Who Raymond? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Has it been solved? Uh, yeah, that's what we try to get into. It's the topic. One of the reasons why you're here today. He solved it. Yeah, doesn't solve because it's in the GI. Professor Ebo solved it. Yeah, it's the it's the it's 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 in here. Every truth is in there, which is a proof, you know, of the whole dynamics. Excuse me, let me pick up. And is the story. Gottenham is the story. That's right. Mm -hmm. Why is Gottenham the story? Is the headquarters of mathematics, is the headquarters of intelligence, is the is the headquarters of the European supremacy. Uh -huh. So, the story that is telling is a handing over of the baton of intelligence mm -hmm. through Gauss representing the Europeans onto 
Oyibo mm -hmm. on behalf of the black race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the story here. That's the God news. Mm -hmm. When the when the Nigerian Senate did the motion, mm -hmm. and this by the way, this happened in 2005. Okay? In mm -hmm. 2005 was when this surrender happened. Mm. 2005. After we returned back from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after the Progressive Baptist Convention. Convention. Now, you got to give praise God for giving you the light. That's one of the reasons I insisted you got to be here. Mm -hmm. What you did is obviously consistent with this story, isn't it? Yes. That's right. It's now, consistent. can you talk about um, what it means in the uh, New York State Baptist Convention resolution, yeah, and the other and the Nigerian Senate. Can you put all that together? Yeah, I'm in gonna, terms of I, what that means. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, but I have to go through this first. Um, this is the thing that even happened earlier. This is the formula for intelligence. Mm -hmm. Oyibo has been giving it as of infinity. Defining him with ultimate intelligence, you can't go more than N is infinity. If you can map realities, infinite realities, to one spot in your brains, you mm -hmm. got it all. That's that's the bottom line. You notice I've been talking for how long now? Uh, Six hours. Uh, uh, I'm not even warmed up yet. <laughs> this is the formula with which I talk. This is the formula for intelligence. This is the formula for intelligence. Now, when this thing came out, of course it didn't happen without a lot of toll, but we're not gonna go into that. Toll on my personal life, my family, and all the other stuff. Uh, the bullets in the window over there, which you probably, you know, not here, the go other. Around on the side. Yeah, around the side. I'm gonna yeah. see him. Yeah, good. Hold on. I'm just saying that Professor Garabedian worked under the force mathematics Nobel laureate. He was from Harvard, okay, the very first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, so now, but that is about eight, nine, eight, 1989. I was, I was inducted into the Hall of Fame, not the Hall of Fame, they call it Associate Fellowship mm -hmm. in 1989 as a result of the shock of the hologram. You know, but they had no idea Things hadn't started yet. So 1990, Gaga unveiled. But in a God's way, it was so sophisticated mm -hmm. because of the nature of the dynamics, you know, some of which I've talked about already. So um, by 1994, my brother was also assassinated. My young brother was assassinated. Uh, Where? In Nigeria. Okay. The medical, uh, uh, you know, uh, a mathematician, but used his mathematical skills to become a surgeon. And he did a surgery in his Somia hospital, in the Somia hospital, uh, towards a medical director in his own hospital. Surgeries that it took like nine months for a top university teaching hospital in New York City to carry out, which is removal of a cyst from a woman's system. He did that on emergency in Nigeria, in Kano, in Sonia Hospital. So, um, and how, what duration? How long? The woman came in on emergency, was going to die, just, you know, got into the theater and, and took the... Two talking about hours? Yeah, well, yeah, of course, but, okay. you know, but he saved the life. Right. The life was saved. Uh, for the same thing to be done in the St. Luke's or one of those uh, Presbyterian things, a similar surgery with a smaller cyst. The cyst he took out was the size of a baby. Wow. That's what my brother did. My younger brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they realized that another Oyibo was on the horizon. That was 1994. And uh, so the whole dynamics was used uh, and he was assassinated. Uh, in Ibadan, the University of Ibadan, where we were. So, 
you understand, there was, by the time we reached there, 10 years later, mm. 10 years, 1994, we were there in 2004. Right, yeah. I was tempted to blast, blast them off, mm. you know, and, uh, and, uh, you know, and uh, so, but uh, but God said I was on a mission. There was no point. Anyway, so the government tried everything they can to stop. God, Nachos was respected. Yes. Um, Brooklyn, Bali, uh, I like to my wife and all the other stuff. But it comes to the territory. At some point, I received a letter. An email from a cousin of Dr. Watson, the Nobel laureate in biology, mm -hmm. who eventually was involved with my daughter mm -hmm. in terms of pulling my daughter away to go and study brain science under him. Um, and he wrote me an email, the cousin wrote me an email. The cousin was a fighter pilot with a, an MD degree, and he was heading the Veteran Administration in California. Mm -hmm. So he sent me an email. The email says, what is Oyibo still doing alive? Mm. Mm. How did Oyibo still manage to stay alive? How could he possibly still be alive after discovering the unified computer? <laughs> and, uh, and he says, in order to understand my question, here's the list of what happened before you. Their own people, people from Cambridge University, who, are, who it was believed they were kind of getting some hints on where to go to search for the theory, not theorem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. A theory and things happen to them. So here you have a person that has produced, not the theory, but the theorem of everything, of every reality. I have to keep on pounding at your brain so you can hear me. That's the right. only way you can hear me. Right. Let me, ask, let me ask a question, digression question. And, and, and this may not seem to be important, but, it, but it, it weighs a lot of importance. What drove you to come from Nigeria to the United States? That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, number one, I had a sense of history in the United States and South America were part of Africa. The old Mac heads were very clear signs. Actually, it was. It was just one body of land which, which broke up the seven continents later on. But you, you're absolutely correct. But what, 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 what caused you to think that? No, uh, information. Okay. Yeah. The Olmec heads, we saw Olmec heads were being worshipped here in the Americas. Mm -hmm. Black, massive black heads. Olmec. And so that's our land. So Indians came later on with. We allow them a free rent on the land. It belongs to the ancient Africans. Mm -hmm. Pyramid also on the sides. So right. so, John but, Henry Clark had had already proved that the Africans existed. That's right. That's um, right. Here before uh, in Columbus and all the Indians. Oh all no, that. that's yeah, no, that, that's very clear. So there was no doubt. There was mm -hmm. no doubt about that with our mind. So. I hear people, well, this is the land for the Indians. No, Indians came later, man. Exactly. <laughs> Indians were worshipping the original owners of this land. So mm -hmm. now, in addition, I also knew that my people were being disrespected over there. Uh, you know, and there has to be some mission there. Uh, I didn't know how to hear everything about the details of what's going on. I knew Andrew J. Beard was a black man uh, that never, supposedly didn't have a formal education, that means there was no foreigner that ever taught him anything. What he had was what his African self. He had no even high school edu diploma or education. He invented rocketry. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Andrew J. Beard. Mm -hmm. So, and I, we, I made the connection that it was the Chikbo that he got, he received the, the concept from. That's an African toy, Chikbo, Chikbo, Chikbo. Do you understand me? That's mm -hmm. how he was able to. Everybody was doing some standard thing, trying to compress air. He said, "Look, if you rotate, if you rotate the thing, you can compress the air and get it to the power ignited. You get a rocketry. Boom! You get jet and all that. That's is the father of rocketry, mm -hmm. so-called modern rocketry. But he doesn't get credit for that. So, therefore, and then and then, the facilities were also, uh, you know, destroyed in the African setting." in terms of facilities for research and so on and so forth. I had uh, quite a bit of problems dealing with the systems over there, you know, uh, in terms of uh, undergraduate and all that. So, I'm sorry, I need to actually a digress a question based on your conversation that we had yesterday. What do you call that long kaleidoscope like machine? I call it Atom Smasher. It's, it's miles long and- Oh, that's- uh, um we call that the, the one that crushes atoms. The uh, okay, it's a uh, synchrotron. Synchrotron, right? Synchrotron. What, what you're saying that the, the 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 equipment got destroyed over there? Okay. What's the possibility of building a, a synchrotron? Synchrotron. Synchrotron. Yeah. What's the possibility of you building a synchrotron over there? In Nigeria? Yeah. Very simple. Very simple. I mean, but these steps that we we're embarking on now, the gutting of story has to be. Every child has to tell the Gottinger story before you can move on to that point. That's why I'm spending my time here. This is not a trivial exercise. Mm. If you don't understand Gottingen, you can't do a damn thing. With the understanding of Gottingen, the shackles on your mind is, is busted totally. That's true. You just received an un, unconditional surrender from Jim Crow. Unconditional, that's what this is. Mm -hmm. Only God can give that. And when God gives it, even if you you prefer, you can't refuse it. Even if you like to refuse it, yeah, man, let me hide in my cave. No, no, no way. You see how powerful I I feel and act. I can feel my own power. Mm -hmm. mm. You're going to be feeling your own power as well. Mm. That's what I'm doing with you, especially you. And him as well. He he almost comes to a point where sometimes he tries to, well, you know, I call Miss, I say, Miss Val, you haven't called me in the last 24 hours. And he goes, I'm trying to gather some courage. <laughs> 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 Do you understand? There is no such a thing anymore. Brothers and sisters were talking, even Reverend King talked about, we are men. There's only real manhood. That's a black manhood. Mm -hmm. That's what you're seeing here. This is manhood. That's right. Manhood. Mm. A real manhood. Therefore, um, my father, for example, with that prostate thing, I wish you especially could have met him. Yeah. Then you would have your trip to Ida would have been more you may you came to Ida when a lot of atrocities has occurred as a result of the CIA and MI six and so on and so forth. A lot mm -hmm. was done. You didn't see the airport. You know, the current guy tried to you know get the process be, you know started and so on and so forth. And so on. It's a whole lot but so um when I asked my father to come to Sloan Catering he said now it's not that sick. He said, I come here to see the brothers and sisters, but not Slunker. He tried to be kind of funny about it. So, yeah, and that belongs to some black brother. <laughs> he, he knows <laughs> Slunker is known by black people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, no. I said, sure. You know, so you want me to come over there? No way. I'm not doing I'm not that sick, he says. Uh, but, uh, so, though the, but the bottom line is that back in here, uh, this is the formula that expresses intelligence exactly. Intelligence, the art of understanding reality. Mm -hmm. This is the exact formula. Mm -hmm. So, uh, between 1990, 
including an attempt by the various forces to put uh, radioactive stuff in my coat. And I remember asking one of the our geniuses, I said, well, I already, I already knew because uh, President Kwame Nkrumah was assassinated with uh, the same thing. Uh, dry cleaning was done in England for him, and he paid them money. They, so they sold onto the coat uh, radioactive material and they killed him. A similar thing was, was they were doing, trying to do that for me. You know, took my coat and kept it for one week, and the final mysterious the coat, the coat appears. It was a coat my, my wife got for me. It was cashmere, not cashmere. It's not, it's not the most expensive. I think it's cashmere. It's good stuff, you know, but they took it and kept it for one week. And so I knew I wasn't going to take the, uh, the stuff, but eventually I asked one of their most brilliant ones. And he said to me, Gabriel, don't go near that coat. <laughs> I said, I already knew I wasn't going to do that. But uh, <coughs> with all that, what happened was, because this expresses the formula exactly for intelligence, and that mind is infinity, they couldn't go around it. You can't go around it. The end can go from zero to infinity. So you can't get around it. Therefore, it is mathematics because it's an act of God. The reality of it being present in my brain is, is expression. This expression came from here. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it has all, it can map infinite objects into one spot in my brains because n can be infinity and in the class i'm going to show you how that is done you know in terms of in the words when you begin to uh, get back at it. but anyway what happened is then clinton as a president by 1995 they couldn't do anything anymore with it. so they decided they're going to find out how do the other black people rank? What is their N level? Mine is infinity. What is their N level of other black people mm -hmm. that are walking on the street, say, or somewhere in South America or, or, or the continent? What is their level? And more importantly, what is the level of N for the other races? Mm. Nice to mm. comparative analysis, right? Yes, to find out. Yes, Oyibo has the ultimate intelligence, therefore the black race are the most intelligent race because of this formula. Don't sleep, Minister Brown, don't, don't doze up. I know mm. it's kind of getting overwhelming, but this is, this is in no more noise. You need to digest as much as you can. All right. Now, or you want to get more good. coffee? No, 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 okay. no. You go ahead. Yeah. You go ahead. Okay. Now, so therefore, um, Yale was given a grant to verify what is the level of N. In other words, this is a formula for intelligence. Mm -hmm. The N is the level of intelligence. How much you can compress reality into one spot in your brains mm -hmm. as determined by N. You can see that. Mm -hmm. You learn that most mathematics, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Now. So, Oyebos is infinity. What about the rest of the black people? What would be their number? It's a good question. So, they took samples of the black people. But more importantly, what about the non blacks? So they were given the money under the genome project. Genome. 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 Oh. Genome. Remember Clinton Gates? I started to bring that. Yes. Gen it yeah. It'll be in your book. Yes. Genome project. Yes, they sweet. provided the funding. But bef as that that was around 1994, 1995. They couldn't dispute a year or so. Jim Crow is dead. Jim Crow is dead with all these efforts for 2,500 years about black people looking like the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Emerson Andy and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? It's a black man that is the most ultimate intelligence, not the most intelligent, ultimate intelligence. And thereby, the black people automatically, because they share his genes, have ordained, reordained the most intelligent race and therefore the chosen race. So they have to go into the lab and find out the end for the other races and, you know, the average for the black people. So the result of that study, and in fact, as they were doing that, they gave Emma Gwali an award. Emma Gwali is another black man, also from Nigeria. There was a, a dean, D-E-A-N, from uh, California. I think he was IBM. He was the brain behind uh, Microsoft and even IBM. You must have heard his name, a black man. Uh, did some heavy stuff. And they just bribed him with the vice presidency of the company. It did, did nothing for him. But they gave Emma Gwali, who designed a, a fast computing system for, uh, you know, for computer, computer, uh, computation, uh, uh, some prize called the Gordon Prize. And in the process, okay. Okay. Uh, 1996. Yes, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's the study that he's reporting about. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but I, have, uh, I have the abstract here. Oh, mm -hmm. great. Yes, I have abstract here. It's and uh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the abstract here. But um, so now, so, but, but so, yeah, I, I, you know, I just want to tell the story first and then we'll go into that. But what was happening is Emma Gwali got an award in 1989. They gave me um, uh, the, the um, they gave me the uh, the associate fellowship of the AIAA. Mm -hmm. They gave Emma Gwali an award for developing the fastest uh, programming, you know, routine. But they didn't touch Gaga directly because they really didn't want to do anything. So people were writing to Clinton and so on, and, and he wasn't responding. But he didn't want to be looked as if he was doing racism or so-called. Uh, by giving Emma Gwali an award, in, and he spoke on Emma Gwali and so on and so forth, their goal was to uh, get around being accused of, being, of racism. So what they did was, they commissioned Yale to do that study. And um, this is the, yes, this is the abstract of that study. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you're going to read, read that. It? Yeah, you're going to read that. Mm -hmm. but, okay, now, the title, first of all, mm -hmm. um, nuclear, no, yeah, okay, that, that you can read later. This is, this, this, we start from here and you're going to read more. This is the actual hard data. Okay. Okay, what he's doing here is paraphrasing, you know, what's in here. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, nuclear DNA diversity in worldwide distribution, mm -hmm. human population. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you can. Yeah, you, no, you're going you're gonna to read it. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe I can get one thing. Um, yeah, this is what he said. Um, and. Um, no, that's all right. Okay, I'm yeah, yeah. You, you're too busy anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, now. So, now, I, I'm the, the bottom line is the formula that was used. In effect, is this formula, it's equivalent with this formula of intelligence. So if you have a formula for intelligence, you want to determine the level of intelligence for each category of people. So I want you to read mm -hmm. 
Uh, what's in there? Okay. The key abstract, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, but I'm just going to do a second. I thought I had Charlie and I had more here. Okay. No, no, yeah, you're going to read that one. Um, all right. Isn't I, it, I, I don't want to waste time anymore. Isn't it the first page up there? Huh? You yeah, know, I have this one here, but I want to, I thought I could give another one. No, 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 no. Okay. You're good. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Here's right there. Okay. okay. Here. But you, you have to frame I'm this. I want to keep this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. And that's for you. You're going to make copies and distribute to the pastors. Mm -hmm. But you have to, if you don't go over it with them, um, you, you understand me? Mm -hmm. Until they understand, it won't mean anything for them. Right. All right. So what happens is, in effect, they use a equivalent of this formula that is the only ex uh, mathematical expression for the for the intelligence, um, and then carry out the study on that genome program. So you can see the authors over there. Mm -hmm. The director is the guy called Kenneth K. Kidd. Mm -hmm. From Yale, that one would be KKK. Mm -hmm. Ah, there you go. You picked that up, didn't you? Mm -hmm. KKK, right? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. So now, if you look on that B, you will see what B says, right? Mm -hmm. What does the B, B say? Can you read that? Yale University School of Medicine. I see. Department, Department of, of, of Genetics. I see. Okay. Now let's read the the what the abstract says. Nucleotide variation was examined in an eight kilobyte. Uh, in chronic, in chronic DNA bordering exon 44 of the human dystrophin gene on XP21. 36 polymorphisms, substitutions, small insertions, slash deletions, and one T sub N microsatellite, excuse me, microsatellite, were found using SSCP heteroduplex analysis of DNA samples from mixed Europeans. Papua New Guinea New Guineans, as well as from six African, three Asian, and two Amerid Indian populations. In this way, the European bias in the nuclear polymorphism ascertainment had been avoided. In a maximum likelihood, three constructed from the frequent data, Africans clustered separately from the non-African populations. Fifteen polymorphism were shared among most of the population compared, whereas thirteen sites were found to be endemic to Africans or okay, okay, to okay, non Africans. Okay. You're gonna go over that again, that last sentence very important. In a maximum likelihood mm -hmm. tree constructed from the frequency data. Yes. Africans clustered separately from the non African populations. Okay. Fifteen polymorphisms were shared among most of the populations compared, whereas 13 sites were found to be endemic to Africans and four to non-Africans. The common sites contributed most to the average okay. heterozygosity. Are you gonna go over that again? Because I'm trying to tally stuff here. Now, uh, okay, the uh, 15 was what? 15 polymorphisms were shared among most of the populations compared, whereas 13 sites were found to be endemic to the Africans and four to non-Africans. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, 13. Okay, now wait a minute. Uh, 15, 15 were polymorphism were shared yes. among most of the populations compared, Yes. whereas 13 sites were found to be endemic yes. to Africans yes. and four to non-Africans. Okay, there you go. It is our intelligent style. Should I continue or stop? Mm, you can stop for the time being. Okay. Just make it in a pen. Polymorphisms. Alright. I want your attention here. I'm listening. Polymorphism. Yeah, I gotta see it here. I'm on the board. Mm -hmm. Um Non-Africans had four that are endemic, endemic to them. Mm -hmm. Four. That's what they said, right? Read that so we yes. sure. Right. 
that's what he said. We have 13 tribes were found to be endemic to the Africans. 13 were endemic to Africans. That's it. Right? And, and four to non Africans. Four to non Africans. This right. is non Africans. Right. Four to them. And this is Africans. Mm -hmm. 13 endemic to them. Right. But they have 15 that is common to all of them. Right. Is that what you said? Read that yeah. so we'll be sure. 15 polymorphisms were shared among most of the populations compared. Okay. That is, is common. Mm -hmm. So what is the total? 19 to 28. I see. 28. Delta 9. So, now, this is equivalent to the ends here. That becomes the level of intelligence. In other words, mm -hmm. this eight, has... 8 ends eight of 19. That's right. And this is 8 of... Uh, of 20, 28. Of course, Oyibo has eight as of infinity. Mm -hmm. As the God knows. Wouldn't you say that um, God has eight of infinity? No, no, no. God doesn't have. God is. I know, I'm, I'm just, just playing devil's no, advocate. That's, you know, God, in other <laughs> words, there's no comparison with God. God. God has more than, God is it. In other words, how do you, God is the ethos of infinity. So God gives a permission for you to visualize mm -hmm. what that reality is. God is the reality. You're trying to, intelligence is trying to understand reality. Mm -hmm. God is the reality. So God has more than the intelligence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it was never conceived a creature mm -hmm. can be given opportunity to see the whole of God. Mm -hmm. That is what is the God knows, extraordinary God knows. But it's extremely important. See, if you read the abstract mm -hmm. without Gagat as a background and without dealing with their jargons in genetics, you mm -hmm. will not be able to decode what is written over there. Gotcha. Now, polymorphism. This is, this is polymorphism. The whole equation or just one side of it? Well, this is, this is all the polymorphism there is. Okay, the whole equation? Yeah, it has been is the polymorphism. Okay. The polymorphism is a mapping. Mm -hmm. that's, right. That's, that's, you know, in, in ABU, the mad head of the, you know, the department wanted to, you know, debate Gagat and he wanted to go into those jargons and I pulled him back into a common language so mm -hmm. the masses Same. can, yes, the masses can actually hear. Poly polymorphism is the dynamics of expression of intelligence. It's a mapping. Mm -hmm. The word morphism is mapping. Mm -hmm. That's exact meaning of morphism, mm -hmm. mapping. That's where the light wave maps the reality into your brains. And you see and you visualize and you understand, mm -hmm. expresses your intelligence. Therefore, intelligence is about mapping reality. You can't you can take reality and put it in your brains. Mm -hmm. You can't take the trade and put it in your brains. Mm -hmm. That's what be mapped. Agreed. I see. Agreed. This is Gagat. In its truest form. <laughs> All right. So therefore, now, the non-Africans has a level of intelligence of 19 mm -hmm. compared to the level of intelligence of 28 for Africans. Mm -hmm. This, of course, is consistent with this for Oyibo. Oyibos you can't dispute because it's all in here. Where, what are you going to do? It's right here. 
right? Mm -hmm. if, if there's no dispute here, over here. This was measured in a lab under, you know, under scientific conditions. Mm -hmm. The reason they were getting different results, or in terms of relative terms, before was of Jim because of Jim Crow. Mm. But this busted Jim Crow. This actually busted Jim Crow because if you can't dispute this, mm -hmm. then you have you know what you were doing previously that gave a wrong result. To be wrong, you share my genes. You can be less than other people because you have the same gene. I can mm. have a thing to where you have zero or something like that. It's not possible. That's not reality. Mm -hmm. Because we share the same grandfather, great grandfather, mm -hmm. immediately before we connect with with the others. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Therefore. They took away the Jim Crow as in God, God busted Jim Crow forever. They were forced to take Jim Crow out. And when they went in, they got 19 for themselves. That's their own reading. Now you know the realities. Jim Crow never underrated itself ever in the history that we know them. They don't have a Harvard degree and say they have a community college degree. Right? Have you ever seen that? Say it again. From Jim Crow. Jim Crow, he has a Harvard PhD and he says he's an illiterate or has no degree. I mean, that's an underrating of oneself. Correct. So when they did this, if there's any error, it's likely to be an overestimated. It's an exaggeration. Gotcha. On the contrary, every time they dealt with us, they underestimate our intelligence. So this is likely, more likely to be an underestimation. They don't go out of their way to overcredit us. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, over here, what we do sometimes we, we say 19 minus and 28 plus, but those are details. That's not extremely critical. What's the most important is they are face to face with a mathematical reality that they Europe black race is the most intelligent race by the order of the creator. Mm -hmm. For that happening, they had to be forced by Gaga to remove the Jim Crow factor. Because Jim Crow, all Jim Crow knew for destruction is just evil. Evil is black, that's the end of it. This is the story we're talking about. Now, this is a God's order. Therefore, it is mathematical as infallible. Mm -hmm. This is scientific, mm -hmm. which is consistent with this. Mm -hmm. And because it's sponsored by genome money, that's public money, that is the official position of the United States government. Especially the work has been coordinated by Yale University, uh, it's a top Ivy League university. Mm -hmm. Now, so therefore, this is what Gagat has done. This is what God has done through Gagat. This is official. Right. Quick question: An international journal on genes and what? Uh, I, I, I can I can read that. Is it the last word up there? Um, I thought maybe you know of topic. Don't worry about it. I, I, I'll go home and get a magnifying glass. Okay, Journal of Genes and... I can't make out... Is it Jim Ross? Genomes, probably. Right. Uh, I, I, don't worry about it. I, 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 I get it. Yeah, that's Genomes. Genomes. That's a Genome Project. Genome. Genome? Okay. Yes, Genome. Genome. G-E-N-O-M-E-S. Okay, now tell me the difference between a gene and a genome. Well, those are some of the details, uh, you know... Um, I think you better uh, you go go in the computer. I I, I research. Don't worry go, about go, it. You can go and put I, 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 I could do it. I got home. Yeah, genomes gen 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 is probably good if we could get it in there because they have a technical definition. It you know just go on it. And I'm glad you got this equivalence between Nobel Prize, especially for Minister Brown, and the Field Medal. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so that is what has happened. Now, so. Um, 
And that's a summary of all that. In other words, you have God's order that is mathematical and has been scientifically verified, to say the least. And, uh, and, uh, and, and genome, gnome, N as uh, opposed to R. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Enter. Enter, yeah. You don't even have to put S. Okay. Yep. Go to genome. Yeah. Okay, in modern molecular biology and genetics, the mm -hmm. genome is the genetic material of an organism, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Gene genetic material mm -hmm. of an organ. It is encoded either in DNA and, okay. A genetic material of an organ, mm -hmm. organism. That's, that's the GN, that's, that's, that's the GN. That's mm -hmm. what I was just telling you. Mm -hmm. That's the GN, the material. Mm -hmm which is connecting, you know. So it's, it's, it, this, is the, this is the formula for that. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Okay? Gotcha. All right. Um, but so now, so that's what God has done. Mm -hmm. Nobody expected this was going to come in in this era. But it has happened. Everybody expects Obama to be president in this era, but it has happened. <laughs> that, that, that's what, this is where that come from. Mm -hmm. Right? Have we shown that before? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where that come from because, uh, <laughs> because once this happened, as well as they said very clearly, um, would GO Yibo issues influence the presidential election? That was seen in 2004. Oh, uh, let me check a second. Genome, it, it, it's, it's a, uh, a blend of gene and chromosome. Yeah, oh yeah, well that's, you, you know, but in terms of the material, the way it was defined as more mathematical. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a material, because right. all those other jargons that take you to, right. take you to another, you yeah, know. That, right, yeah. I'm going to tell you, that's how they got the word itself. Yes, actually. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. Okay, now. Gene and chromosome, genome. Yeah, know. okay. Now, this is where the, the prediction that all this, with Obama in the office mm -hmm. happened. You, I don't know if you're familiar with this on Amazon. This is the LLOPOH, Life, Liberty, and Pursuit of Happiness. That is I there. Read it somewhere. Okay, now, yeah. So now, um, now, okay, they're talking about John Yibo. Okay. Will GAO Yibo issues influence the presidential elections? Mm -hmm. That was in 2004. 2008, there was a black president. Gotcha. Uh, plus, what I was going on earlier was, these formulas mm. provide the opportunity for the, uh, the Europeans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it your copy? You can cut the copy. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, these formulas, which people are stumbling over looking for this, mm -hmm. uh, authorize the Europeans to claim superiority over everybody else and thereby qualify themselves to be the rulers of the world. So all the presidents before Obama were Germans. Or had German connections. Yes, German, they're related to the Queen of England. I mean, mm -hmm. that is, even, even when they try to run uh, 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 the black man. Uh, Jesse Jackson? No, not Jesse Jackson. Uh, Al Sharpton? Mm -mm, no. Uh, those, they were not considered serious candidates. Uh, this other one from a Republican, uh, Colin Powell. Oh, okay. Colin Powell mm -hmm. uh, was a relative of the Queen. Even Obama had some. Some love on, on his uh, non-black side. He has uh, some German in the dynamics. So, uh, because of these formulas and Göttingen, before because of Gauss. Mm -hmm. Okay, and even before Gauss, since the Germans had taken over England. Okay, you know after Newton, because uh, 1700 was when Göttingen was found. But when it was found, they already have a German king in England. Mm -hmm. King George II was a king of England, founding a university in Germany called Gottingen University. 
Therefore, Gottingen is the story. If the surrender didn't come from Gottingen, it had, they haven't admitted surrender yet. Because that's the headquarters of European supremacy. And so, but it will take the biggest bomb ever. Germans don't surrender easy. They die hard. Or they surrender hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's hard for them to surrender. But because this is absolutely infallible, and they did not want to destroy their legacy in terms of Gauss and all that. And especially since Gauss is the one being selected. They know that I'm going to drum this into your head. And you understand that this is a total of mathematics. Right? Otherwise, I'll challenge you to come up with an equation that's, that's, not, that's not here. That's not here. Then you'll be forced to the corner. So, okay, praise God. That's the dynamics. This is a very godly process. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, and God doesn't fall you, you, around. You can, you can leave it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it was such a, so anyway. It's going to keep coming down. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, um, now, so therefore, so you've seen Gottingen, you've seen Yale. It's done. What remains is, are you ready for your role that God has now ordered? Yes, go ahead. Can you explain the difference between and what it does the uh, 29 morphisms and the, and the uh, 19 for whites. Can you go into that more? It'll pass. Yeah. yeah, polymorphism. Okay. Explain it so a layman can understand what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, polymorphism, polymorphism. It literally means many mappings. That's right. In other words, polymorphism means that you can map more than one point or one set into one given set in another space. So I have infinite polymorphism because my level is infinity. And so I can map all realities, infinite realities into one spot. This is the brain. This is the brain space. This is the reality space. So mapping reality space onto the brain is how you take the picture of the reality and understand it. Mine is infinite. I, you know, I, God can show me all those in one spot. So my finite spot can catch everything. My finite, my finite size of the brains can catch everything. And by the way, talking about the brains, Gauss's brains is preserved for his contribution to mathematics. Einstein's brain is also in a jar preserved for, their contri for his contribution to mathematical physics. So what does that tell you in terms of your responsibility as a race about the Ubo's brains? You gotta preserve it. I see. I see. So when you were writing that resolution, you hadn't even gone this forward yet. You hadn't, you hadn't, you hadn't begun you just give them a flavor. So now, so therefore, if there's any doubt in your minds that God has ordered black people back to global leadership, I'd like to hear it as a result of what you saw. I mean, you said it all. I mean, <laughs> no, we can add to it. If there's one single doubt I like to hear the doubt. This is us, this usher the Europeans to global leadership. No, I think we all we all are on tune with you on that. Okay. In, this, in my conversations with Minister Brown, I don't think either of us has any doubt. Okay. Have yeah. any doubt? And this brought the Jewish connection in. Yes. And this is the mother of all of them. Yeah, I don't think it's a doubt in any of our minds. I mean, that that goes without saying. Okay. Now, but the signature of God is there, because mm -hmm. this is all about God. Mm -hmm. God does not change, is the equation. God doesn't change. Mm -hmm. God can't change, God is too big for change. God does not change. That's the exact description of reality. 
Mm -hmm. I want you to pick a see what if this is all I did, that is more than anybody could do. Right? But I didn't do it, God did it. But God followed through and gave me the view of that reality. That's the solution. This is the mm -hmm. This is the differential equation. This is the uh, mm -hmm. This is the equation, this is the solution. Mm -hmm. Einstein created a general relativity equation, mm -hmm. but he didn't have all the solutions. He only was able to reproduce Newton's meaning made it, making Newton's uh, theory a subset of his. Right. That was accomplished enough. Right. We know what gravity is. Yeah. We know what um, electromagnetic fields are. Yeah. How would you quantify strong and weak forces? Yes. Those are embedded in eta sub zero. The waves. The waves. Waves relating to? Well, okay, the wave phenomena, the weak and the strong forces are weak. In other words, they are, they're not, uh, their material is very weak. It's very, it's very, it, uh, the material is very thin. Would you say something like a radio wave? Yeah, or? yeah, okay, except well, it, they could be you know, okay. even, even, uh, even thinner, mm -hmm. okay? And it's that realm that God reveals to me what life is. Life is also a way. Mm -hmm. So a sinusoid, to be exact. Okay. So a wave, which is the force revelation by God. Uh, the one thing, by the way, that I'm pretty sure you would have thought about it in terms of your divinity side, is that notice that there's no such a thing as um, people that don't believe in life. In other words, I as equivalent to atheists. Mm. It is are people who don't believe in God. You don't have similar set of people that don't believe in life. To not believe in God means you don't believe in life. Which is the reality, but you will not see somebody coming around and say they don't believe in life because they know life is real in them. Mm -hmm. Without life, they couldn't talk, they couldn't do anything. Exactly. So they know life is, they can't say they don't believe in life. Mm -hmm. But they have the gut to con try to contradict what you just said. I, f I follow you, yeah. That's extremely interesting. Somebody can say they don't believe in God, but cannot dispute life. However, they don't know what life. God is life. Exactly. And that's why, like I said earlier, okay. that we got to make sure that we understand the connection between God and nature. The life of nature is a, is a, is is a, is a outgrowth of the life of God. Okay. So now, therefore, that's what God revealed to me: life. Mm -hmm. Life is the form of waves. And of course, folks from Cambridge are extremely fascinated. They're just hoping that you take your time and delay getting cracking mm -hmm. with this thing, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, so that they could. Mm -hmm. have an opportunity to try to catch up mm -hmm. is what they're counting on. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's if you allow them. Mm -hmm. Now, so therefore, so with this now, the definition of life comes out, I have it here. So that's, if I have intelligence, all intelligence, I should be able to explain life here. Mm -hmm. The explanation is that's it, that's of zero dynamics. Mm -hmm. and I can give you specifics and so on, because some of the things they try to do, try to find life is the way person before they die, and weigh them uh, immediately after they die, and try to try to see the difference and try to account for it. You know that doesn't. You know that, and they couldn't come up with anything. You know mm -hmm. so. On. But this is life here. It is of zero. G. It is of zero. It's where life is. It's called the life waves. And what it does is it gathers an escape velocity mm. with which to escape our bodies during which is what we call death. Mm. So, in order to protect life, first you must know what life is. Mm -hmm. Now, that has not been known before Gaga. So all the effort that has been used to try to protect life is a gamble, is a guesswork, it's the best theory. 
It's no wonder with all the Harvard MDs we die like birds, especially black people. There are tons of hospitals. It seems as if from those hospitals all we do is bury people. Well, people check in, but they don't check out. Absolutely. Therefore, therefore, that's because they never know what life is. You can't know. So life is a wave that is attached to the body through a glue. A glue that only God provides. And when that glue leaks out, then the life will dis de develop the escape velocity with which it escapes the body. Mm -hmm. And what we, that's what we call death. With that understand, therefore, it becomes immediate and urgent, a serious urgency for, by God's order to call for the Gagot Lifesaver and Raymond Hypothesis Briefing. And Raymond Hypothesis Briefing um, is, uh, is uh, the Raymond Hypothesis Briefing is it's supposed to be the most un, you know most celebrated unsolved problem that has been solved. That has a GIJ, and I like to share that with the people in the uh, in the in the, of course this is you, I don't know if you read this before. This is from uh, Daskopta, an Indian there, yeah, Indians over there who are kind of part of this dynamic. But um, that's a professor from. Krishnandu Dasgupta. When he found out, he sent a message called God's Mission and Dasgupta, in which he says, uh, Dear Oyibo, mm -hmm. good day. I heard that you have been successful in finding the unified field theory. Congratulations. You are more close to God than any of us. I was also working upon this theory since my theory was different. God was different to me. Please write to me as I would like to know where I was wrong. Thanking you. Yours, Krishnandu Dasgupta, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. a PhD in mathematics and physics, and the top 20 university in India, called Jamia Millia Islamia University. You could probably Google here, because this is MIT here. Them uh, demanding mm -hmm. that got to be incorporated in there. Uh, this is Harvard. Mm -hmm. uh, some of this you've seen before. Oh, this is the dynamic that is going on in, in Texas right now. Texas calls Gaga, includes Gaga, they're studying Gaga, mm -hmm. but call it, it's, you know, put it under a phony title, pseudoscience. Yes? We have 30 more minutes. Oh. I was hoping you could you know, round them out. Yeah. yeah okay. uh, but pull in the, uh, uh, the Baptist uh, Convention. Okay. Convention. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Means, okay. Know. Yeah, but okay. So all right. So anyway, so they studied this in the rest of Austin, where they had another equivalent of Scar William uh, trying to block black people from studying Gagan, and they are studying it under a camouflage called, uh, you know, called, uh, uh, you know, called uh, uh, what do you call it. Uh, uh, pseudoscience, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's, it's up to you, Yeah, yeah, I know, but yeah, that's the way I wanted to show you where the gargot is included here. Uh, and they, you know, tried to bad mouth the source of the way, G A G U T. Um, okay, yes. It says, yeah, that's gargot there. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is in Brussels, you know, Austin. Yeah, not, in Austin. not gang on it, gag it. Gag it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, because it makes them gag. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so now, so. Yeah, he need to summarize for the that's right. Bap Baptist Convention. Okay, so what happens is now, I need the copy. Where's my copy? Uh, Progressive Baptist Convention. Okay, pull, you pulled it off before. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's right here. Yeah, all right. What happens is that, yeah. Um, the Progressive Baptist Convention came about mm -hmm. 
as a result of part of these revelations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when the world began to react and so on and so forth, um, it was necessary. Her board article was, you know, um, tons of other reports, even Sister uh, Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, her, her, Karen, Sha Karen, Charlene Karen, Hunter. Karen, yeah, no, Charlene. Well, Charlene did too. Charlene did in the in the journal, in the newspaper in South Africa. Karen Hunter, Professor Hunter, you know, by the way, she was in Hunter College. Um, she won the Nobel Prize equivalent for journalism. Mm -hmm. She wrote an article, but it was published in uh, uh, Caribbean News. Mm -hmm. Caribbean, okay. Now, so with all that, people began to read and people began to ask questions. At first, they thought it was a feel-good sermon by some ni nice black man or whatever, or even fraudulent black man and so on. But when the truth began to unfold, the black people felt like they have to, they have a responsibility. So, uh, one of the starting points for the collaboration, collaborative effort, was Reverend Dr. Jones, um, who asked for a presentation on Gargan, and we went into Bethany Baptist Church and we gave him a presentation, and he was touched by God in terms of what he saw and inspired uh, the other pastors. Um, you know, uh, like Reverend Dr. Parker, you know, and you know, who was influential also during that point and yourself and even Reverend Young Blonde, and Reverend Dr. Young Blonde, and a few things from the other denominations as well, in terms of uh, AMEs, and AME took theirs to Florida and so on and so forth, and there were a lot of things. But anyway, in uh, a cooperative effort in terms of trying to sensitize, as people say, our people, the partnership was developed in terms of Okay, let's um, do something. They have to, we have to be on record. And so a delegation was sent over to Nigeria uh, to um, talk to the government. Eventually what happened was emotion came out of that dynamics. And then a resolution and the motion came out, Nigerian Senate motion 151, recognizing that God has called black people to global leadership. Um, in 2005, also uh, the Progressive Baptist Convention that participated in the preliminary work towards that res uh, pro uh, uh, motion, develop their own, you know, over here on the other side of the Atlantic. And then it became their own equivalent to the, the Gargot uh, uh, motion, 151. 151 was passed unanimously. That was a phenomenon in itself. 151 as far as the Nigerian Senate. Nigerian Senate. That's I just want to make sure that's clear on the camera. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was passed unanimously. Uh, there, as from everybody's experience, as it's worldwide in our mm -hmm. black world, uh, black people do not agree on literally anything. But they, are, they found a way to agree 100% on mm -hmm. the direct, you know, uh, motion. I think that's so critical. Extremely critical. Super critical. Extremely yeah, critical. say that again. Super critical. Extremely yeah. Critical. Super critical. Super mm -hmm. critical. So, and the similar thing was followed up here independently. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. what, what year was it passed? Uh, 25, uh, 2005. 2005. That's right. Okay. It was before this, uh, uh, actually it was during the process of this thing happening right. in Germany and so on. Right. So the reason why I'm saying that because those that are listening, yeah. they can go online, now they got the information and verify that for themselves. Absolutely. Right. Now, when did the uh, Baptist New York Progressive Baptist Convention pass their resolution? Uh, I believe it was the, the home to this, but I believe it was 2006. It was, I think it, it was a couple months after Nigerian passed theirs. Okay. okay. We both were we both were writing at the same time, but they met 
earlier, uh, earlier than we did in past it. If I, if I remember correctly. Right. I think I think that sounds about right. Um, so, so you had this phenomenon going on on both sides of the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, it began to sensitize the world. And of course, the world was reacting. Most of the reactions were shock and negative and so on. But uh, anyway, so it got us to a point where an agreement was reached that uh, we have to um, respond. God has called the black people to global leadership. We have to go into that global leadership. And we need legal uh, specifications in terms of how we're going to go about it. One of the things was, okay, God has to be recognized. Mm -hmm. So the Nigerian Senate motion set up that recognition, which was supposed to be called the African International Prize of Science and Technology. They, they made the you know, stipulated the price has to be higher than that of Nobel Prize because Gottingen had declared Gagot as bigger than 42 Nobel Prizes. That's what we saw. So when they said the price has to be higher than the Nobel Prize, they knew what was being talked about. So and then and then asked the entire black world to um, cooperate in the process. Mm -hmm. So in passing the, the other side of the Atlantic, the Progressive Baptist Convention resolution, they also said um, um, money should be collected in the churches to help defray that cost, or defray that, that uh, cost of that price. Of course, the enemy forces came in, and of course, you played a major role, uh, Minister Clinton and you, uh, and Dr. Paul, uh, Hand, uh, a various part of that, and uh, so at some point, however, uh, there was up some obstacles, mm -hmm. and what this call is for is to actually now bring those two motion, that motion and that resolution, back on track. Yeah. The lifesaver and Raymond Nepotist briefing calls for every church to send a delegation to the life saver because only God, God understands life and therefore only God, God can save life. Everything about life is in here. There's no other institution that can say the same thing. Therefore, this is the only place where you could save life in reality. You can gamble anywhere else, but this is, this you get a real thing. So, and then the, uh, the Raymond Apache is attached to it because life is as difficult and even more difficult than a Raymond hypothesis. Agreed. So, if life can be solved as a GIJ, so does Raymond hypothesis. That's number one. The, you know, dynamics of the, the God's calling. Because mm -hmm. God has summarized everything here already. You just pull it out and, you, you know, and that has been done already. And from what you saw in Göttingen, of course, if the Raymond about is the toughest math problem, they expect the, the top most mathematicians to be the kind of people that to have a chance at all. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the mathematician that is declared the most, the foremost, mm -hmm. would have a chance at solving that problem, wouldn't it? <laughs> In the middle, we have an equal chance with the rest of the 52 people that were listed as the top, mm -hmm. the top mathematician. But as far as it has been solved because the solution is there already. Now, therefore, uh, so, the call, therefore, says that the collection money that was stipulated in the, in the resolution mm -hmm. now be collected so that, among other things, the delegates who are suffering from all kinds of sicknesses and diseases right now mm -hmm. can come and rescue their lives in that conference. They'll get the GIJs for the various problems. But they will come like you know, delegations, you know, uh, a thousand, 
I would like to see a situation where 10,000 people come in every month and so on. That's what this is about. So it's about going to the churches and following through with the recommendations of the resolution. Mm -hmm. In addition, mm -hmm. this is also calling for a takeover of the HBCUs, which the resolution recommended should open their doors to Gagan. But in light of the set of the Jim Crow that is jeopardizing the existence, the survival of the of the of of the HBCUs, Gagot may as well take them over as campuses of the of Appetition and Technology, which is now the headquarters of of academics in the world. Mm -hmm. That is additional additional purpose for this uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. meeting, and then uh, other things like the Fanny schools and all that that was also recommended. And the legacy, the legacy within the SBC that must be preserved, that now the forcing black kids to go to the uh, so-called uh, larger universities and not go into the HBCUs, that now has been changed automatically because opening their doors means they're going to be studying Gargan, which is the highest form of education they can possibly get. So the accusing of HBCUs of having low standard has now been wiped out because exactly. the highest, highest. Exactly. And you get the HSBC, H, HBC, the black owned college universities to, 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 to teach God. It, yes. That's going to set them up on, on the top of the mountain. They will go past Harvard, that, which is where we belong. Where, right. that's, where, that's what Gottinger said we are. Mm -hmm. So that is what the purpose is. And, and there are tons of things. For example, this is part, the kind of thing they will be studying. Okay? Advances in mathematics research, where you're more. Which is that book? Uh, this book here is, uh, is one twenty-five, I believe, dollars. Okay. Got any book that go on the university, I want to read it first. That's right. That's right. No, no, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is one. But uh, okay. But so now, this is where, of course, Oyibo reviews and grades professors from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see their names here. Mm -hmm. Indians. Uh, this is uh, uh, oh Ch Chinese. I should have been a college professor. I could have helped. Could yeah, great for you. Absolutely. <laughs> George Osipenko, mm -hmm. for example, is from. Here you go. What's that? Saint Petersburg State Technical University. That. Uh, that's Leningrad. That's Russia. Russia. That's mm -hmm. the uh, Yale or Stanford of Russia. Mm -hmm. His work comes to me for grading. Mm. Uh, that's ironic. No, that's heavy. That's, His that's work it. comes to you. How many of these all works of them, come to you? All of them from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Come to you for grading? Are you kidding me? Garabedian sent his work for me to grade. These are ch children compared to Garabedian. You still oh. haven't heard what I'm telling you? Well, I'm I'm listening. Oh my God! I, ears open, learning more and more. Yeah, I thought this, I knew. this is from Saint Petersburg. This is the Yale. Well, how long has that been happening? That has been happening since you've been knowing me. That's what I do. That's what I do every day. Every day. Well, don't you see here? This everything. Ain't nothing public about this. Everything. I mean, no, but but that God. is that is where that is that is some of the spirit that drove. Drove. This is Saint Petersburg. This mm. is, you know, man. That's that's the thing. Indians, Indians. You know, the Jews. Everybody. Oh wait a minute. Now who puts this book out? Uh, Nova Science Publishers. Who? Nova, Nova Science, Science Publishers. Nova. I grade. I, oh I, shit. I grade. Nova Science. They that's only right. publish. Nobel laureates. All your Nobel laureates. Nobel laureates. They that's, send this to you. That's yeah. What do you expect, man? I, don't you see here? I have no, everything. I, I have everything. I have everything. Don't you understand? That's what I'm trying to get across. <laughs> I have everything. This is. I have. I'm the most intelligent ever created. Ultimate intelligence. That's what this says. That's what I'm trying to break down. Did you know that here? No, I did not know that. Okay. And now, what does that mean to you? What does that speak? That Nova Science uh, is sending all of these. Uh, that he's a man. Works? 
He's the greatest of, of, of the mathematicians. That's what Buckingham, that's what happened. That, that's what Buckingham. they're saying. And, and they consider a privilege. Everybody that, that, that have their work you know, put in here, make it, they are proud of their publication yeah. because Oyibo reviewed our work. I'm, I'm having to go soon, fellas. Yeah. Me too. Oyibo, Oyibo reviewed this work. Yeah. And, and it's helped them, they'll get their tenure and everything else. Yeah. Okay. Professor, let me say, it's, it's yeah. been marvelous. It's been I'm telling you know, this has been eight straight hours that you've been standing there. Uh -huh. we've been record Matter of fact, we've been recording since nine straight, uh -huh. and it's now. Um, we started at nine, it's now after five, almost six. How many hours was almost, that? It was almost ten. It was almost ten? Yeah. Okay. From ten... Eight hours. Eight hours, that's right. Okay. It's been, all right. Thank you. Uh, you got anything to say, uh, Reverend Allen, for me? Oh, yeah. Actually, I want to I, I, I want to thank God for the opportunity just to sit under the drippings of this, 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 this walking warrior, this living legend that we have among us. Mm -hmm. And all you out there in video land, now you notice I didn't say radio land, in video land, um, as you're watching this tape, watching this DVD or whatever you want to call it, don't underestimate what has transpired here to this, after, this morning and afternoon and, and mm -hmm. going into the evening. We are sitting on probably the most invaluable wonders of the world in this in the, in this situ in this century mm -hmm. you're talking about the, the eight wonders of the world mm -hmm. i think we're on the brink of making number nine it, it just came to my spirit to say that and as with all wonders of the world it has to be cherished and archived mm -hmm. you know it has to be preserved pick a one in the world you can't get over there the government, the government of, of of that of that country, will not allow anybody to disrupt anything that's that's been declared as historical and under preservation. We should do everything in our power to preserve the knowledge that's been transformed, trans, uh, transpired here today, and not only the knowledge but the individual who who transformed it. First, God, and two, using the element of evil. Okay. And I want to support Dr. Ebo and, and thank God for him. Let us, let us work with him. Let us look out for him. Let us support him. Let us protect him. You know, he's our African leader. You know, you go back to the, the, the understanding of African ancestry. Our leaders are to be protected. Okay? There are many people that are out there that would not want this video to go forth. Mm. But I'm, I'm encouraging you to share it with your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Let the legacy continue on. Mm -hmm. Why? Because this is our time. We yes. have been called to leadership. Absolutely. This is our time. Mm -hmm. We have been called to empowerment. This is our time. We have been called to take charge and right that which was wrong mm -hmm. for all these centuries. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Gosh. <laughs> Been my pleasure. <laughs> this been a, my pleasure. This is a trinity right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. And, and, and Minister Brown, God bless him for being the greatest archiver of African descent, African legacy materials. Absolutely. Get in contact with him. Mm -hmm. Go through it. See what he has available. Purchase from him. Absolutely. Because mm. we don't buy from each other. How do we expect other folks to do it? Absolutely. That's true. Enough said. Thank you. Thank you. Sign